PKA 607 with our guest Ed Bolin. Bolian? Bolian. Wiki. Yeah. Thank you. you uh, Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Lock and Load, Blue Chew, Wonky Weeds, and Death by Gummy Bears. A bunch of wonderful products we'll hear more about later. Ed, how are you? I'm great. Thank you all for having me back. That's it, such a oh. cool background. It, I, I unironically was like, that's a neat green screen, but I bet that's real. No, it's real. That's uh, <laughs> one of the latest acquisitions. What am I a, looking uh, at? A convertible cool. Lamborghini? It is. Yeah, it's a 2009 manual transmission LP640. I love really, really cool cars with really, really bad stories, and this one certainly has it. Actually, Ralph Lauren ordered it brand new, as well as an identical one, and didn't take delivery of either. And so this guy from New Jersey just bought it and would drive it around like a normal car. And mm-hmm. whenever he'd bump into something, he would just spray paint over it. So he carried around a can of Rust-Oleum. And what? so when I got it, it was literally spots spray painted all over. The paint was what chipping off in big chunks. A and so, yeah, I mean, you know, there was a long time where some of these cars were not terribly, you know, well appreciated. And over the last, you know, what? three, four, five years, they've, you know, quadrupled in value. And well, so who does that to a Honda? <laughs> no one. Fair enough. Yeah. So it was peculiar. It has a couple of bad car faxes, but uh, drives great. Can you tell me the the, Lamb- the model number again, but slower? I don't know. Sure, my it's a, a 2009 Lamborghini Murcielago LP640 Roadster, and it's one of 10 U.S. cars with a true manual transmission. Oh, a true manual. So Ralph Lauren just ordered two and then couldn't be bothered to like pick them up? Correct, yeah. So one of them ended That's up going to St. Louis, cool. the other one stayed around. Yeah, exactly. Well, let, let me ask you, because maybe you've got some insight into like special customers like that and how cars are ordered. <sighs> The next time Ralph Lauren wants a car and he goes back to me and says, hey, uh, y'all have that new thing this year. I'd like three of those in yellow. I know you don't do yellow, but hey, let's do yellow. My yellow, in fact. Ralph Lauren yellow. Are they like, go shove it up your ass? We, we, we had a hard time moving those last two. Only if they're currently having a hard time would they allow him to order another car. You know, in yeah. general, like right now, every new car is obviously sold out for years. And so they're not you know, indulging anybody who's treated them wrong in the past. But yeah. in, in these cases, yes, uh, he probably burned that bridge. He doesn't buy a lot of new cars. That was kind of a, an interesting time for him. He buys a lot of very, very significant older cars, probably has a $200 million car collection or so. Um, so what do you think yeah. the most significant I, historical car to collect would be? Now I've got a couple in my head and I don't know anything about this sort of thing. It's just a question <laughs> that popped in my head, but I'm thinking, the limo that Kennedy was oh. in. Oh my God. Like, where's that thing? And whatever hoopty Archduke Ferdinand was in when he got popped. Those two yes. particular like yeah. jumped to mind. He's a for good sure. One. Also, Bonnie and Clyde's car, but that's in a museum I know. <laughs> I saw the Simpsons episode. That's not as cool as the other ones you listed. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, it varies when you think about the most significant like vintage car that you'd want to own. Uh, you know, theoretically, the Bugatti Aerolith, if it was to exist, is probably a, you know, $200 million car. Uh, a Mercedes uh, 300 SL race car just sold for $142 million. That set the, the record uh, in a, a last month. And they didn't actually do a very good job of Jesus. marketing that sale. Uh, prior to that, the most expensive car to sell was a 250 GTO. There's 39 of those, and they they're worth about 70 how, or so. How do you market a 140 million dollar car? You just email the two guys on earth who can afford it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Marketing and, done. And, <laughs> and something <laughs> happened in the deal because it was it was sold by Mercedes. It was still owned by them. It's one of two cars, and it uh, I think you had to agree that whenever they asked for it, you had to give it back. Oh. for them to use however they wanted to you had to pay them to maintain it and i think that the two people that were interested in it ended up maybe splitting it it was a really really weird transaction because you're right you don't just post it on craigslist and say yeah. who wants this 140 million dollar car uh so you know and a lot of times the numbers get exaggerated uh a couple of days ago rm announced that they're going to sell a high downforce kit uh, mclaren f1 then so that car's probably pushing 30 uh, as a Jesus. late build, uh, and that'll guy. be the most expensive car to sell. You know, I didn't late. even know cars were so, this much. I, I watched a Jay Leno interview, and he was mm-hmm. saying he doesn't like Ferrari. And it wasn't that he doesn't like the cars; he doesn't like working with Ferrari. I, one thing I've learned: I, I, I know one guy who can buy Ferraris. I'm not you, but he was in like a Ferrari California and he had to have that California and own it for a while to prove that he was a Ferrari guy before they allowed him to buy other cars that he actually wanted. And Jay Leno is like 
this is horseshit. This is no way. If like you should just sell me the cars that I'm really dreaming about, Good for but Jay. not make me prove myself as a Ferrari aficionado. Do McLaren and Lamborghini and maybe Mercedes or whoever else sells cars in that class do that to their customers too? To some extent, but not nearly to the extent that Ferrari does. I mean, Ferrari has a reputation of being very exclusive. And, you know, in reality, yes, they could sell three times as many cars, but the cars wouldn't retain the same value and they don't necessarily have the ability to produce that many cars. And so, you know, they're all sold out. It's not as though they're alienating enough, so many <laughs> buyers that they are sitting on inventory. And so, you know, from their perspective, I guess you have the business question, right? Do, do I build more cars than make my cars worth less money or do I keep them, you know, this desirable, this valuable uh, so that the customers that do get to buy them and have treated us well for decades, uh, you know, stay as happy as they are? Now, mm -hmm. my question after watching Leno was, but you're Jay Leno. Are there different rules for you? Do they do? You, I mean... Jay Leno is not the only interesting person who wants to buy a Ferrari. Do you think they'd have different rules for Leno? They all have different rules for celebrities uh, and, and, you know, influencers, things like that. I've tried to buy a couple of very rare Ferraris because I've only owned pre-owned ones. And, mm -hmm. you know, you say you're not wealthy enough to buy a Ferrari, but I, I've never lost money on one. They don't really go down in value. So, uh, you know, as long as you buy them the right way and take reasonably good care of them, they go up. So, the if if you or I walk in, uh, even with you know uh, our following, we don't count enough to get any preferential treatment. But once you did, you'd still have to play by the rules. You might get an extra leg up. You might actually get to order like the standard range car that you wanted. If it were you know a brand new F8 Tributo or something like that, you could probably you know get your way into one of those cars. But if you wanted something like you know they just brought out a 2.3 million dollar SP3 Daytona that they're limiting to less than a thousand cars, and the, no, we can't just go buy one, even if you are somebody special, because they have that many customers that are that valuable to them. So we're not special enough to get special treatment. Are there YouTubers who are? Do they look at PewDiePie and be like, I, I really enjoyed your Happy Wheels video. I bet Mr. Beast could get one and like give it away. They, it's uh, like, hey, we're gonna, if you give us one of these, every kid on earth will know what your brand is. It's like, okay. Like, <laughs> all the future and that's YouTube the point. Is will think you're they, cool. they don't what actually need that? people to know. That's their newest car that, uh, that we can't buy. And... Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's super cool. It'll be probably their last like newly developed, naturally aspirated V12 car. Um, you know, it's fast and has almost I think 900 horsepower, and it revs <laughs> to over 9,000 RPM, which is super what? cool for an engine that that's, that's that big. So there's the a motorcycle. lot of cool things going for it. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, but they're all sold out. And uh, I try what I. I'm a new F1 fan, so I'm not super knowledgeable, but I've been following for maybe two or three years now. What happens to those cars? Like, did, did, do they just sit in a showroom or do they sell them? Can you get an F1 car? They, they come up with a new, a couple new ones every year. But Correct. Yeah, so they, they do get retired and many times they're sold to collectors without the powertrains. Uh, some of the manufacturers have programs where That's you fine. can buy a functional one but they keep it and they maintain it. So Ferrari has that. They call it Corsa Cliente. And you can buy a decommissioned Formula One car. And they arrange events several times a year where they travel with all of them. And they'll fly them to whatever circuit it is. Usually it's before an F1 race or something like that. And they'll have mm -hmm. a couple of days where their guys can go out. And honestly, it's pretty inexpensive. You know, it's usually like five to $10,000 per car per day. Now you're talking about a car that probably cost in maintenance hundred thousand dollars a weekend to to really run there you'll see hmm. now if it's not a top tier car if you're not buying a mercedes a red bull an f1 car mm -hmm. or uh or a ferrari then you're you're gonna pay 10 to 20 percent uh and that's a uh, so th those cars could be worth two three four hundred thousand dollars in a reasonably functional state especially if you buy one that's more than 15 or 20 years old and those are still oh considerably faster than any one of us could could really <laughs> like make move. Uh, there's been some really, really entertaining uh, content built around the idea of a normal person driving an F1 car. In fact, that's my most viewed video is a guy from England that uh, was able to do kind of a test in a, an old Infiniti F1 car from the early 2000s. And the, the ability that we have to think fast enough, to react fast enough, to go fast enough, to brake mm -hmm. fast enough, 
so that the car gets enough heat in the tires, enough heat in the brakes, enough air in the engine, uh, and doesn't stall is it, it takes you know a long, long time to figure. I want to talk. Oh, so yeah. I've seen two Did, videos. These I link to you I've, or I've, often I've, going for a hundred thousand euro. I've seen yeah. two videos on the idea of a regular person driving an F1 car. One was Top Gear, where Richard Hammond tried to drive it. Now, I don't know what you think of Richard Hammond, but I think, well, he must be a much better driver than a normal person, right? He's a car guy, you know, mm-hmm. but he's hamming it up and looking completely incompetent. And there's all this dramatic music acting like he can't get the thing in gear. It has stall protection. It, so. Like I, the little bit I know is he's purposely trying to stall this thing out, and it won't let him do it. So it's jerk, 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 and and it just it was a bullshit video that made me hate Top Gear even more than <laughs> I did before because those cunts don't do anything seriously. They feign incompetence at everything. This is a they comedy do. show. Wrong. Top Gear <laughs> rocks. Two thumbs down on that opinion. Don't like it. <laughs> all right, all right. It's inspired a lot of us for sure. But uh, <laughs> but you're right. Cruz drive it. Now, apparently yeah. he is a good driver. Uh, he has a little bit of race experience. I don't know how much racing he's done. He's certainly done racing movies. But uh, they acted like, you know, he really made the car go pretty well. And if he were serious about this, he would someday be a decent F1 driver. That, that's how they pretended it was. Sure. And, and, and there's probably some validity there. I think when you think about putting a normal person in an F1 car, what's much more significant than their actual racing experience is that they've made a lot of vehicles move, right? Because the car is so unique in the way that you would engage with it that if you haven't driven a whole lot of different types of cars, you're not going to find mm-hmm. any way to feel comfortable in it. And when you look at you know their you know, warm-up lap pace and things like that, it's not 10 tenths all the time. They can make them go around behind a pace car in a caution situation at 70, 80 miles an hour, which anybody's reaction times could keep up with. Mm-hmm. And so I think that is what you're seeing is the desire of a television presenter or a journalist to go past that, yeah. past just making it around. Could we make it? Of course, we can make it around in the car. You're right. It has stall protection. It's a sequential manual transmission. There's not a clutch to manage after you make the thing move. And so we could do that. If you try to look cool or go fast, that's where you're not going to have enough speed to manage the downforce. You're not going to have enough heat in the brakes to actually dive deep enough in to keep the tires warm mm. enough that with any throttle application, you're not going to spin the car. And so that's, it's that you know, pivot towards fast where things go real wrong. And that's, that is legitimate. Um, so that's the that's the Yeah. And for people, gosh, I feel like I don't know enough about F1 to teach people, but... The things that make the car warm up are twofold. One is taking turns fast. You probably would have guessed that. You go around the turn, it puts a little sideways stress on the tire, it warms them up. Cool. The other is just going fast. The downforce presses down on it, and that sort of being pressed down while going fast warms up the car too. Unless your car is all warmed up, your tires are hot, your brakes are hot, they don't work very well. So you have to go fast enough to get them warm, but you can't go fast unless they're warm, and therein lies this the thing that takes skill. Yeah, if you ever watch NASCAR when they're in the or maybe F one, I've never seen a, a second of it, but so I don't know. But, but <laughs> we're in the in the, I've never in the watched caution. a second of NASCAR. <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not of F one, um, but, oh, but in NASCAR, oh, okay. you know, in the caution laps, they they they're driving mm. back and forth to keep the tires warm. I saw a guy doing that in traffic the other day. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this man's professional. I had no idea that I was sharing the road with his likes. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, spark. His gloves yeah. On over there. yeah. Oh, in in motorcycle tires, there's a similar thing. Like, you might want to buy the best tire there, the ones that the best people use. You can buy high end tires, but they're not a good choice for me. Like my dumbass spends half my time at a red light, or you know, just doesn't get to stay, doesn't get to drive in a way that mm-hmm. keeps tires warm. So the fast tires are slower for regular people, oftentimes. Yeah, Is there a Goldilocks zone. Like, if could you <laughs> could you take like if you were to try and take a turn at like eighty, is that fast enough that like you would spin out and it, obviously it would your your tires wouldn't be heated up enough. So like. Because I'm imagining myself, and if I didn't know anything, I'd be like, let's be responsible. Let's take a 70 turn. And that's probably the zone where you fuck yourself up, right? Because it's not, it's not meant for that. Well, the problems are going to come up when you try to turn and accelerate, right? So if you go really, really fast and you brake as hard as you possibly can, turn through a corner, and then when you're pointed straight, hit the gas, as long as you're reasonably in the right gear, mm-hmm. you're going to be okay. It's when you try to carry speed through a corner 
that you get into real trouble. And that's in any racing situation. You know, you'll hear the phrase like slow in, fast out. And that's what it means is don't go too fast into the turn. Go fast on the way out. I like I I know less about F1 than anyone here. I'm probably on online with Kyle you, with you F1. You know bumper cars though. I've done bumper <laughs> cars, but like like That's a they're, they're, I, I know that F1 driving is unbelievably hard. I saw a Pros vs. Joe's episode in like 2002 <laughs> where they were like, "We've got this guy from the NFL, this guy from MLB, this guy from the NBA, and this driver." And I remember sitting there at like 12, being like. This stupid ass driver is going to get humiliated. The dude was unreal athletic. Like he was outperforming the baseball guy in fucking everything. That well, baseball that guy sense. got his ass handed to him that day by the driver. But there is no sport that has a closer gap between like it looking easy than like racing. Because if you don't know anything, you can watch it and be like, yeah, I can turn too. And yeah, you don't know because there's no way to tell that they're like experiencing a million G's. That's especially a true with NASCAR, where they yeah. just do oval. If it's an oval race course, that's why I, I, I refuse NASCAR. to believe it's hard to drive a NASCAR car. I, I, believe that, <laughs> I swear to God, I refuse to believe it's hard. I mm -hmm. bet that any of the, I bet <laughs> if you took the four of us and, 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 and we did nothing but train with like fucking, is Richard Petty still alive? Like, like he trains us, okay? Whoever. Mm -hmm. uh, the ghost of Dale Earnhardt could come back and train us all day, every day for, 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 for three months. And I bet that we finish the race and it's not a laughing stop. Kyle, speak for yourself. <laughs> You've driven with me. They're like, ah, and holy shit, I would in the get 99 lost car, what do you mean? On made a NASCAR it? track. I would not, I would lose my way around. <laughs> it's yeah. a left turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but there's a million more. cars out there. I've You'd been, have to I, try and, you know, draft behind the good racers and stay in like Motor the crescent Speedway? of emptiness. It, whatever the one is in Carolina, Lowe's Motor Speedway or something, like, like they like had the a uh, an cool. event there one time where they were selling um, classic car parts in the infield. They like mm -hmm. filled the whole infield up with, uh, and, and we were buying parts for 55 Chevrolet Bel Airs. That's neither here nor there, but it gave me a chance to walk around on the track and see that. That crazy amount of banking, you, you can't tell on TV how huge that track is. But I was even then, I was like, I got this. I got this. Any of us do. <laughs> Any of us do. It's bullshit. It's well, we bullshit. just rented Atlanta Motor Speedway, which is a NASCAR track here for a car track series that we ran. Yeah. And uh, it was amazing because they gave it to us at night in the rain. And it's so, so you know, I was in a 620 horsepower of Bentley Supersports and – so cool. uh, and it was a blast. But, you know, even then, like, I mean, this is at night in the rain in a car mm -hmm. that's got, you know, decent tires on it. We know we're doing 150 where they would have been doing, you know, 200, 220 miles an hour at times. And so it, it is a big, big difference. Hmm. <gasps> well, I think it's a big difference. It's a big it's difference. A big, but in between big, what? <laughs> oh, there he is. There he is. I think, he's I think you're back. Sorry about had that. A momentary pickup. <laughs> yeah, I had a glitch. But we lost uh, yeah, you at so. the main difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The main difference is when you're trying to get that extra 10, 20, 30 percent of the performance out of the car. That's where things get a little strange. So you disagree at Kyle calling it laughable. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, and I quote: <laughs> the the argument could be made when you think about the people that are driving these cars that are professional drivers, because more than half of the field in NASCAR is paying their way to be in the car. And NASCAR. so what that means is, yeah. And, you know, formula one is, you know, maybe 30, 40%. So uh, they're, you know, they, they're bringing sponsors, but the sponsor is dad's company. Right. So it, it's the, these are situations where yes, to prove your point, Woody, they are being trained to drive these cars. Now they may have started to train at, you know, seven or 12 or very, very young. Yeah, they go -karts, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, you can teach anybody to drive reasonably quickly. They're not going to be at the front of the pack because those people are both naturally rich and gifted. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's one of those situations where you, you can certainly get a long way. And I mean, like, I think there was a statistic once that, Lewis Hamilton's family spent like seven million dollars on his driving career before he was paid. Yeah, so arguably the greatest driver in Formula One history, certainly the greatest in the grid right now. Uh, you know, it, it took that much to get him there, and now he's certainly had staying power. He's won seven world championships, but it, it you know he didn't start from nothing. Just you know, pulling I think a NASCAR. I, I think in NASCAR is a little bit like the UFC as well. The end of the year, you don't really care who's got the mini, most, who's got the belt, or who has the most wins. I care about who was most entertaining. Who did a fucking kickflip when they knocked the guy out, right? <laughs> so, so, so all you got to do is just be a piece of shit 
be loud, be the Colby Covington to, to keep that UFC parallel going of NASCAR, and I think you'd yeah, have a gig. True. Danica Patrick made a career out of being cute. <laughs> I think she made her bones with GoDaddy, though, right? She I mean, that didn't help. Cute. I mean, it didn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the GoDaddy money was the, the winner there. Was, was she winning races? She had, I was mean, she her a good car racer? was fucking... No. Was, was she that racer? bad? I'm trying to... Money. There was <laughs> one of the places, maybe it was NASCAR, where they said she had advantage because she was so light. She's um, a little bit lighter. She's like, you're saving what a hundred pounds on the car. Is that a I'm gigantic? Only difference? as good as my sources. I'm not really that knowledgeable. I guess so. But... Now to think about it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but she shit. wasn't saving a hundred pounds. She was probably saving 50, 60. I mean, these kids, these kids aren't that tall. Some um, of them are big, but I don't yeah. know. Remember Tony Stewart by the end? That man's two hundred pounds oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, at absolutely. least. Um, and Danica's like, I think I read once she was like right at a hundred, like maybe even ninety five. She's a little girl. Yeah, yeah. woman, whatever. But, uh, well, I mean, it makes sense. Be... And like, even sure with that advantage, she was a terrible, terrible, terrible driver. Uh, and they let her go around that track for years. Oh, what I'm saying is you throw Taylor in that car, give him a cool middle name, like mm. like Shotgun Taylor or something. Yes. Remember Buckshot Danger. Jones? What, what a redneck <laughs> fucking name. That guy drove around the track for years. I bet he never won a race. But his name was Buckshot. Cool. <laughs> so everybody liked it. You know, oh, this is my favorite <laughs> yeah, the story. Best merch. <laughs> there was one racer. So there's like 31 racers in a you know NASCAR race or something. Like there's a bunch. And there was one guy, didn't matter where he finished. ESPN would be like, all right, first place was Kyle. Second place was Taylor. In 90, whatever, like 23rd place, Dick Trickle. His name was Dick Trickle. And they always told you how he did because he was Dick Trickle. They just like to say it. He's yeah. always getting on ESPN. And yeah. so even though he's finishing 24th, yeah. household name in the F1 <laughs> Plus, circuit. I, I love cars. Like, like I, um, I like going to car shows and just looking at them. And, uh, and when I see somebody, if I see somebody else stand too close to a nice car, I, I'm like, what are you thinking? <laughs> what are you thinking? How dare you? Don't you know those jeans have rivets on the outside of them? Get the <laughs> fuck away from that man's vehicle. You know, but, but, with, but I've never been into like auto racing at all. Because of all the things we just talked about, you know, mm -hmm. that the, you think it's hard to get into that brand new Ferrari. Try getting out there on the Atlanta Motor Speedway and representing for Chevrolet, even if you are a really good kid who's a driver. There's no yeah. like, and if, 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 if you have the talent, you will play for the Yankees. If you have the talent, you will play for, uh, for, for LA. But if you have the talent, you'll probably just keep working in that auto parts store and never get behind the, the, the wheel of a car. Mm -hmm. Could be. I, I mean, be clearly true. most of them never get the chance because you have it's to be a fucking millionaire. I don't know NASCAR that well, but in Formula One, when they consider what are called paid drivers, people who bring money to the team, they look at how good a driver he is and how much money he can bring in. Like, I, I suck at driving. So if I were to bring in $100 million, I might race Formula One. Yeah, sure, I crash it every weekend, but but I make the team better with that. Maybe if I'm really good at driving and I bring in 10 million, they choose me over someone who's really great at driving because we win more races with Woody plus 10 million than a better driver plus zero. And these are the decisions they make in Formula One. And yeah, that's it's the economics unfair. Of it's unfair. It's twisted. It's not right that they will keep a worse driver because he can pay his way into that seat. But being unfair is kind of what makes Formula One interesting. That your car is way better than mine. I am twice the driver you are, and I just barely keep up. Maybe I win in uh, qualifying, but lose on race day, and it, it's not fair. Yeah, it's not. You fuck. I want right? open tryouts. Find your way yeah. into a better seat. <laughs> Find your way into it. That guy did it somehow. How you? How are you going to get the better team to agree that you're a better driver so that they'll hire you instead of him? It's. Like, if I owned a sports franchise, Taylor off, off, often talks about if he's a billionaire, he buys his local sport, sports franchises absolutely. and attempts to guide them to greatness, right? Even, even if it means losing money to do so. He but I think, <laughs> 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 I think that I would want to have open tryouts because I think that would, if I'm a fan, nothing mm. would intrigue me more than my team having open tryouts for one of their positions. And I don't yeah. care what sport. I, like, I don't give a shit. About, it could be a sport I don't care about at all. But if I heard like a world championship soccer team was having open tryouts for their goalie i'd be like oh really so any <laughs> like dude can walk up are they televising this yeah. can i buy a ticket like i'd love to go see that so like with, with formula one they've got those simulators why don't they fucking start a line like like somebody's gonna be driving the ferrari car this year we just don't know who yet 
<laughs> and like, like, <laughs> and like, 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 put up, like, like, put those fucking simulators outside of like in every major city and line people the fuck up and let's take the top 10 guys and make a reality show and then have them race for Ferrari this year. You know, the NFL did that. That is more fun. Yeah. The, the did they? Eagles, right? Yeah. Yeah. They made oh, a is movie that the, about um, the movie with Marky Mark. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and like several they, nobody made the team. That. What? They've done that. Several oh, yeah. racing teams have just said, Hey, Absolutely. Yeah. They've all got they driver have. development programs. And so, you know, Lord's you're, you're going to have mm. people that are way, way down. Uh, they've even done it just based on esports performance because hmm. in many ways what? it's a lot more like being in a simulator than being in a Honda on the street. And so they can tell if you're qualified. That being said, when you think about it from an advertising perspective versus the exposure that's available, it simply means that the sponsorships don't make the team's pencil. It's yeah. a losing proposition anyway. And so mm -hmm. just because you're good enough doesn't mean that the business allows you to participate. It just means that, you know, you might be able to find a, a seat somewhere if they actually, you know, if somebody else was losing the money. I uh, like so. that they're recruiting from the simulate from the video game players too, from like iRacing guys or whatever it may be, because the US military's been doing that for years. I played Call of Duty 4 with a guy, he slayed. He was the best of us all. Just he was just so goddamn good. Now he got a job flying drones in Afghanistan, <laughs> blowing people up, and they just kept promoting him over and over. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're fucking salute to this guy. Talent He's identification. Like, yeah, the tenth fucking they had prestige. to prestige him, yeah. <laughs> Send him back to the bottom. <laughs> he was <laughs> a private again a few weeks. <laughs> it's, it's After we promoted you, our terrorism deaths dropped off dramatically. We it, need it's back. Socrates <laughs> I'm talking about. Like, like Socrates yeah. got into that drone program, and he was just like, yeah, dude, they've had me in that simulator for months. I've been flying <laughs> missions over this place and that place. Sometimes what my, the drone I'm flying is close away, and I, I, it was really cool stuff he was getting to do. And then it was like, <laughs> yeah, awesome. of course, who better than Socrates, who's fucking drop shotting and 360 and people for fun on COD 4? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Now he's fucking people <laughs> up and crash in real life. <laughs> 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 now he's actually destroying public squares in the Middle East. <laughs> mm -hmm. Off in the Everybody's got to go pro in something. Home. Yeah, he's, oh, something about the, uh... he's getting fucking achievements. <laughs> <laughs> something I wanted to uh, ask about the celebrity thing. It was a clip that just randomly I saw earlier this week and i didn't know that companies would shut down like the ferrari conversation we had and i saw that apparently in like 2004 2005 tom cruise struggled opening the door of a bugatti at the reveal at the premiere of a mission impossible movie and apparently bugatti was like so pissed off about it they put him on a list of like you can tom cruise you cannot have a bugatti because it's him getting out of the car, walking around to open it for whoever his date is. And, you know, it has those like button things. And he just stands there. He tries to grab it. He pushes on it. He holds it like he does it for like 15 seconds. And someone oh. and eventually it opens. And so it was a bad look. Did you know about that? Yes, I did. He uh, <laughs> the, a friend of mine arranged all the cars for the Mission Impossible premieres. Like they took him mm -hmm. a bunch of places. And in fact, that they actually overnighted a car from. Uh, Steve Celine's house in California for one of the Manhattan premieres because he wanted to show up in a Mustang that was modified. And so UPS flew the car overnight for just that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I didn't hear about the Bugatti incident, but it's a constant, uh, you know, trying to manage cars that get seen publicly. I had an exotic mm -hmm. car rental company for years. It's the same problem. It's just, you know, they never do what they're supposed to do. If they sit still, <laughs> they can do that. <laughs> as long as you sit still in the car they're aces but well, that's what imagine. makes it entertaining for you know and i'm curious woody what's the hate for top gear i mean certainly there was a lot of contrived storylines and things like that but uh also certainly it inspired a lot of us as young car enthusiasts it's about the manufactured drama and insincerity of it maybe youtube has spoiled me there is so much on youtube that is it's not all true but there's like some truth there's some like amateurish honesty to it whereas like there's one top gear episode in particular i bring up a lot where they took boats maybe vietnam mm -hmm. and uh i watched them crash that boat into like the same piling 14 times in a row and it's like no one is this incompetent toddlers are more competent than this they're running over rowboats that how these are boats you can go anywhere you want it, it's not like you had to thread the needle here you purposely ran over someone's boat i hope they were compensated i choose to believe that this person volunteered their shitty boat and were taken care of but i uh, oh they like 
they ran over like kelp or something, right? You can see this stuff. You can see it in the distance. You could go and they had to go out of their way to have as many problems as they did. And I don't like that contrived fake drama bullshit reality TV. And that's what Top Gear is. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of scripted comedy. And you mm-hmm. want more meat and potatoes car information, it seems. Like, like I, 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 I don't like the mixture that they do. I don't like the balance that they've struck between the two myself. Um, I, I feel the same way, I guess. Uh, I, I either want more comedy, more zaniness, or way less. Like, like, like it's something about like, the balance that I just don't care for. I would it, like it, a show that was n- like car and driver TV or something that was just stats. And, and I want to know cubic inches. And I want to know tire pressures. And what's in the brake lines? Like I, but but then if when we go over here, like I want somebody literally crashing cars and and being on fire, and it's all for for pranks and laughs. One of the and, other. And help me with name pronunciation. Uh, Dave Demario. It's a car YouTuber. Demuro. Right? Yep. Demuro. Okay. So he does these car reviews in very detail, yep. and uh, like he'll sit there and and maybe exaggerate how important the cubic inches in the center console are, or like, you know, he doesn't like the decal on a button or something. And, and, you know, it's, there's some humor to it and you learn about the car and it's interesting. And he, he makes good videos. I like them. Top gear. They do fake shit, you know, like when they ran the Tesla battery down on purpose and they could see that, that, that was like a big controversy. All the Tesla fans got upset because they acted like, the thing didn't do what it said it would, and it did. And it was insincere, dishonest, and it was a lie. So much of that show feels like a lie. And I want to see the like what it's like to have these things that I don't get exposed to. Like, oh my God, that's an F40? What is it like to drive an F40? I want the opinion, their opinion. I respect them as car guys. They're light years ahead of where I'll ever be. And I want them to tell me what it's like. Like, man, this back end twists out all the time. Like I, the oversteers makes this really challenging to drive, even for somebody like me. Like I would enjoy that. But for them to purposely stop on the gas and make it slide around, I don't enjoy that. Sure. And I think that when we think about what Top Gear became not necessarily what it started out as you know we we had what i think 23 seasons of top gear and five or six of grand tour they they became the show that a car guy could make his girlfriend watch and it was different than a doug demuro quirks and features presentation Mm. of what a car is because it was entertaining to people who might not care about cars if you went just for rote knowledge statistics and everything else in early top gear you saw that we, you know, really big focus on like my connection might be getting a little iffy. Sorry. I think you're back. You're back. Yep. Cool. You know, we saw the power lap boards and, you know, the cool wall and all the things that were very, very subjective and objective to really show us what the cars were relative to each other. And that was wonderful, but nobody that didn't already love cars cared. And I think when you think about the 11 Top Gear specials and what you're talking about is a Grand Tour special, the, mm-hmm. the Vietnam boats, then those were deliberately supposed to be larger than life, right? And it, they still need to have reasonable continuity. They need to be coherent storylines. They need to seem real. But, you know, so we had a sponsor approach us two and a half years ago and essentially said, we want to do some higher production value YouTube content and we don't really care what it is. And so if you tell me that I can do whatever I want, what I want to do is a Top Gear cheap car challenge because having watched them, whether they're real or not, it looks like the most fun you could possibly have. Mm -hmm. And we've done eight of them since then. We did the cheapest supercar you could buy for the price of a new Z06, the most depreciated supercars, uh, Ferraris for the price of a Camry. We secret Santa gifted each other the most unreliable cars on earth. And then we just have like a a series of challenges, uh, generally about a road trip, right? And so Mm -hmm. the... Seeing what that meant for automotive journalism was that there is a demand. Maybe it's not the most authentic representation of the cars, but there is a demand for entertainment that is car centric, but really is a lot more about the chemistry of the characters and the comedy that you can create Mm -hmm. circumstance for and things like that. And so I, I think that I totally agree that you see continuity errors and you see that, that they did the same crash from three angles and they automatic, they deliberately went a place they shouldn't have. That stinks. But at the same time, having done it and trying to capture it, 
the cars blow up at the wrong times, always. And, you know, you're trying to redo a scene to get a better angle and you crash into a tree. And, you know, th these things really do happen. Mm -hmm. And and then we have to figure out, well, all right, how do we put that into the storyline that we, because we really, you know, blew the head gasket on this Cadillac on the way to dinner. And I shouldn't have been in the car because you should have been driving it because of whatever. But we can't yeah. not have this car just bellowing smoke, uh, you know, mm -hmm. in a church parking lot in Missouri. So mm -hmm. we're going to we're going to invent the way that went in. Uh, you know, for instance, they did all these races against public transit. You can't film that. It's not po like yeah, you'd have to course. totally duplicate <laughs> oh. the, the crew. So you film the drive one day and then you film the flying the next day and then you intersect and you pretend like it's you know, the craziest last 36 hours of your life. And so, yes, there are some things about that. But at the same time, I could get my wife to watch it. And that was useful because yeah. it's better than watching The Bachelor. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm the least car guy here. And you hit the nail on the head with it. I like the Top Gear adventures because I like the chemistry of the three guys. I think Jeremy Clarkson is hilarious. I like how they both dig on May. Like, it's it's a good vibe they all have. And the cars for me has always been ancillary. Like, if I put an episode of Top Gear on, an old one, like, I watched all the specials, like, when, when, as they were coming out many years ago. And then, like, I was like, I love this show. Let me watch an episode of Top Gear regular. And I, like, went back and watched, and he's like today tonight we're going to the amazon we're not going to the amazon we're going to talk about a boring car and it was like <laughs> and then he would t say like this is the speed of it this is the worst thing about it and i'm like this isn't th this sucks i don't like this and so then i switched okay. back to the adventures and i know that it's totally contrived i know they're not really racing a train in india and that they're not really <laughs> you know struggling that hard to drive their boats but i did like woody's idea that it's totally fake and contrived aside from the damage they're doing to vietnamese people's property <laughs> <laughs> God, I hope like, that's real. the entire thing was faked except for that poor villager who we destroyed like, <laughs> I, I, i'm watching I a tv show that. right now called ink masters it's about tattooing and they they they, they tattoo oh, yeah, and then yeah. the worst tattoo artist gets voted off the island every week cool <laughs> well anyway after every like little round of tattoo competition they sit in a living room of some sort and fight with each other they argue i hate it i hate it 99 percent of the time because i've made a video or two i've never been on ink masters but i can see they're not wearing lav mics so i know there are boom mics hanging out directly over their head just out of camera range and i'm watching this show if you ever watch Jim Ma or Ink Masters, I nearly called it Jump Masters. <laughs> there is a jump cut every three seconds for an hour. There's a there are so many jump cuts in this show that I'm well aware there's at least three cameras, four cameras on all these arguments, and I'm like, this is the most inauthentic conversation to have ever happened in <laughs> yeah. television history. There's four cameras and boom mics hanging from the ceiling, and and like none of what they're saying is. Did they have a script? Or are they playing it up for the camera? They stop. They stop all the time, and they give directions. All right, say it this way now. Try it this way. What if you were angry because he said he he said this? What if you were mad because he's even here? All right, play it that way. And mm -hmm. they have. Then when it gets to the editing room, they have hour for a, for a three minute conversation. They have an hour and a half of footage. Then they can cut in reactions from the other guy. They have like eighteen cuts of the black guy in the corner going mm. ah. Oh, shit like, like 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 you can plug that right in anywhere <laughs> i'm such an asshole when i watch this show i track what shirt everybody's wearing you and if there's to, yeah. ever a continuity error i'm like ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, he had the star wars shirt on for this argument and that is star trek you can't get this shit past me Did you like pause it like jackie Get in there! <laughs> it happened again! <laughs> Stop watching shows that upset you! <laughs> uh, well, but so they, they also all finish at the same time. These varying skilled tattooers have eight hours to make a tattoo, and oh my. Navarro mm -hmm. or whatever is like, you know, five, four, three, two, one, and they're all, whoa, we just, you know, they all had three days to do that tattoo. If you had. <laughs> I don't I've never know watched if they had a show. timeline, but they do act like they all, like, like I don't know if you've ever taken an exam you're not prepared for, and when they say pencils up and you stop, that's your last. You know, don't keep going; you'll you'll get in trouble. All of them finish their tattoos like that, but most of these tattoos are completely done. They must have been done thirty minutes ago. Yeah, right. some of them mm -hmm. have uh, aftercare. I, yeah, I'm not that, a tattoo guy, but maybe they yeah. put like a Vaseline and a Saran wrap on it. Yeah, and yeah, 
So there, it inspired a Lego version, Lego Masters, uh, that my seven year old loves. Oh. And it is, it's hosted by Will Arnett. It's on Fox. It's amazing. But they, uh, my my son went to like one of the conventions or whatever of Lego people and one of the Lego masters was there and they said all everything related to time was totally fabricated. We built all the things, but like, no, it takes forever to do this. Mm. And it's not that entertaining to watch brick, 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 brick. And that, but uh, I, I don't know. It's reality show. It, it, just it, like that. You have to watch it for the entertainment. You can't overly <laughs> dissect the continuity. I, I you can't it. tell me how to watch it. <laughs> I, I, I reserve my right to be a dick. <laughs> I've talked about, I have a conspiracy theory about theory about one of Gordon Ramsay's shows. One of his, it's master chef. I don't recall which season, but it's the season that Paula Dean guest stars, because here's what happens. The cast has one black man re- remaining on it. You know, you, you vote a guy off every week. He, he loses in week seven. Let's just call it. Mm-hmm. Week eight, Paula Dean is the guest chef. She, hey y'all, she comes on in. If you don't remember, she had that big controversy where she had used the N word quite a lot, and she also had these themed dinners parties at her house that were like antebellum style with black servant folk dressed in period specific slave clothes. That's and, you a know, rough all, look. It's a rough look. It's <laughs> over well rough. with a lot of people. And uh, a lot of people are saying it's... No, yeah, no one in the party bad. planning committee. <laughs> she was the party planning com- committee. That's, That's the it. fucking problem. She called Shut Robert Downey Jr. This is that bitch it. from Food Network. She's so giving us two million. Do whatever so, she says. <laughs> so they canceled her. And she was a big deal on Food Network and everywhere. But she's now... Gordon Ramsay's letting her back in. And get, like, let's see how what people think, you know? Like, like testing the waters a little. This is her second appearance since the, the whole thing. Black guy's been voted off the show. So she does her thing. It's fine. Whatever. I don't give a shit. She leaves the very next episode. It's called the ninth episode. We're doing something very special this episode. Something we've never done before. We're going to bring back one chef that we voted off. (laughs) (laughs) And of course, it's the black guy. They bring (laughs) him right back in. And he's like, guess who's back, (laughs) (laughs) y'all? It was almost like he was like, I refuse to be on an episode with Paula Dean. However, you want to work it to make it smooth for your ratings and your people you do that but if you make me i will say no thank you i won't i won't be here with you you racist bitch that is what i'm going to say if you make me be on screen with paul dean you fix it i feel like that happens and they're like all right we're gonna vote you off then you're gonna get to win a competition that's completely contrived and come back the next episode <laughs> <Nope. I'm> in, <laughs> that let's do it i think that's what I it believe, was i, swear, I think you're it's exactly so right. weird that, that that happened like that I, and and I he didn't seem like the kind of dude who'd be down with Paula either. Well, was what was the dish situation? First of all, Gordon's lying. He's brought back contestants hundreds of times. <laughs> I've, I've, so first of all, willy nilly one, fact check fake. I've watched <laughs> enough of his show. He brings people back once a series yeah. all the time. But it seems almost as like oh wait wait this is, was the question was the black guy's dish on the episode that he got kicked off was it actually the worst dish? Because really if it wasn't it was. the worst no. dish, then you might be, you might have something going here. That that was the other thing. It was weird that he even got voted off because he was one of the stronger contestants. It was like what? Like, like like yeah, the whole thing seemed contrived. The whole thing seemed like bullshit. Like he wouldn't share the stage with Paula Dean, and they fixed I buy it, it. Up that way. There you go. Yeah. I wouldn't either. Like that's pretty fucking racist. That thing she did. I, I think it really but is she, coming from one of those old me? Southern white lady things places. But but that's that seemed really racist. What was the challenge? Because. I don't like all of her food is like it's the same, isn't it? All it's just butter, just butter. Well, there's deep butter fried in it. butter. It looks uh, good. I, yeah. I love her food. I use her recipes for stuff sometimes. It's fucking really good. Butter spice yeah, takes food. Do you think <laughs> Colonel Sanders wasn't racist as shit? The man has the perfect blend of virgin spices. That like, man lots of cannot be. There's no way a man who is so yeah. hand in glove with the African American community could possibly be a racist. <laughs> Colonel Sanders is woke as fuck, and I won't hear anything uh, th- to disparage the colonel's Kyle, good name. You don't know. Real they made him a goddamn about. colonel for Christ's sakes. You, don't, you, you, are, don't you couldn't that. be more wrong, Kyle. If KFC understood their target market, they would have certain fruits on the menu. Oh, oh, well, that's <laughs> what? what apricots. 
<laughs> Maybe. Dude, this guy was alive till 1980. I had in my head he was really? like Revolutionary no. War time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had no Such idea. An idiot. I was, like, I was like, picturing a proud you know, a, a colonel who like met with a French general and then decided to fight the Brit. No, he's. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. He no, he's a chicken like salesman that. from Kentucky. And the, yeah, and he the, dodged the draft. Yeah, yeah and it was. Yeah. The, I'm, it says the that, I'm completely with you, but why did I think he was Revolutionary War and that the KFC franchise is 300 years old? I, I <laughs> thought so this was a much more storied institution. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, it, if that were true, can you imagine the commercials? America's oldest fast food franchise since right? 1773. I would have mentioned that. Like, like it, it predated McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, that would have. You're right. That would be a huge thing. <laughs> 1792. <laughs> you really just that's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah no, he, and he wasn't like, a real colonel. Well, he was a real colonel. I, th- no. I can't remember. Honorific title. That counts. Ooh. I'm counting an honorific title. He can't command a battalion or a legion or anything. A battalion of chicken cookers, he could. It was his wife's recipe. That was the secret. A and, of chicken cookers. Yeah, a whole fucking <laughs> unit of them frying up del- those delicious birds with those. Where are you saying it was his wife's recipe? I'm not I seeing went, that here. I went to her recipe. That's true. In the divorce, she got to keep the original recipe. He came up with this other thing. But she's oh, got her man. own. She's got the original Kentucky Fried Chicken uh, there in Kentucky. I've been to it. You sit down and it's like that family style thing where they you get like big bowls of everything and there is no ordering. You're like, yeah, we want lunch. And they're like, all right, we'll go get it. I mean, this guy, I can't I can only imagine how good KFC used to be just reading about him. It says that in his later years. So the 70s, he was like actively pissed all the time about like, this isn't the chicken I sell. This is low quality. Like he was pissed about it. And so, like, apparently the, the end years of his life were him, like, bickering with the people who had taken his company. Like Papa like, John. People. Before like him. Papa After John. him. Yeah. Was the rumor true that they had to change it to KFC because they couldn't call it chicken legally? I wonder. <laughs> what? Oh. oh, if that's true, that's unreal. I choose unreal. to believe it. But it I, is chicken, <laughs> right? Well, I, I think they had served yeah. This is a rumor that I heard years and years ago. I have no idea. Popeye's is way better. But I think that there was a... There was a, something that they had served a chicken product that was overly processed and it could no longer oh. be called chicken or that they had genetically modified oh, them the chickens to have larger breasts and that made them genetically not chickens or something. Yeah, they like made the that. chickens have extra tenders. I Googled it. Anyone <laughs> okay. using Kentucky for their business would first need to state would first need the state's permission and would be required to pay licensing fees. Well, Kentucky Fried Chicken rebranded to KFC instead of paying licensing fees. That's Fuck a much you, better Kentucky. answer than they weren't serving <laughs> yeah. real chicken. What a huge uh, middle finger from Kentucky. If like, I was yeah. Georgia, I'd be like, yo, you can be Georgian fried chicken for free. That's yeah. it. We do it for oh, movies this all is... the time. <laughs> the <laughs> Kentucky <laughs> Derby became the run for the roses. Neil Diamond's sign, song Kentucky Woman is no longer played on the radio due to the fee. There's some other people that were impacted wow. by Kentucky's Kentucky oppressive are, licensing. Kentucky are a bunch of babies over there. Mm. What else? Who... Like, so they're not proud of that at all. If it was Missouri fried chicken, if I were in another state and I drove past one, I'd be like, hell yeah, a little taste of home. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, take, take well, pride in it. Well, um, yeah, I, I don't I don't know about if, if he ever ordered around a, a unit of soldiers or anything, but the man makes a good bird. I do think Popeye's is better. I like that dirty rice. Uh, I'll never forget having lunch with mm. my Muslim friend. And he'd never had their dirty rice before. And about he was like, he was a big fat fuck. And he was so, he was all the way through a bowl of it. And I told him I had pork in it. And he started spitting it all over the table. And it was, it made my <laughs> afternoon. It really did. <laughs> fuck you, Garrett, you ex con piece of shit. Now I'm a fella too. <laughs> <laughs> fuck <laughs> you, you piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Garrett was yeah. the fucking worst. He had, uh, he had taken the rap for our boss on some drug crime. And uh, done like a couple years in prison. So then, now that our boss was a boss of a car dealership, he he made him like the house mouse. So he got all the done deals. Someone comes, someone like orders two chargers, and 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 even though we're a Ford dealership because we're corporate, he was like, ah, well, I'll just call them and get two of those sent over here, and I they'll go through me to you, through me, through Garrett to you, and uh, and and so yeah, we all hated that guy. <laughs> Sounds like a jerk. I'm glad you. Kyle, you got to come tell car stories on our channel sometime. You, I would do that. Come I would over. do that. I've I've got a few car stories. Nothing nothing great. cool like you do though. You you've done cool stuff. I've never yeah, driven anything fast or, or or anything like that. Um, what's that? Um, the only like cool car I've been in, if it's even a car, is, the guy's last name was Morgan. Baldwin. No, oh, I mean that's a cool car that I was in one time. But but as far as like sk- like fast stuff, um, 
what, that Baja truck that I was in with that Dan Bilzerian oh, video, mm -hmm. whatever that truck is, the, the driver was, I think his last name was Baldwin, um, which makes me think of the Baldwin brothers, but it's definitely not. His name might have even been Billy Baldwin or something like that. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but he had one of those crazy like Baja mm -hmm. trucks that does the crazy jumps and has insane suspension. Did you have to wear there. anything special for it? Did they put you in like a kidney belt or just a helmet and no street clothes? Helmet and the and a racing suit that was too small, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, and that was it. And he got so much air. It was one of the cooler things I've done, and that, that I've never seen anything drive that fast and accelerate like that in on dirt. Um, so mm -hmm. that thing was fucking neat. Hey, we did some Stupid jumps on question. it. Is it four-wheel drive? Are they in four-wheel drive all the time? Yeah. I would assume so, but they I was are. just hanging on for the ride. I didn't because they go so fast most of the time. I wondered if two <laughs> <laughs> that little ass race suit. It doesn't look nah. too small. I don't, You're looking uh, svelte. <laughs> they always have an awkward distance from the shoulder to oh, the crotch. So much That's what yes. gets uncomfortable. <laughs> And, and yeah. that belt needs tightening or something. You could get a V there, Kyle, that you don't have in the photo. <laughs> I've got it's like I've got SpongeBob each, Kyle nah, pants right I've got there. pistols in each of my pockets, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, uh, Kyle, like I, those photo shoots you did with Dan Bilzerian, it was so funny seeing those pictures because you can see the ones that were like curated to make him look like he's almost as tall as you. And then there are the more like organic ones where it's just him hanging around with the girls and like you or some other guys there. And it's like, I know Kyle and he's not six foot eight. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> Kyle's a tall guy, but if he's Kyle six two, that guy's that, that guy's not five ten. Like, yeah, not five um, nine. <laughs> whoever took this photo works for Dan. Uh, I'll say yep. that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is that's okay there's, i mean i mean forced it, perspective it, happening in this thing yeah you know, that, that's that's okay there's nothing wrong with that, it's like here. a frodo and sam this is dan and the guy next to him is like sitting four feet behind her like away away from the truck <laughs> to try and force it How i got no is... problem with that i did the same hmm. kind of shit to people i would always anybody i'm six two with shoes legitimately and 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 whenever <laughs> and anyway, whenever it's I'm Kyle around foot. <laughs> whenever I'm around people who are taller than me, I make sure I stand on something so I tower over them in pictures. Oh, like, I am the worst. Anyone who's taken a picture with me knows that in a situation like we're looking on screen, I am on my tippy toes. A hundred percent of the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I crouch. Camera like man, like three, two, one, and just as he starts to say one, Richard, uh, I go three inches. <laughs> Richard Ryan is legitimate, like six three or six four. I don't remember which, but he's a tall fella. He he he's clearly taller than me. And I, when I meet him, I'm like, oh, you're taller. So <laughs> like, whenever I'm on camera with him. I got my military boots on that some like <laughs> some army company, you know, would sent me some fancy. Oh, these are the new A Tech boots, the the fucking whoever the fuck, and I don't care. I throw them in a closet. But I'm, oh, it's time to stand next to Richard. Let's throw on the big boy boots. And all of a sudden, I'm just this much shorter than Richard. And if I <laughs> lean just right, <laughs> you just have to have a pussy. conversation with Richard's shoe person beforehand. <laughs> Yeah. I had Jason yeah, Statham do that to me. I was, uh, we were on the Today Show together and I, you know, we talked for an hour mm -hmm. and he, uh, at the end of it, I was like, hey man, can we take a picture? I don't do this often, but you're Jason Statham and you're the transporter and you're awesome. So <laughs> uh, he takes my phone, hands it to his assistant, has her count down and uh, three, two, on one, he steps forward about 18 inches. I'm six, <laughs> five. So that we look close ish. And, <laughs> it was the, and it was just so trained. He knew exactly when to do it and smile or, you know, whatever Jason Statham does. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So step you, you got to Maybe build I need to up my game. Wow. Yeah, that is, that's that's much better than the tiptoes is the step forward because you're in five. <laughs> that's it. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's a, look yeah, at how much bigger I'm about to get. How tall is Jason Statham? <laughs> Probably five, uh, eight, short, eight so. nine. Five eight nine. Yeah. Did you know he was artist. an Olympic athlete? Probably everyone knows that. A diver, know that. right? A diver. A diver. Yeah. Oh, Amazing. that seems One hard. Useless facts I have. Uh, I like Jason Faith Statham. I think uh, as far as like Hollywood tough guys go, I'd say he's in the the, the percentage that probably could kick a little ass. Uh, I don't know if he's got it. I don't know what his background is, but he just looks like a guy. I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe it's the shaved head. I also appreciate as a man who has all of his hair. I, I do understand the that it must be hard for those who don't. And it's nice to have a guy out there, you know, carrying the flag for them. Yeah, I, that I was going to say something similar. You phrased it really well. There are a lot of people who are like, just shave it, bro. And it's like, all right, it, but it's not your best look, 
right? You know, it's the best look you have available. Statham really pulls it off. I don't yeah. know that he'd look better He's, with hair. You can, you can say, ah, oh, dude, you could be a Statham. You, you can throw that example out there. Now, you know this guy's no Jason Statham. Jason Statham <laughs> is a international movie star, former Olympic athlete, and, and a millionaire. The, your buddy at Home Depot is just fucked. Like, like tell him, like, <laughs> tell him, like, 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 I mean, I mean, they'll sell this stuff to anybody. You just take one of these a day and you don't lose it. An asteroid, one tablet. I mean, yeah, you, you, your dick might stop working, but you're not going to need your dick if you're bald. Yeah, this is so makes true. <laughs> there, there's a few people who look better at Paul. Jason Statham's one, and I just had, oh, oh, um, the rock. Help me, Walter Wright is who I'm going for. Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah. Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston. Yeah. You know, we saw Patrick as as Stewart's as... the OG, though. <laughs> Oh, Patrick Stewart looked good with no hair, but I'm not sure he looked better than a hypothetical Harry Stewart. I've seen him without, with and without. I don't know. He's he's always been without. I think of him as a proud, bald man. And I always love how he thought he was going to wear a wig to be Captain Picard. And they were like, in the future, people won't care about hair. That's a superficial thing. Captain Picard would, wouldn't give a shit. He's bald and he's proud. And he's like, oh, Dude, okay. I saw him lose his hair. temper in an interview about his hair. Have you ever seen this? No. Oh, yeah. He... They were asking him, like, hey, you're one of the sexiest men alive. You have no hair. How do you feel about that? And he's like, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Sometime in my early 20s, my hair started falling out. It was one of the most traumatic events of my entire life. And people keep bringing it up again and again and again. Given the choice, I would have hair, but I wasn't given the choice. And it's like, Jesus, dude. Like, it, he doesn't like being bald. At least he didn't in that interview. Oh, maybe. man. Now that he I see just this. just go get hair. Like he's well, heavier. That's possible now. He can't get this back though. This is that. Well, and no, like, he's like it's 85. already like here. It's already getting. You can see it's leaving him, and he's like twenty six mm. here probably. <laughs> he looks older than that to me, but uh, yeah, he does. He, I, I think he's uh, skinnier as Captain Picard, and he just literally has more handsome face for that reason. He's very, he's very thin as Captain Picard. Very fit, I would say. He's got some shirtless scenes, and he's even mm -hmm. got a scene where he's in like a bikini, like a like bikini bottoms. Like way yeah. too much. Thigh. There's a lot of Captain Picard thigh being shown on that episode where he goes to Riza and hooks up with uh, with Vash or, or Vaj or whatever her name was. <laughs> That's a good episode. He's wearing that. Well, guys, I got to hop off, but I appreciate you having me. I got to hop on another one of these in a little bit, but uh, we always, always great it. to see you. Thank you so much for coming. You did great. Oh, thank. Oh, you is guys. there anything you want to talk about before you go? Yeah, where oh, they want well, to go to go to VinWiki, Google yeah, it. Yeah, VinWiki. Uh, tomorrow we, we release uh, our next episode of Car Trek. It's our eighth series, and it involves uh, a reproduced Star Trek set. So fits right in with this. Uh, we found one in southeastern Georgia where they've recreated it. They are adamant not for pornographic reasons, but uh, it's exact. It's like the bridge of the Enterprise. And so, uh, which one? I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the slightest clue. Uh, one, one of our uh, Tyler Hoover, who is uh, one of my co-presenters on, is a huge Star Trek fan, and so it was like his fantasy to ever shoot something here. But uh, I, I, I'm, yeah, yeah, that'd be really cool. All right, we really we enjoyed having you. Yeah, I was happy when I heard you were guest. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Y'all have a great night. Okay. Good night. Yep. Good night. I watched. Right. Uh, um, I've been devouring, I should say, these YouTube shorts. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I just press the fucking, I press the button and another one plays. And yeah. Um, and, and I saw like Joe Rogan reacting to, I don't know when Donald Trump told this speech, but at some point he told a speech and he was like, we're going to tax China 25%. And there's a couple ways. It, it's all about the messenger, not the message. You could send a guy, oh, we're going to tax you 25%. Then you could send a guy that says, Listen, motherfucker, we're about to tax you 25%. I had never seen Donald Trump I say that. that. And, it, yeah. and it, it it cracked me up. It, it, the, the audience exploded with laughter, like Rogan like rolled over. Oh, that's what I really wanted to talk about. I'm, uh, it was um, a question I saw on Reddit. Okay, uh, I don't remember where it came about, but it was whether... Joe Rogan could beat up Bruce Lee and they're both in their prime. <laughs> and, and the comment section was full of like, there were some people who were like, one of these guys was an actor and one of these guys has done martial arts his whole life. And then there are the people who don't know either of those things and believe the complete opposite. So it was just a shit show of people arguing over who could, who would win in a fight, Joe Rogan or Bruce or, or uh, Bruce Lee. <laughs> are we sure Bruce Lee? I, I, I don't even know. I, I thought Bruce Lee did have some level of fighting chops. 
Uh, you know, um, I, I think his thing was he he was never going to compete uh, or be in a real fight because of his like spiritual mantra or something like that. Um, hmm. that you know, convenient. and he's also a very small man. And uh, not that Joe Rogan is a tower towering figure by any means. They're probably about the same height. Let me Joe interject. Was, yeah. When is Joe's prime? That was my first question. Is prime Joe recent? Where no. he's hulked out and kicks that like splits heavy bags. Twenty in years two? ago, no, like since yeah, like twenty years ago. Twenty year years. Old. He has forty pounds, fifty pounds of muscle on the guy you're talking about. That's what that's what I'm talking about. That, that exactly. I'm talking about Joe Rogan in the pictures that you see where he's got a six pack and he looks terrifying. <laughs> like <laughs> he's all tatted up with a six pack. That picture versus any Bruce Lee that you can conjure is mm. what I'm talking about. And 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 fucking Joe Rogan, the podcast host, wins. He just does. Joe, Joe Rogan would oh, absolutely hey, brutalize I'm, him. I misunderstood what you said. Do you think Joe Rogan, the podcast host, the 50-ish year old Well, they're guy, all the same man, but what I'm saying is prime Joe versus prime Bruce <laughs> oh, Lee. Oh, okay, Joe okay. Wins. I got twisted up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Apparently, so, based on this Google, a lot of Bruce Lee's supposed fights, totally hearsay. No, no, nobody else was there for a number of them. I don't know. That's the first thing on Google. Zach has some stuff here. Bruce Lee could land a punch nine times in one second. I find that to be horseshit. Or if he did, it they must be taps. Bruce Would he uh, punch this is saying nine times in one his second? One inch punch force was a seventy five kilogram opponent five to six meters away. He had a punching power of three hundred and fifty pounds. While Muhammad Ali. Oh, the same as Muhammad Ali. I, I, this is all bullshit. And That's obviously not true. <laughs> yeah. And Muhammad Ali surely hit harder than Bruce Lee did. The person that wrote that knows that there are photos of Mike Tyson, right? That we can see. <laughs> like there's, there's evidence of him fighting and doing it. Yeah. Muhammad Ali. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Muhammad Muhammad Ali. Ali. <laughs> yeah uh, no, I, I, I have to say that I think that if they were to fight, that Joe Rogan would beat up uh bruce lee because and, and also because his thing is brazilian jiu-jitsu and, and seemingly bruce yeah. lee's thing is like that spinning around kicking and and and, and it and might be partly stuff. just the generations too like if bruce lee grew up now he'd be an mma dude of some sort yeah that's breaking my rules though and 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 in and, okay. and my mind okay. joe rogan has access to a time machine and he just has to know and this is his first trip First trip, he's showing up. He's throwing the he's throwing gloves to to Bruce Lee, and he's saying, "Let's fucking go!" Like like like, like and it, but it's prime Bruce Lee. It's it's him on the set of Enter the Dragon. Mm -hmm. It's that Bruce Lee. He's, I he's, yeah. He's I hear. I, I guess what I'm saying is in the same way that like the current generation of every sport is much better than the one from 30 years ago because their training methods are better, their knowledge is better. That might be why Joe's better because he just he's further down the road. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that's definitely what it is. Like, I don't know shit about martial arts, but I know that like everybody who I talk to who knows shit is like, oh yeah, if you're going to get into it, jujitsu. That's the one that has the best practical application. And was that even a thing back then? Jujitsu? Was it just something practiced by like five guys in Brazil? Or I feel like jujitsu got popular 20 years ago. I don't know when it started, started, but you couldn't have gone to a school yeah. in America less than or more than If we're talking about ago. Gracie jujitsu, and I think we are, then... Mm -hmm. I don't think it was it was happening during Bruce Lee's time. Like, like, like right. or if it like, was, it was black and white seven guys in Brazil. <laughs> you know? I, I'm making this up, but I'm thinking they invented it in the eighties, right? Like like something like that. Sure. Uh, How much be. of it did they invent? Like what what did they base their is it the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Is that called Gracie Jiu Jitsu? I, no. It, there's a family who rebranded it after their own name <laughs> and it's a marketing thing, but it's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But they didn't Mr. invent Jiu Jitsu. They were just the most famous. Uh, no one invented. Are the only fighting, ones that I knew, right? Like, like before Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was probably um, judo was a very similar thing. Just judo yeah. focused more on the throw, thinking that the fight kind of wins based on who lands on top. Mm -hmm. And Jiu Jitsu started with the bottom. Like it, most Jiu Jitsu sites in a gym start on your knees. Like they don't even do the takedown part, even though it's super important. Hmm. Hmm. But well, I did not know that. Anyway, uh, yeah. I don't know. Are there any good UFC fights coming up? Um, Adesanya's about to fight, right? I think he's is he? Fight. He fought recently, um, but no one was hurt. Thank goodness. <laughs> Remember? Was oh no, no, you're right. I don't know what I'm thinking. What I don't know what I'm thinking at all. Um, no, I don't. I, I don't know of any that are that are on the corner. They. Um, I still haven't watched the Pena um, Nunez fight, but I heard she got battered. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope there's not a rematch of that. No, I, I, I'm not really interested in any of the matchups coming up either. I know Nate Diaz is going to fight Chimaev. Um, 
and a very odd a fight. People were giving Dana White a, a hard time about it. They're, they're like, why are you making this fight? Why are you feeding Nate Diaz to Chimaev? He's like, you have no idea how hard it is to make a fight with Nate Diaz. This <laughs> is what, like, he asked for Francis and Ganu. Okay, so like you gotta work through things like that. Is that a real thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Francis Gunn is the heavyweight champion of the world. He's like almost double the size of Nate Diaz. Yeah, he could murder it's crazy. him. It September doesn't make 10th. Any sense. Yeah, it's, it's just coming a, up. Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> so he's right. He apparently, he's incredibly hard to work with. So there's a little backstory that Kyle knows, but the audience might not. Nate Diaz is a very, very popular fighter, and he's aging. I don't know how old he is, but I'm going to call him 37. He is on the last fight of his contract, and he'd really like to get out of his UFC contract, use his fame, and fight someone like Jake Paul, for example. Yep. And they feel like they're giving this older version of Nate Diaz, who's, if you know fighting, he's not one of the elite guys anymore, and they're feeding him to an up-and-comer. This guy is an absolute ass-kicking machine. He's currently ranked, I don't know, fourth or something in the weight class. But and he they're feeding him. multiple weight classes. He's just like, yeah. anyone, give me anyone. Yeah, and they're <laughs> feeding this aged, unranked fighter to him, and we'll see. Uh, Taylor, there's this really interesting thing that's happening in fighting where you, mm -hmm. you have the Conor mm -hmm. McGregor guys who are like, I'm going to pick and choose who I fight. It's going to be orchestrated. Okay. There's mm -hmm. going to be a lead up. There's going to, I already know what song we're going to play. Mm -hmm. And then there's guys like this uh, Chimaev guy who's just like, Give me fight, brother. I need yeah. fight. I need to smash. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> like, they're like, Well, the only fight we have is 170 pounds. Yes, I weigh this. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's, at a, it's 155. I can weigh this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me two days. Uh, he had fought um, and won, and then like I think he fought maybe another guy like two weeks later. Like, like he's yeah. like, let me get in the next card. I want to fight them too. And Dana's like, well, you did just destroy this guy. Are your hands sore? No, not at all. And just throws him right back in, and he beats up another guy like a couple weeks later. So pretty yeah. fun guy to watch. Yeah, good for that guy. He knows he's in his and prime now. He's got to be the squeaky wheel. Get the. Fights. I wish Taylor was a UFC fan because he would do the best accent fake interviews like he does for hockey players. <laughs> <laughs> UFC has much better accents. Really? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll have to there's check some, it out. You would lots you of would Slavic, drive. broken English, and they uh -huh. had these funny mannerisms. This one guy we're talking about has a hair lip. Uh, he's uh, he's great. From he has fighting. A, yeah. No, he has there's a bromance. Palette, yeah, palette. Clap. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that? I think that's the, the right. Think you have it right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so he uh, he didn't get it fixed, or he did get it. It's, it's been it's, fixed, but you know, not super well. Uh, I know that Conor McGregor calls him what rat mouth or rat rat lip. Jesus Christ! Yeah, Conor McGregor calls him rat lip. They I mean, should. There's a lot of other Conor injuries on this guy. guy. Conor Conor McGregor is not the fighter he used to be, and I know I'm a bit of a Conor hater, but. This guy would smash Connor, and I'd enjoy seeing that. Oh no, dude! The I'm UFC for... fighters and they're just addiction to short bus haircuts. Just, just <laughs> looking, <laughs> they just look. They all look terrible. When you see one that looks good, like Connor, like does his hair. Yeah, and like, wow, this defense. guy looks fancy. The rest <laughs> of them are like shaving patterns to look feral. Like it's so <laughs> scary. There's a certain Connor haircut, like a short, high, tight. You know that, that he's probably only worn once, but I think that's the Connor. And every time he comes out with like cornrows or long hair or shaved head, I'm not like, what are you form. doing? No, that's not your hair. Yeah. yeah, he needs that thing that's just like it's. Frankly, it's a. I'm gonna call it the Irish bowl cut. All right, he needs that Irish bowl cut. It looks good on him. He's got the he's got the skull for it. I saw him in an interview recently. He is like. You know, sometimes you can see somebody's cutting a promo. They're like, I'm going into the Thunderdome and I'm taking <laughs> on the Undertaker for the belt and fifty thousand dollars. They don't mm -hmm. mean it. They, they, they what they mean is like, yeah, I'm going out on the stage with my good friend Mike, and we're gonna put on that performance that we did in Kansas City last night, but this time mm -hmm. I, he's gonna win. Mm -hmm. Uh Connor McGregor was talking to um who's the black ESPN host that I despise? Stephen A. Smith. Stephen okay, A. Smith okay. is like, You lost to Nur Nurmagomedov, you lost to Poirier. You love, and he's like laying it out there, and, and Connor fucking melts down. He focuses on the Nurmagomedov thing, though. He's like, he never beat anybody. You look at the fights. His father set him up, taking on guys that were two and six. His first 20 wins were fake wins. And, and like, he's just like, he's so angry. <laughs> he's so toxic about this. He wants him so bad. And, and that's what I like. It's not Connor. It, at the end of it, the last thing is always, I want him. I want him. And it's like, mm -hmm. 
No one wants it but you. <laughs> He's so scary. He retired. He was so scary. <laughs> You're right. I don't know what happens now. Like I, I think he's coaching now. Mm-hmm. But and and if you look at him, he's really big and thick and strong. It looks like he'd struggle to make 155, and oh, he yeah. struggled to make 155 in his prime sometimes. So now, like, how does this guy do three years out of competition after a really bad weight cut? Maybe Connor wins today. And I'm not a big Connor fanboy, but like, Connor's at least in the game. I think kind of. I don't know. We'll see. How Wishes he was. Is. We'll see yeah. how Connor's leg is. I don't know if he'll ever come back and be the Connor of old. But I that hope breaks we... the leg. He's wasted, dude. I'd love to see him. He's not a horse or anything, but 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 like, and we aren't horses, you know. We don't just put us put ourselves down. But 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 like, I hope we get to see him do something. I like the Connor show. I want to see him box uh, Jake Paul or or fucking MMA. Uh, uh, I want to see him fight Poirier again. Honestly, I want to see him fight a fourth time. Yeah, fourth time. Roll it out. Uh, I, I want to see Connor fight for the belt and everybody have a meltdown and be so mad. And I want him to win and retire a four time fucking champion. Uh, I'd be the only one, I think. Yeah, I, I just got a little nervous. I, if you Google Connor McGregor right now, it says he died August. He said it says he died yesterday. No. <laughs> he's not dead, but his Wikipedia no. says pretty he sure he's yesterday. not. Pretty sure <laughs> yeah. he's not. Okay. Uh, well, hopefully he fights um, again. Oh, oh, so there's a. I, I, we agreed to only talk about politics when it's interesting. And I think an interesting thing happened in Kentucky on Tuesday or Kansas, I should say. So it's going to be 80% right. Kansas had a law that they passed making abortion illegal. Okay. And then some, it was already illegal. This is a few years ago. And then sometime around 2018 or 19, that law was taken to court. And in the Kansas Supreme court, not only did they rule that that law was bad, but that the whole concept of abortion violates the Kansas uh, Constitution, right? It violates one of their amendments. So it made it really difficult for Kansas to pass more anti-abortion laws, right? So Kansas is a very red state. I, I think Trump won mm-hmm. it by 15 points. You know, that, that's a big win. And uh, um. The Republicans are in control of Kansas because it's it's a really Republican state because the voters want that. Cool, cool. The Republicans who are in control set up this referendum where basically they put abortion up for vote in this very red state. And being in control, they tried to set themselves up for... Thanks, Zach, you fuck. He he spoiled it for me. (laughs) So uh, um, being that they're in control, they tried to set themselves up for success on this thing. They held the vote on a day that was a primary Republicans tend to do better when there's a low turnout. And this particular primary was only interesting on the Republican side. So a bunch of Republicans were going to go to the polls to choose which Republicans win the primary. And they held this abortion referendum vote on it. Even with that setup, abortion got smashed by, it looks like, is that 18 points? Am I doing the, the math right on that? Wait, uh, yeah. 59 to 41. Yeah. That's ab- abortion lost no no i said it wrong i'm sorry uh abortion anti-abortion got smashed wow can you get an abortion there now yes oh Uh, okay see that makes it simpler thank you thank you for that i appreciate your your assist so um so now kansas has become like kind of a abortion haven where you know this can get done and people will come to kansas and get their abortions and it's what the voters want and they won by such a large majority that even amongst republicans Abortion is the popular position amongst Democrats. Mm-hmm. It always was, but amongst oh, Republicans, <laughs> amongst Repu- the Republicans are pro choice. A little tricky for me to sometimes get it right. And uh, everyone was watching this as a bellwether to see mm-hmm. how things go. And then on that same day across the nation, a lot of Trump supported like MAGA candidates won Senate primaries. And this is interesting, too. You would think that it means that Trump supported MAGA candidates are popular, but not necessarily. In some of these cases, the Democrats were propping them up, funding their advertising campaigns, because they think that in the general, it's easier to beat like an election denying Trump type dude who's a fringe guy than it is a more central guy who could take votes from the middle. So that's a gamble. (laughs) It is a gamble. That's confirmed. They were paying Oh for yeah, the ads of the that's... the DNC was funding what they considered crazy Republicans, and it helped them win. And you know, Trump's backing them and everything because they didn't want to run against 
more mainstream Republicans. They wanted like they feel like I'm making this up that they could beat Marjorie Taylor Greene, but they can't necessarily beat, you know, some some other guy, yeah. normal person. Yeah. So um, um, Mitch McConnell has come out like after he saw the results, he's not so sure they're taking the Senate anymore in the midterms because they have unelectable people. This, it happened in Pennsylvania, but not yet. Not two days ago. Mm. Um, Dr. Oz won. And Dr. Oz is now getting his ass just kicked by the Democrat guy. Where's he? he? Pennsylvania. Oh. Because uh, his full name is a fucking mouthful, right? I don't know. Probably, it. probably Eastern yeah. European. But um, yeah, so he's he's getting this wiped up um, by the Democrat guy in Pennsylvania oh. because this is what sometimes happens when fringe guys win primaries. Okay. Amendment yeah, I didn't Ken know Giz Oz. Yeah. So, and this might be me um, with my fucking blue hat on. It's a pretty cool name. Wishful thinking. I don't that's know. It. But um, two Z's. The, what they're rolls. looking at now is a Senate that's hard to predict, whereas previously it was easily going to the Republicans, huh. and a House that's likely to flip and go red. Well, Ooh, let's see. I, uh, I, I, I'm sure uh, the Republicans have a few tricks up their sleeves. I, 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 I remain steadfast that, that that we're looking at a real red tide here. I, I mm -hmm. think that's what we're we're, we're going with. Uh, that's how we're gonna, what we're going to call it. Uh, no period jokes, please. <laughs> and, uh, it, I think they're just going to sweep across the land and things are going to uh, shift back that way. And then the Republicans are going to fucking crush the economy into the dirt and we'll swing right back to the left in like 12 years. We'll be good. You we'll heard see. Kyle here first. Full throated roll tide. Roll tide. <laughs> That's what I heard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm send you a roll tide no! shirt. <laughs> no Alabama references. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, it's a period joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Democrats have a hard time of it now because Biden's completely uninspiring and inflation is they a won't problem. They will run him, will they? Now that's the bad uh, run him or not. Will they, they run Biden. It's hard to run from their record. Like the last four years, you well, what will be the last four years are going to be attributed to Democrats. And uh, bro, you know that's what the truth is, bro. Maybe like, we like, discussed you know, it before, kind of, but qu but but quickly, do you think that Biden will run for president of the United States? We got to know terrible. from Taylor. I terrible, I'm sick. Bro. I'm sort of sixty forty. I think but that's the odds. That the sixty percent he did, he will not run. I, I maybe even more. I, it would really surprise me. Frankly, I think the most likely outcome is that the man passes away before he can win president. And 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 I hope that doesn't happen because we haven't had a sitting president die since what Kennedy. Well, getting assassinated is different than dying of old age. I know it's different, but I'm just saying that's the last it fucking still death. Counts. Yeah. yeah. Like, 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 like it, you know, that'd be a shock to the nation. The the whole, I don't want to have to see the whole wheels move where everybody moves up a rung on the ladder, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what happens? Everybody just shifts up and they're like, sorry, <laughs> transportation expert. You're the war guy now. <laughs> oh my God. Oh no. Yeah. Man, this rocks. I knew working with those toll booth bastards was going to pay off. <laughs> I'm the army guy this now. rocks. <laughs> yeah. <that's> <laughs> Give me that uniform. Yeah, I'm sick of being the urban development guy. That was awful. <laughs> Shit, I don't, I don't know where man. I stand. Do I think Biden's gonna run? I don't think he's gonna you win. Saw him reading that that thing when we killed the Al Qaeda leader recently. I said, I wait, saw the because whole I'm long version America. of it. Hey, I paid for the fucking bullets with my taxes. Yeah, we took out that Al Qaeda leader the other day, mm -hmm. and uh, and and he was just like all shaky and frail, and like you could see how much concentration was required. You can see when someone's reading something. I don't know. People who are really good at it have this natural way of maybe moving their head or like looking up the cage. They glance and, and then talk. They and, glance yeah. and talk. I'm mm. I'm not good at that at glancing because I I lose my place. I lose my place on coming back. But but Biden is fully focused on the teleprompter, doing his best because he knows it's important that he gets this out concisely and respectfully. A man I is dead. I think with the teleprompter, <laughs> Kyle. I don't. Have you ever used a teleprompter? I know I haven't. I'm have not. But at the teleprompter, it's partly the teleprompter's job to keep your place. You know, like you talk and they that thing doesn't move at a steady speed. No. It, you know, they're moving it up. They're changing the pace so that it's always in the spot. They've all, you shouldn't like have to find your they, place. They should put the thing in the place. I think that's how it works. I've used uh, I've used cue cards. I found that's that different. to be very that seems yeah. even harder. Uh, you know, the, the yeah. words are written big. You know, and, and mm -hmm. of course, for Biden, you'd have one word per card, and it's got to go real <laughs> <Yeah. sad. laughs> The 
Come on, next card. One again? <laughs> <laughs> Bring back it's the FBI, USA card. <laughs> it's FBI, but they're just doing one letter per card or something like that. Yeah. No, I found those to be difficult. Um, and but, uh, when I'm reading small text, even I've got to like, I'm like, all right, let's fucking highlight some of this shit. Let's, let's find out where I lose my place. I'm a broken record with this. You talked about Biden reading the thing. So what he's what Kyle's talking about is we killed Al Zuhari, whatever his name is. Baghdad. Whoever the fourth. Baghdad the fourth. Who's, bad, who, bad who Daddy. Was, Bad Daddy. We killed Bad Daddy, who was previously <laughs> leading Al Qaeda. And uh, we watched him, compared to Obama, compared to Trump, announce some major terrorist kills. Cool. Um, Trump was like, I'm really cool. I was a big part of this. That guy he died was, like uh, a dog. He, he died, died like, like a, a dog. dog. His body was mutilated by the blast. And then after the blast, the cave came down the cave and mutilated it some it. extra. And, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's pretty close, by the way. <laughs> and then he's like o obama's like i have great respect for the intelligence agencies and the people that carried this out and trump was like these people were so cool i was there i saw like the whole thing his eyeballs <laughs> his eyeballs came out of his skull <laughs> believe me uh, folks, they popped right out of there like a pomegranate <laughs> berry <laughs> and then, this is the left eyeball <laughs> and this is the topic kyle was bringing up then comes biden and biden is just mumbling through this thing mm -hmm. it was uh, to say we, uninspiring uh, we killed if you him. were inspired going into it you lost your inspiration during biden's speech he is a poor <laughs> he, he is the worst presidential mm -hmm. speaker in my lifetime for we, sure we i about, will say this i'll give him props on his state of the union his last state of the union i don't know what oh, they inject good? him full of he mm -hmm. comes out and he's like the state of the union is strong they practice oh. that line. You know, they work hard. How many times you rolled that one out, Joe? God damn. <laughs> you, you ever hear someone? He like, lip synced like, that part. Every yeah, I like day. to imagine the initial statement was like, the State of the Union is strong, vibrant, exceptional. The people here, and they're like, how about just strong and vibrant? Lose the next sentence. Mm -hmm. Just, just strong. Just, 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 just say strong. Well, well see, time. that's the, that's what every president for, of course. I, it's, it's like a tradition that you say that no matter what. We mm. could be losing to Russia. And, and he would come out there and say, the State of the Union is strong. Every mm -hmm. step we take is upwards because there's nowhere else to go, America. You yeah, know, like, like he comes That's out. That's how it works. Up. Okay. They're never going to come out there and be like, boy, biffed it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Give me a chance again. I promise this. I got all the nervousness If you reelect me, yeah, re me, I swear I'll do better next time. Yeah, I promise. <laughs> the first four years, out. I had such butterflies in my belly. I was so nervous. <laughs> That's he, what we need to do. Like, just an absolute pussy who does nothing, and so we can't complain. Just some, I, I don't I, think that Biden is up for the rigors of a, of an election. I don't think that it's no. always shocking to me that these older men can do it at all. Because it seems, from what from what we see from the outside looking in, a presidential campaign seems to be an incredibly rigorous uh, schedule because you got to like press the flesh, right? You got to get in front of so many cameras, so many people. Because every vote really does matter. And, and 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 like getting in front of one more camera in San Diego by getting up at 4.30 mm -hmm. instead of 5.30 a.m. might actually matter. Especially uh, if you do it every single day. I was and looking that's what at Trump did. DeSantis. And I think he's gaining mm. weight. And I, I just look at the history. A lot of candidates gain fat when they're on the trail. It must be hard. You can't hit the gym. You're surviving on like restaurant food everywhere. You're what? On a bus going from one city to the next? Or a plane. Or a plane. Uh, it's just a super unhealthy lifestyle to do that much what's essentially business travel. Yeah, and I'm sure there's lots of late nights and and like coffee and snacking and just, uh, just like and nervous eating because it's the most there, stressful thing you've ever done. That? I'm telling you, no one makes good meal choices after 9 p.m. <laughs> Maybe you do because your sleep schedule is your own. But most people, if they're eating after 9 p.m., <laughs> it's not chicken breast, bro. It's always bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I never no, surprise I, uh, myself with like asparagus <laughs> late at night. <laughs> never. Always. Yeah. Coffee. It. Uh, I know we've got our current death pool, but but like God, I, I wish we had a a political death pool where we mm. each had one pick because every man. Who would you pick? Who's your one? Who's all right? So I don't know their names. Is it Mitch McConnell, the one that has all of that drapey neck fat, like yes. a bird? Yes. Yeah, he's yes. the yeah. he's the little turtleish. I think. God, how long can how much longer can that turtle live? What disease did he have that did that to his skin? Do you remember Mitch McConnell's hands turning purple? I feel Tortoise like Taylor syndrome. knew it. I thought he lost a bunch of oh his his skin. His in his hands, hands he had um he had really purple hands. I, I yeah. Let me, 
See if I, I can think find it was. Him. Is that like some like old people get like bruising when they get IVs in? I think. I, no, it was it was right? different. This was like, this was weird. Like he'd gotten his, got in a fight. No, no uh, it, they were like purple and swollen in a weird way. I guess I don't remember specifically how they look. Yeah, well, anyway, I thought his neck I, like that was like that because he lost look at, a ton of weight. This is a really good picture. His uh, if when Zach pulls it up, that his lips are purple and his hand is badly bruised, and. I, I don't, maybe I'm crazy. I had this recollection that Taylor saw that and he's like, Weird. oh, that's, you know, whatever, McConnell's Taylor syndrome. And <laughs> yeah. Damn, it does look bad. He clearly had a fall here. Okay. Yeah. A fall? He has bandages on his hands as well. Like, 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 like he, I, he, fe he fell badly. Like, like he ate shit. On the that's back of his like. hand and his lips? Old people fall badly. Looks like he just had a big old drink of purple. <laughs> oh oh no, I'm, I'm sure Mitch McConnell is spry. He did you know, a fucking cartwheel up the wall and and say. I mean, did he fall end. directly he on the back of his like hands? Like, Read Zach's thing. thing. Dermatologists say the 78 Senate Majority Leader's black and blue bruises and bandaged hands are likely a common condition called senile per perlia. Per like what? senile purple? <laughs> That's a great name. Oh, I, now we know why he didn't what? explain himself. Well, nothing to worry about here, folks. I've got senile purple syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> it's called that because there's no money to cure it because I'm already dying. Senile <laughs> purpuya is a benign, easy bruising that affects older adults. It's sometimes called actinic papuya. Okay. Hot. This occurs because the skin and the blood vessels become more fragile as we age, the making papuya. it easier for our skin to bruise from minor trauma. Maybe he did fall. Papuya this should be like a what disorder. An tribe calls vagina. <laughs> show, her, show them your patuya. It is red and swollen. <laughs> <laughs> it is because you are 78 like <laughs> whatever the fuck how old he is yeah, well that's he would ridiculous. be pretty high on my list but but i i can't i i would be lying if i didn't think that biden who just got covid a second time this week like like, like he was, he on, was like, on like COVID lax what was what drug did he take provix was... lovid or something oh. anyway that drug causes frequently people to get covid twice all right. Well, he got it once, though, so so that can't be good. Uh, I, I don't know. I would think that guy's not long for this world. He just looks frail to me. I, I hope that's not the case. I really hope he makes it to finish out this term, and I hope he doesn't try to run for another term because even though I don't really like him, it's not that I dislike him. He always did an okay job, it seems like, and I agree with most of the stuff he he does. Like we're gonna we're gonna differ on guns and a bunch of other shit but yeah. i like how he's handled, handled this russia thing i like that he let europe get their shit together and sort of lead the way and not we're always getting our hands dirty around the world with geopolitics and it, it was kind of cool to see us take a back seat and i think that like an alex jones type character who i want to talk about next would be like america's taking a back seat in geopolitics it's like, <laughs> yes thank you fucking god we're gonna <laughs> yeah let's just sit back and watch one go down we've never done that before like, like, like let's right? although, we're I mean, giving him some arms but it, oh and by the way he really put a coalition together right the europeans seem to be on board with making some sacrifices and uh paying more for their natural gas or whatever and yeah uh so he took pax lovid which is which gives i, I looked into it i guess it gives you covid twice yeah. oftentimes so, so uh, did you hear what Alex Jones' legal team accidentally did? I did. Do you want to lay it out, or would you like so, me to? Alex Tell Jones is, of course, uh, in, a, in a bit of hot water because of the statements he made about Sandy Hooks. But he's in this. Uh, maybe uh, he's in a suit with the um, the, the, parents the parents of the yeah. dead children who died in that that, that incident. I'm on and, Team uh, Jones, and and he had testified. <laughs> the the exact particulars don't ex matter, but I believe he had testified that. He hadn't discussed Sandy Hook on a certain date or before a certain date or something like that. Well, his legal team somehow or another sent his entire cell phone record, text messaging record, and everything else in his phone to the prosecution, to the, the, the parents' lawyer legal team. And so on the stand, you got to see him find out while he's on the stand, Taylor. He's sitting there, <laughs> Alex Jones, big red and thick. Like and th this this guy is so smarmy about it. You almost like our team, Alex Jones. He's like, <laughs> do you know, Mr. Jones, that uh, your lawyers accidentally sent us your entire cell phone text messaging record? So, pause there. That's not the start. It, at first, he's like, I have this text that says you said that. And he's like, no, you don't. And he's like, do you know where I got this text? <laughs> I got this text because your attorney sent me every text you've sent for the last four years off your cell phone. <laughs> and, and did you know that? And Alex Jones was like, no, I, 
I didn't know that. Congratulations. This is your Perry Mason moment or something close to yeah. that. Who, who is a good who, line? Where did he find the worst attorneys in America? <laughs> Have you ever in your life? I've never heard a like a uh, like story like this. Like yeah, on they saw more. Alex Jones, but it was Alex Jonesberg who was you know the <laughs> other guy. Well, I'm, it gets worse. I'm not, it gets I'm, worse. They're going through his phone now. Now he's having to answer for his transgender porn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, the parents so, are mad about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alex Jones's attorneys sent. The parents' attorneys, all his text messages, the parents' attorneys replied and said, hey, you sent all this to me. And they could have said, oops, my bad, that's privileged, and kept it out of court. But they didn't. They didn't check their email. They just let it stand. So then it comes up in court. And they had just sent it like three or four days earlier. In court, they're like, Haha, you missed your chance. Now we have this stuff. They didn't even redact lawyer client privilege okay i anyway yeah so his attorneys had an opportunity to say Jesus. that uh this stuff is privileged between me and my client and they didn't so, so they sent Alex the email or the the text. for about four million uh, i think i read today uh, four million yeah something like that it seems to me alex jones is gonna be able to pay this thing off and be okay um I how and then go back maybe they asking, go back to his ways they're asking for 150 million but you can ask for 150 billion i don't know yeah. what that means you know so uh um, four million feels low to me. I don't know. It they want. I think 150 million is the amount of revenues that he collected while he was like shaming Sandy Hook parents as being crisis actors and liars mm -hmm. and stuff like that. <clears throat> and by the way, like it, it's notable that uh, oh, he's been ordered to pay. Maybe something went down. Uh, it's notable that um, uh, he knew what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought. Like. He, you would think he's a conspiracy theorist who's misinformed like anyone mm. else you know in your life. No, 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 no. He is running a business of lying to people about the deaths of children in an elementary school shooting. And meanwhile, he's selling survivalist gear about the end of the world and neck thickening. Stabbing, That's good whatever. gear. <laughs> <laughs> and... uh I, it takes away some of the innocence. Like it, if there was a guy on this show saying that, you know, Trump really won the election, right? No evidence or what everybody sincerely believed it. That'd be one thing, but he's running a business on top of it. Maybe it's actually pretty parallel. I didn't think that through, but if there was an idiot on Facebook saying shit, and that's different to me than an idiot running a business off of that shit. Mm -hmm. So that's what Jones did. He's a bit of an asshole. And by the way, we are talking about, mm -hmm children who were murdered in an elementary school yeah he shouldn't mm -hmm. have joked about that um uh, that, he ran a business off it he shouldn't have ran a business about that then uh, of <laughs> whatever he did, theories he yeah he, so the conspiracy theory is in general that the whole thing was fake and that it was just done to help for democrats to get gun control laws passed so that they yeah. can control you and take over the country or whatever yeah. mm -hmm. that's his thing this whole sandy hook thing is bullshit these children didn't really die it's just Democrats behind it. The whole thing is a hoax. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm almost positive. that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, but all of Alex's salient points, Kyle, you forget that. I'm like, I'm like 95% sure. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to go confirmed on that, that this okay. is a thing that happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you sounds, seems risky to me stepping out there on the left. I haven't but. seen Alex's evidence. In fairness, <laughs> I'm waiting on him but to I did. I just it. looked up his net worth. His, you know how you look up normal celebrities' net worth, and it's just random bullshit. Sometimes no one has any idea how much Alex Jones is worth. Like no idea. One says like five million. One says ten million. I guarantee it's more than that shit. Guarantee. Yeah. Right? Like I, unless I his, his lifestyle is, is like. silly, but yeah, I, it seems like he's I feel like he has a bunch of listeners. Where does he live? Does he live in Florida? I think he's a Texas guy. He needs to get to Florida soon. <laughs> that make that up? He seems like a Texas guy. Why Florida? Yeah. What, what you pull the O.J. Simpson maneuver, right? So, so you they, they can't take your your home, and mm -hmm. and you're able to like divest your other stuff into the home, and, and and then you've got this asset that can't be touched. And I believe that even like like one motor vehicle is protected from any tort, sort of seizure. Mm -hmm. I don't. The, your wages cannot be garnished there, um, especially if you're an actor. Acting wages in particular can't be garnished in any way there. I believe. And so, like, OJ has all of the he – he's only paid out $133,000 to the Ron Goldman family over the years. And the bulk of that is from when they seized the rights to the book he wrote called If I Did It. 
Mm -hmm. He's actually come out of pocket for like less than what you couldn't buy the the Bronco today that he drove for what he's getting <laughs> because those things are collector's items. I thought about buying one about two years ago. They're not cheap. <laughs> yeah, especially but, uh, his Bronco. Yeah, his. Like, oh, not his. I don't want his. Uh, there was this behind. That's the one I want the most. Kind of we talked about it's this like before. JFK's car. So, oh, that's a good one. I should have mentioned that to her. It's better um, than Jeff. Our guest. Wrong. <laughs> um, there was that instance where where um, OJ was on a hidden camera show. Okay. We talked about this before. You remember this? And he's undercover as a used car salesman mm -hmm. selling the white Bronco to a guy. And, <laughs> and he is so funny. Like, like if he weren't a murderer, he would still be like a celebrity that everyone loved because he's so charismatic. <laughs> at, he's, he's just like, yeah, you know. Got to make ends meet somehow. I'm working here now. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, hey, hey, this is a good car. If you need to make a getaway, this is the one. Like, <laughs> Dude, like, is there anyone like more shameless than him with that no, stuff? Writing no. a book, if I did it, doing like a mad TV sketch, pretending <laughs> to sell a, a Bronco, and like um, he has no qualms about it. I heard a theory interest. Uh, seems likely uh, he killed those recently. people. Oh, he killed those people. <laughs> his alibi was he was like practicing his golf shot in the front yard or something. Dude, he's like covered in their blood. You know, where you do your golfing like, <laughs> when you're a millionaire. Well, the, I remember when they were like, yeah, he was covered in both of their blood. I was like, oh, dang, they got him, huh? <laughs> <laughs> he was playing in it. <laughs> like he had, but uh, we don't need to rehash the OJ Simpson trial. By the way, watch that Cuba Gooding Jr. show. It's so fucking good. The the people versus OJ Simpson. It's my favorite OJ thing I've ever seen. It'll make you root for the juice a little bit. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. No, at the end though, like when he's found uh not guilty, there's this cool, like the story doesn't end. It goes on for a couple uh scenes, and you see that he has to live in a world where he's the this is his world now, where everybody mm -hmm. is like, ew. You're OJ Simpson because yeah, before this happened, he was such a beloved celebrity that when he walked into a room, it was like, "That's OJ Simpson." Oh mm -hmm. my god! Like, 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 like you're a hero. He's either your hero or like the guy who makes you laugh, or the guy you aspire to be, or just that really cool guy from the insurance commercials. Like he was such a celebrity. Wasn't there a Seinfeld episode where where Elaine is dating the guy? Like yep. Ben Rifkin, who has the name yep. as a serial killer, and they're coming up with potential new names. And she's OJ. like, "How about OJ? Ooh, that's cool." And it's like <laughs> a couple of years before all that <laughs> shit went down. Yeah, I would watch that. It's just like I'm at the age like I was too young to like even know that shit was going on. Like as a cultural thing, as it was happening. Like, and I, I did. I like, watched you were it almost also, every. Like you didn't. I oh, watched it almost every day. Uh, my grandmother was uh, obsessed with it. And I spent weekends with her back, like oh. during that time, whatever, whatever year that was. That it, I was probably five or six, and I would be with her through the weekends, and that's what we watched. That was on TV all day, and okay. we would sit there and like, like I don't know, you know, my my grandma would make like peas for dinner, and so you have to like get the peas out of the pods. So we'd sit there like separating peas, watching the OJ <laughs> trial, or like I don't know, whatever we were doing, it's on over there, and we're paying attention as much as a six year old could pay attention to this thing. But I definitely remember the the verdict and how everyone was shocked and hearing mm -hmm. basically that a man killed some people with a knife and they let him go and not understanding why. Yeah. Well, it seems well like they we were I was told why. <laughs> you were told why? Because yeah. they they put a. Uh, I don't even know the stories. They let him put a rubber glove on and then try his regular glove and he did that. No, I was I talking about the No, I was talking about Rodney King. That's oh. why. Uh, I was talking about Rodney King and them not wanting Los Angeles to be burned to the ground again. Um, yeah, you wouldn't want that. Yeah, you don't want to burn LA down. Well, you not burn it down once. God, yeah, they it need it. <laughs> they need it right now. If I lived in LA right, now, I'd be like, man, I wish that part of town would catch on fire, like that whole slum area with a uh, with that hobo village. Why does yeah. somebody burn that out? Why I do we never? Oh, I can't say that. <laughs> Why do we never? <laughs> you can pull back. <laughs> yeah, that. I mean. I would not want to hang out in the heroin village or whatever the fuck that is. There, those are those are regressive homeless people. I would imagine they're like homeless and indignant about it. I would guess where the kind of like like uh, in your face homeless, not the you know insane person trying to stay away. They've Someone accepted who probably their homelessness. Had their college paper. I think they've accepted that it's a pretty good gig. Like I bet if you spoke to some of them, they'd be like, "Oh, you don't even understand." 
I've got, I get my water from here. There's always good bagels down the street. <laughs> like I get all the methadone I can fucking take from, from right down there. Like, yeah, I live in a box, but we get new boxes every Saturday from from the Home Depot over there. So it's pretty it's pretty good deal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no taxes, no nothing, no running water. You know, I don't I have a solution for Skid Row. I don't have the first inkling of what do you give them jobs? Do they even want jobs? Are they camping? Do they consider themselves free spirits? Are they are they happy with their lifestyle? Do they hate their lifestyle? Are they crazy? Do you have you know, them the need solution. to go to mental institution? The mm. final solution, yeah, I guess so. I mean, the mental institution thing is like true. Like there's you hear people being like, these people need jobs and opportunity. It's like you're right for some of them. But like a huge portion of them are mentally ill. They can't work a job like they're not capable of it. Like they need to be taken care of in like a state facility or something. Let me ask you this. You can't just have them running around. What if we made went out to like, I don't know, New Mexico or or Wyoming, somewhere where we've got like some government land. And we made like a big campsite with some basic stuff, like right, like like water and little shelter. We just started putting them out there. I'm talking about like basic stuff, like you know, like the campgrounds you can go to that already had that metal thing to build your fire mm-hmm. in, and and there's yeah. a little shower thing down the trail that you can. No, like, watch. I'll go a ruined. step further. Unlimited ramen noodles. All the I, I threw away so many when I moved. Sure, dude, I'll ramen noodles are like noodles thirty eight cents a pack. I I, I give them three ramas a day. If you buy them in in sufficient quantity, I bet I bet they're just almost free. I bet you could like <laughs> use them as laborers on some sort of heroin farm and solely and they'll work if they know they're going to be paid in small amounts of heroin. I would absolutely pay them in small amounts of heroin. They yeah. just pick tomatoes with like a morphine drip IV bag. <laughs> it's like, it's the I, seed. Think, I mean, I was meaning they were like sitting there, like they're like processing the poppy seeds and they're like, this is like an episode of how it's made for a heroin addict or whatever. <laughs> I, like, like the problem is they don't want to go willingly. And, and I kind of think what I start yeah, thinking this back is what to America's is good at. You ever, exactly. You ever, this seen is one a population of those... that's never invented the fence, Kyle. <laughs> 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 they know how to circumvent it. <laughs> you ever, you ever see when they have those kids who are like, like they, they can't, they're the problem children or whatever. And, and the final solution in this case is like, all right, you're going to military camp or military mm-hmm. school. And like, mm. you don't just go there. They come fucking get you. <laughs> I love that. Anytime I'm watching one of those TV shows. I've never seen Super Nanny style, end that way with guys taking the kids. To that's how I want every episode to end. I, I, I'm gonna, oh, you don't want to do it Super Nanny's way, do you? Well, how about Jocko from YouTube? And then what's that, Jocko Wilnick or whatever. Like, like that guy just comes and like. His opening move is a headbutt to the kid. <laughs> hey, he's got it. That'd be effective. He's, dude, he had to wake up at three in the morning. Why they're Jock- dazed, he's packing them up in their luggage. How do you think Jocko Wilnick would do against Taylor in a headbutt competition? I, I think that you've got that immovable object versus that unstoppable <laughs> force, and, and, and we might open some sort of rift in space time. This is a clash of the titans. This is how we stop 9-11. I would, I would, I would catch him by surprise. That dude mm. wakes up at three in the morning. He's in bed by four p.m. <laughs> I, just, I just walk in there and then just, whoop, just powderized. You know it's what? Like, yeah, that's one of my least favorite, like tall tales that people tell about themselves. If anyone tells me that I go to bed at two a.m. every night and I wake up at four a.m. every morning and I'm just that productive, stop lying. <laughs> You're so full of shit. You can Don't... do six hours, but 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 anybody who tells me they're on some sort of yeah, I go to bed at midnight, I wake up at four a.m. and I all day I'm going yeah. hard. It's like, like really, yeah. really are you insane? Well, I, I, I don't like, like like you can do I that. Put that right. Hurt. Derek but, went after this no, uh, chef. I think he's a White House chef. It's not political, but the guy is super strong. He's bigger guy, than yeah. The Rock. And maybe maybe Zach can find his name, that big, strong White House chef. Anyway, the guy claims to eat like 8,000 calories a day. Do like 2,000 en- push-ups or something. Yeah. Anyone who understands fitness is like, no, you don't eat 8,000 calories a day. That's bullshit. Nobody needs that much fuel. Mm-hmm. You're just telling tall tales about yourself. You're and on I, steroids. I, <laughs> he's on <laughs> steroids. Really? But there's no one who needs 8,000 calories a day. Not even this guy. It's just not true. And I also don't believe there's people who only need two hours, three hours of sleep a night. It, it's not true. You're just no. telling tall tales to make yourself seem like a superhero, King Jung Cook. I sleep 14 yeah. hours a day minimum. 
<laughs> Kyle's like, yeah, I'm unbelievably depressed. I sleep. <laughs> if you add it all up, yeah. <laughs> you need to take, look, you need a good 10 hours at night, and then you need two two-hour naps <laughs> throughout the day to keep yourself, you know, perky. <laughs> I sleep like a cat, <laughs> like, like eighteen hours a day. Yeah, I knock those two-hour naps out in, in the afternoon and end in the evening, and that's how I stay so productive when I'm here. Yes, <laughs> I do this for you people. All yeah. right, I'm the one suffering through. I hope your fans appreciate what Kyle goes. He rests up all week long for this show. <laughs> you guys don't know how taxing this is. No, no. <laughs> You really don't. I, I, After I the like show, I take a five-hour bath, ice bath. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, have you ever taken an ice bath? I, I think I've asked before. Terrible. I know it's, right. it's it's not fun. Yeah, it's so it's so hardcore. It's not. Have easy. you ever done an ice bath? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I've um, I've put th- body parts in ice, like uh, you know, you can like if your foot's super swollen, you can put ice on your foot, or if you're really hardcore, you put your foot in an ice bath. I've done that, but. Neck down, so, nothing like what that. I've done. Uh, I will not exaggerate here. I went to the gas station and I bought four or five of those enormous bags of ice, the super long boys. Mm-hmm. And she, it was, it, she was asking me why I was buying them, and I was like, "I'm going to take an ice bath." She's like, "Why?" And I explained to her that I was, I was trying to make my muscles heal faster by <laughs> by making my. I was like, "I'm going to make my body think it's dying, so it's going to pull all the blood from my limbs to my core and my brain." to try to keep me alive <laughs> while well, that blood's going to carry all the like broken bits of cells and their muscle fiber and everything. And that's going to get filtered by my liver and my kidneys. And then all that new blood when I warm back up is going to flush into those muscles and I'm going to, it's going to be carrying nutrients and proteins and it's going to be good for my recovery. And uh, she's like, sir, sir, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, <laughs> she, she was locking, she was locking yeah. the door behind her. Uh, yeah. Sir, so, this is a, this is a Wendy's. So I pour, <laughs> so I pour that ice in the tub, and then I fill it up with water. And I would get in for about, I would measure the time, but I think eleven mm. to fourteen minutes, something like that. Because I read online that you needed to be in there like twelve minutes, thirteen minutes. It was something Damn. like that that somebody okay. did. And so I had this number. You, so I immediately go into uncontrollable shivering and rapid over uh, hyperventilation, and I I have to do my best to like master that. It's really hard. It's it's not as simple as like focusing your way out of it. Like like hey, I'm not real. I don't need oxygen, so I'll stop breathing so hard. It's like uh, 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 okay, I gotta I gotta just I gotta just like you're bro, hyperventilating like that as, as fast <laughs> and I, I'm shaking uncontrollably and it burns. It's not cold. It burns. And, but then you go numb after what I'm going to call seven minutes, eight minutes. That's and deep. And, 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 you're, time. <laughs> and, and so like, as long as you don't go any deeper and like, like that's, I, I would be completely numb and the water's like up to here and I'd sink a little more and I'm like, Oh my God, it's cold in here. <laughs> I inch my, wasn't ready. My, my collarbone had no idea what, what the rest of me was, was suffering what did, through. Why did my nipples tell my collarbone about this? And, um, <laughs> and I have some videos somewhere of me in there, like, like suffering, like talking to the camera. I don't know. They're probably on my last phone, oh, like but when that. I, but one time I stayed in too long and I literally, like drop my core body temperature or maybe was borderline. <laughs> I was in the early stages of hypothermia. I guarantee it. If a paramedic were there, he'd be like, you have hypothermia. Cause I got in the bed <laughs> covered up as much as a man can cover. Like I'm roll, I'm like multiple blankets and shivered for us an hour straight, like an hour <laughs> straight. And I'm still shivering and I'm, I would feel my extremities and they're still like clammy cold. Were you a little worried after like 45 minutes? Like, nah, I'm a, I, I, you know, a human body. I knew I'd warm up eventually. It was just going to take a <laughs> while. But, but like those ice baths are one of the most hardcore things I've ever done. I highly recommend that somebody tries to do it once just to see what's up because you do feel tremendous afterwards. If, if, if you're kicking off a workout program the first couple of weeks, you're going to have so much muscle soreness. This fixes muscle soreness. I, I, I didn't, really? it, it would like, like when you're like effective. quads when your quads and like glutes or whatever are just so shredded that Mm -mm. just touching them and pushing on them, you can feel it'll like suck that pain out of them somehow. I don't know what it like, like it it was so nice for that. My workouts are shit right now. I knew that with a broken leg, I wasn't going to have the most productive workouts, you know, but I didn't know how much everything would suck. Mobility. 
if I'm going 30 feet, I grab the crutches. If I'm going three feet, I just hop, hop, hop. Everything in the gym is just hopping around on one leg. It is so difficult to move my bench. To move my bench, you tip it up like more than you'd guess, like almost 90 degrees. And then you drag it around on these like uh, rollerblade wheels. Anyway, doing that on one foot and like hopping the bench around is real tricky and kind of dangerous because you feel like you're going to drop it on yourself. And there's no place to sit and overhead press, right? Like, yeah, I'll just put one foot bias, for example. <laughs> that foot's already tired. It's been hopping for 30 minutes now. <laughs> and <laughs> and now you're 100 pounds heavier because I use about 50s in each hand. And um, it's just everything's exhausting. Today was leg day. That was bullshit. I tried to make up leg day exercises that don't involve standing. So <laughs> good luck with that. I think you need to just skip leg day until like you're like, you know, <laughs> no, it's atrophying so bad. <laughs> I saw your dedication today where you just had weighted fucking sacks on your leg. Just- <laughs> and I could see, I could imagine like your mentality as you're doing He's it. He's pointing like, at his muscle going. Nothing. Like, it's, I guess. He, he's, he, Woody sent us this video, and he's doing, like, leg curls with, like, sandbags on his fucking foot. And he's pointing at his oh leg's cat. muscles, and he's going, they're starting to shrink. <laughs> they're starting to shrink. And I'm like, your legs look great. You're ridiculous. You're ridiculous. First of all, you'll some juice, and you'll just hold that muscle. It can't leave. It's, <laughs> steroids is like a fucking, like, hostage taker for muscle. It's like, you're a guy really? going any fucking way. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> Don't Damn, worry, boss. I, I got him. Go have a donut. <laughs> Go have a donut. donut. I got the, the muscles oh. are all under control. You don't move a fucking muscle. <laughs> ah, I see what yeah. you did. It's one of those. Well, that, that's uh, the most tempting thing about steroids you've ever said. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. just holds your muscles hostage. You could just stay. Uh, I mean, like, you're not losing muscle. It, I remember, like, I when am. I hurt my shoulder a few years ago, mm-hmm. I had in my head, I'm like, if I miss a month of work, my muscles are all going to shrink. Like, you need to, like, immediately stop eating enough protein and do like nothing for months for uh-huh. your muscles to muscles. go down like, re- like uh, very noticeably i mean i think muscles will atrophy a bunch in two weeks like if you have a cast on and you really yeah maybe well, your that's situation. because there's no yeah. use at all yeah 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 i well, I, mean, I you'll be fine you know you're gonna come out of this thing and be able to do your full workout in, in, in a bit and the thing about like losing muscle that you've gained is you gain it back way faster than you build it Mm-hmm. Once you've built muscle, it's like laying, I don't know, this lattice work within your body that can be filled in. You know, oh, yeah, you need more muscle? We already got the framework built. We just took down the paneling. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's easier to like lay it back up. That's It'll true. come back, but better still would be to work it while there's a, there's a cast. So I have less <laughs> of a hole to climb out of. I mean, you could always talk to Derek. I'm sure he could help you dig your way right out of that fucking hole. Just so he'll give you two shovels for each hand. <laughs> With four shovels total? This sounds yeah. great. You're going to draw your arm. You're going to win. Well, you can be like Goru or whatever from Mortal Kombat. Like your way out of, yeah. I mean, yeah. at a certain point, I'm getting less done with three shovels. You know? That's like, what uh, the third arm is for. He has a shovel too. <laughs> and you're so jacked, you could do one arm per shovel, full loads. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Did you Absolutely. guys look at, uh, or I guess not look, see what's going on with the WNBA player in Russia? Oh, I he was only know that she happened. was convicted yeah. and sentenced for nine years. I saw that. Yeah. Nine fucking Woo, years. I got off light. Yeah. <laughs> she needed Kyle's attorneys. <laughs> That's I, so I, fucked up. Like what? Well, what's gonna actually what come of that? What did she? It was, she had like a a weed cartridge or something in her bag or a couple. And of they're letting like, her live. And they're letting and the <laughs> and the Russian generously are allowing her to live. Yeah, it's like what's gonna happen? Does she just like not get sent back? Well, I think what we're gonna, gonna hold so on to her. Biden has already offered a trade. We have someone of value that Russia An arms wants. dealer. I saw the arms dealer. Is that what yeah. it is? Yeah. And um. I either will make that trade or we'll sweeten it or something. Can I say this? First of all, I, my best guess would be, uh, no, you, no, I'll take that back. I guess that's not true. I hope we, I hope after we trade a fucking arms dealer for her, after she smuggled drugs to Russia, by the way, because that's clearly what happened. Um, whether you like it or not, like, <laughs> like you got to wait. Pause. She smuggled drugs to Russia implies dealer to me is that where we are or did she no i mean she had some no, fake cartridges in her luggage and she flew and she flew to russia 
I wouldn't even do that. Yeah. Kyle <laughs> just means that like if she was bringing in drugs and aren't allowed. As far as there. the Russians are yeah. concerned, she smuggled some drugs into Russia. They Damn, are not. You got drugs on you? Yeah. Oh, Work Zach has hidden? something yeah. relevant. Russian prosecutors of trying to smuggle less than one gram of cannabis oil in her luggage. Uh, help me out. Is one gram of cannabis oil? Um, doesn't it's sound like, like it's much. like one, it's one cart- cartridge. Yeah, it's one cartridge. Is a gram. Okay. Yeah. So this is obviously she just wanted to get high. Mm, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It, the the charges didn't involve like like um 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 distribution. It was distribution a charge of like, or, hey, you have this. Or, no, 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 and no. You the can't ne- have this here, It right? says she was charged as a dealer. It sounds like bullshit. But oh no, said. not as a dealer. dealer. Well, that's insane because if she had one. Oh, car, don't give me that. She do? used it for, for pain in her knees and her. Oh back. yeah, yeah. I use it for glaucoma prevention. <laughs> Please, <laughs> I, I use it when I'm bored. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the ultimate illness. Too. Okay, we use it when we're fucking having a good time. That's when she was using it to her knee and back. Yeah, that's what fixes a pro, pro athlete's muscle soreness. It's weed. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here with your fake. I, I hope that she's a real Biden supporter when she comes back. I'd kiss his old wrinkly ass if, if he traded yeah. an arm sealer for me. That was one <laughs> thing where I thought Trump got burned. Trump saved that. It might have been one of the Ball brothers, but there was a. NCAA basketball player who got into a lot of trouble very early in Trump's term. And I think it was China, not Russia. And he negotiated for this guy to get special treatment. He brought him back home. And afterwards, they were kind of ungrateful. And it's like, bro, listen, you might not like Trump or his politics, but he saved your ass. And you're, you know what you say after that? Thank you. Or, or you just say exactly what you just said, maybe. You'd be like, you know, I might not, I might not like Mr. Trump's uh, politics. But I just came from a Chinese prison. I don't know if you've ever been in one before. <laughs> anyone? Anyone here been in a Chinese motherfucking prison before? No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very thankful for Mr. <laughs> Mr. Trump for getting me out of that motherfucking Chinese prison. Thank you, Mr. Trump. Yeah. <laughs> I had my eyes opened. The America I thought it is not nearly as bad as I thought. <laughs> it's actually way chiller here than I imagined. You guys would not believe the lack of chill in China. <laughs> not joke appreciators let me tell you <laughs> like um, there was that one guy also i forgot about the the basketball the the ball player but uh the other guy the guy in north korea remember when they sent him back brain dead? oh and he died immediately yeah, yeah. because he mm. well, they, they like his parents apparently uh after reading about the britney griner thing i was like what, what was the other guy's name Otto warm beer so i looked it up and like they pulled him off a food tube when he got back like he was totally brain dead they did something to him and apparently like the big thing he did was he tried to take a propaganda poster from his hotel room with him and they sentenced him to 15 years of hard that's, labor i feel like that's a i don't like that you can do that to an american like like north korea is just like all right this guy did nothing we're gonna beat the fuck out of one of your citizens just beyond recognition to the point where he dies upon his return home I'm okay and with I'm okay. okay. I'm okay listening. I like right, I'm interested. You know, I've never been offered a all expense paid trip to beautiful North Korea before, mm. but <laughs> but were I to be offered one and were I dumb enough to go and were they dumb enough to accept my felonious ass into their great and beautiful nation, mm. then I certainly wouldn't steal anything while I were was there because oh wait, that's right. We're in North Korea. No, I'm mm-hmm. not gonna steal anything. I'm not gonna pull any like uh, Seth Rogen hijinks while I'm there. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> no, none, nothing like that. I'm going to mind my P's and Q's and I'm going to like follow the goddamn rules because I think they're super against rule bl- breaking there. They seem to be staunch on the whole follow the rules thing. They are sticklers. Yeah. Sticklers. They, yeah. They he was invited to Hong rules. Kong and traveled to North Korea on his own. Wow. There's a call. You should yeah, not okay. go to North Korea. No. It uh, seems yeah. like a terrible place. Like I was thinking about it. With like Russia or North Korea, any of those countries. And like you said, Kyle, I was like, if I had to go to Russia or North Korea or China, I would literally buy a new suitcase for that. Because when I went to Jamaica, I got back home and realized I had one of those carts just sitting in my bag. Like it was legal here, but I'm sure it's not legal there. And like that just happened one million percent on accident. And so I would Mm. like you'd I'd be That's how I got in trouble. (laughs) (laughs) One of those accidents. Yeah. You'd have to be like, it'd be scary to be in North Korea or Russia or somewhere to be like, this is not America, dude. Like they're looking for something from you. Like they, yeah, 
what are you doing? Like taking something out of a, a hotel room in North Korea, though. Do you think they're going to check our bags? Yes. <laughs> yes. They're going to check everything. Piece of your paper. And you're 100 percent right. I don't disagree with anything you're saying, but I just feel like a person doesn't have to be incomprehensibly stupid to make that mistake. Sure. I think I wouldn't. I think I wouldn't steal a poster from a hotel, but damn, that's the kind of thing I do want. Well, so yeah. here's the, the poster. Would you take a hotel? picture I'm you're not allowed to take? Positive. What if you took a picture you're not allowed to take? Nah, I'm almost that. positive that when you go there, you are warned by like either our consulate or like 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 somebody on our side tells you like, oh, oh, you're going over there. This guy like, listens to warnings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, do, do I look like a guy who listens to warnings? <laughs> I, I hope that these days they say something. You got an like, American flag shirt on. Just <laughs> walking <laughs> over there. <laughs> I hope they have a copy of the fucking photo or whatever that he tried to steal in the south mm -hmm. korean like side and they're like you see this yeah this is what they beat Otto to death over <laughs> he tried to take <laughs> one of these it cost eight cents and it's made out of yeah. chinese lead paint and but this guy the guy who stole Sounds it was cool. like one too he was super young <laughs> he was like in his he was like 20 or something so he just made like a stupid Ooh. error. And so I'm totally, well, I totally understand what you're saying, Woody. Like he made a stupid mistake that shouldn't yeah, be forfeiting his fucking life. You do have to follow the rules when yeah. you go there. But I could or, see or as a 20 year old, he's thinking, ah, if they find it, they're going to steal it and, and finger wag me, not uh, put me into a coma and kill me. Wrong. 20 year old Woody could have made, could have been that dumb. Yeah. Look, any 20 year old could be that dumb. Like yeah. for sure. Like, as far as when you said like an innocent mistake, like I thought you were talking about the cart thing, and that's totally possible. I, I imagine people do that constantly. Like, yeah, but I doubt that this chick. Did. I doubt it was accidental, but like even yeah. so, like it, it's just not a fucking. Big I was deal. really I hoping that WNBA star, star wasn't going to be high enough to get her out of trouble, a uh, cool enough position, if you will, to get her out of trouble. But apparently, that'll do. Have you well, seen it depends Bill on the Burr's trade. take on the WNBA? It's in his most recent comedy. Thing. Dude, I love it. He's like, women, women let down the WNBA. Not me. I watch tons of fucking sports. I watch, I watch the NBA. I watch football. I watch this. I watch the UFC. I can't get enough of it. What, I'm supposed to watch the WNBA? <laughs> if you want women basketball players to be famous, you watch them. What do I have to watch them? I already watched the guys play. You watch the girls play. It's women who aren't watching. And it's like, yeah, that's true, actually. There are yeah. there are no women watching the WNBA. Why is it Bill Burr's job to watch women play? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not. I, I want to yeah. say there was an instance re recently where they were talking about like getting the pay straight, and they found out the women were actually making more or something like that, so they cut their pay. Oh, that was the <laughs> that was the U.S. women's soccer team, I think, where they, without knowing how much the men's team made, were like, "We want as much as the men," and they're like, "You make more than the men. You're now making less." Interesting, because the the women. I was going to say are better. That's the wrong phrasing. They're more successful, right? They sure, play yeah. against other women and they're usually contenders, the American team for the to mm -hmm. They always podium and they usually, they often win. Whereas the guys team, they don't do that well. No, I don't think men's soccer. The best part is done well? I couldn't care less. It's just not a fun sport to watch. Yeah. I, I'm sure you if I, I was like. a European, I would like it, but. Oh, just, I'm sure mm -hmm. if I'd been indoctrinated into it. Sure. Uh, that maybe, although yeah, I you watch baseball, I think that's standard. Oh, I was it, about it to say, I, was it. I mean, I watch some baseball. I, I'm not going to stab somebody over it like those hooligans across the world will. Would that's would another sport? They get intense. I like they're that. In, I like they're they're into hockey and street fights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I meant to say football. Soccer, yeah, yeah, I don't know. You know, the, it just seems like they should. There's not enough scoring. I mean, baseball suffers from the same thing, I guess. But but. At least there's no this baseball. Back, there's a good baseball, baseball. There's this sort of back and forth struggle, but I guess there is in soccer too. What's yeah, a I normal guess. baseball score? About five, five, call it ish. Normal. Obviously, it's not going to be a tie, but sure, you know. sure. I, mean, I, I think that's high scoring. Honestly, I think a, if I had to guess, I'd say the average is like five total scored runs. Like, like a three-two game feels average to me. Okay, okay. Let's see. Yeah, between four and five runs. You're right. That's uh, way total less than or five. per team. Uh, total. total. Oh, okay. Yeah. So ten was. Oh, no, 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 no. Per team, four per team. So that's like eight total. That's okay, pretty good. Yeah, that's yeah, that's way fucking think, higher than soccer. Uh, people always like uh, dislike the blowouts, but but I always loved it when we would just mop the floor with somebody, and and, and it'd be like a seventeen run game or something. You'd have like an eight run fifth inning. I love that. Yeah, shit. that's what's fun. 
I'm pretty sure this is a while ago, but the Phillies were down by 15 runs coming into the ninth and they came back and won. And uh, the like ownership left the game and didn't watch the end. And they like roasted them and poured oh. like, uh, you know, drinks on them and stuff. Like yeah. That. I think it was a good hearted thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair. Like, no, I think that uh, last time I looked, I think the Mets were ahead of the Braves. Thankfully, three and a half games up, which is not a lot in baseball, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, it's August. Ooh. Well, the Cardinals are mm. only half a game behind Milwaukee for the top of Central, as I knew before I opened this page. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, because I follow what's going on. I mean, that, yeah. that's seven games total, but I'm sure we have at least a couple of series um, against the Mets before the year's up. So like, that's the cool thing about that is like, Oh, we get our chance. Like, like the the best team's gonna get there because the Mets and the Braves are gonna play again, and we can mm-hmm. we can sweep a three game series and be right in it. Yeah, I like your phrasing. Yeah, and I like your your whole thought line. Like, the better team is gonna win. We're gonna play each other. There's an opportunity for us to come back or you know lose the lead, but better team will win. Yep, we'll get our chance. A lot yeah. of sports, basketball needs less scoring. It needs to be less scoring in basketball. Let me time look. You know about how I, I fixed the NBA like four years ago. You remember that, right? When I, I remember you had some we theories. get one of those fucking behemoths off the court for each team and play four on four basketball. Four on four basketball, fifteen foot hoops. I said twelve, but trampolines. I see where you're headed. Well, they already tried the trampolines. That didn't. That didn't pan. Yeah, out. but the amount of shattered ankles you got to see and jump ball or whatever that game was, was called. Pretty cool. Do you remember that when they had it on Spike I TV? I remember watching it and being like, too young to realize this was not like the emergence of a new popular sport that was going to take the world by storm. I was still in like Africanized B mode of thought process. And I was like, I can't wait for this to be on TV. I wonder what team St. Louis will have in the basketball. Or or like, I can't wait till we can, I can't wait till my high, or until your high school has a Until high school and I can be on the team. Dude, basketball trampoline. I think someone broke their leg like every week. Every game. <laughs> was, so dumb. They, they, it wasn't mostly trampolines. There were like three foot iron sheets in between uh, the trampolines with a thin bit of mesh on top. And, and people would come down hard. And, and, and they'd fall like, with part of the way it works. Go, one leg would like stay on the matting and the other would like go between the trampoline and the floor, like down under, like it wedged in there. Mm-hmm. It was uh, absurd. And, and, the way you play defense and trampoline is like you're coming and I like jump in front of you and dead tramp it or I super tramp it and and like the 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 whole they were good and it was crazy and it was so dangerous but it was good TV. I would like to talk to someone who played in that league like today and like hear what that was like and that like <laughs> I wonder like like are those people who like maybe played on some small college basketball team and they're like oh y'all starting up the, the trampoline basketball league yeah. fuck yeah man <laughs> what, yeah the, right the walkie devil rays okay let's go <laughs> <laughs> i'll, I'll see if i can get off from my ups job right now <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> yeah i got well, can, off? can okay. we push the game to seven <laughs> sure sure the cameraman says yeah <laughs> yeah that would be cool if that was still a game. The XFL is 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 what I thought was going to be coming cool. back. No, it's not. Vince McMahon got me too, and and he's he's having to step down from everything. He's he's definitely That's... not bringing the XFL back. Oh, no, I it was so back. look, if Vince McMahon had like sexually assaulted a woman, I would be anti McMahon. But it's my understanding that she was well compensated for her time, and that she was a beneficiary in this until she decided she wasn't happy anymore. That's true. Well, I mean, I just said it. It well, sounds like she was a liar. <laughs> <laughs> is this one of those scenarios where he paid her to keep quiet and now she's not keeping quiet and she owes him a lot of money? I think the opposite. I, I, maybe. So, uh, you know, he's going to make a bit. We're, we're being fact checked on. <laughs> well, that's irrelevant. The, well, we're talking rocker. about whether it should be Me Too or not, right? Like, yeah, like, yeah. I, so, all right. No, noted. Uh, Vince doesn't own the XFL. I think this time, I think the first time he might have. But um, it's a big part of it. Yeah, right. Wasn't Trump a big part of it the first time? I think he was like, you know, I think Trump slides into things. And he's like, just call me a producer and I'll be here promoting you. Like, like I think he's that he's real sleazy and, and slimy like that. <laughs> oh. Just slide me onto the end credits. <laughs> yeah. In any case. Uh, yeah, no, I thought he had a like a he had a good relationship with this woman who was working for him indirectly. Of course, he's uh, at the very top. She didn't direct report. And uh, 
And then somewhere along the way, she decided that because I worked for you, this wasn't okay, and you owe me extra cash. Well, that's a shame, because Vince uh, is in a lot of my favorite internet memes. There's the mm-hmm. one where he's like, oh, like melting down, like more mm-hmm. and more and more. Uh, great meme. Great meme. And uh, The money walk that uh, Conor McGregor borrowed. Oh, he does yeah, the money. Strut. I think it's Yeah, fun. yeah. Okay. I like the, the strut. The gift of that strut. That does a very mm-hmm. good strut. I like that. Another about. good meme. Yes. Uh, for, he gets tackled those... by Trump. That was a meme. He let Amazing. Trump tackle him because, you know, he was jacked and Trump was As fat. if he could have <laughs> stopped him. Yeah. Are you, are you suggesting that if he stood in front of the Trump, Trump train, he would stop it? I mean, it depends how much, much you fool. Trump has. <laughs> because if, if Trump is running at you, that he's got a low center of gravity. Trump, huge Trump, quads. Trump huge is abs. cut from a different cloth, okay? Mm. What, what you got to understand is you're dealing with a super athlete. You know, you're not just dealing mm. with someone who was born into something. He was born to do a thing. He had but the you're makings also of talking about someone. He, he always had the makings of a varsity athlete. Yeah, he, varsity. He's not only been like raised to do this, born to do this, if you will, perhaps prophesized to do this uh, for, from long, mm, uncle long ago. But but he's been he's he's been he's been trained he, training every day. You know, mm-hmm. devoting himself to it. He's he's just a master. Yeah, he could have been anything. He could. So have the been XFL a is and coming so back. Did in 2023 kyle so it's the yeah. xfl is coming back the the eight cities are dallas houston las vegas orlando san antonio seattle st louis dc no team in atlanta huh no atlanta team yet trust me we'd have gotten behind something like that okay falcons fucking blow of course and, they would georgians and, love football and we know how to get low brow here okay like 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 we would love a few more ufc events as well it's bullshit there aren't any here uh, like i don't remember the last one that was here i would go uh, and sit in the shitty seats that suck and look at a big screen and hurt my neck. I would go. If the UFC held an event in Raleigh, I would definitely think about going and then watch it on TV, admiring <laughs> how cool it was that it was nearby. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's right here. I, I would, <laughs> you, you walk to the fridge. <laughs> I would I would I could have gone to that. <laughs> I would okay. go and I would North Carolina's on TV. <laughs> Sorry, Kyle. <laughs> I want the tickets that are near the walkout area. Like, I want to get oh, like a really yeah, close yeah, yeah. look at the the fighters to kind of like it sounds stupid to phrase it this way, but size them up. Like, I want to I want to mm. get a, a real world perspective of how big this human being is because I've sat I've had good enough baseball tickets before that I was just like, holy shit, you really are six four two forty, huh? Jesus, that is a big man. But I I wonder if I saw like I don't know someone someone that was like 145 pounder if i'd be like huh you are a little guy or if i'd be surprised that they walk around like 190 on fight day i don't know i'd like to see them closer well hopefully they bring one obviously i saw joe plenty of times definitely bigger than 155 yeah (laughs) (laughs) i like it it, the coolest thing about being there in person and most of it's less cool than tv but the coolest part about being there in person is you get to look at what you want to. And in my case, that's the losers. You know, like, <laughs> you watch them fight and, and you really only see the winners. That guy that's knocked out, laying on the ground, suffering. The guy that's had the worst day of the last five years right now at his lowest low, whose team is trying to pick him up like physically and morally, or morally, I don't know. And uh, emotionally, I should say. Like, it's fun to watch that guy. It's the cameras go. If a guy's having a really hard time, the cameras aren't on him any, anymore. It's done. You're just seeing the winner j- jump around. And yeah, they spare and him that. Like that. Yeah. But when you're there, you get to see that. You get to see him walk back to the locker room or get yeah. carried. And you can scream at him. Room. And there's you know, like, like what you can, you can wait until he's concussed and, he, and everything he thought was going to come to fruition has failed. His dreams have like crumbled right before his eyes like 30 seconds before and he's got a little brain injury and you're right there to spit in his eye you can it's, really give him what for what happened and you like call him whatever like mean name he doesn't like hearing it's easy to forget that half the people that, that play that night <laughs> lose. no I, I like when they console the guy who lost but but usually what you see is he's so concussed he's walking by and they're like it's okay jim and he's like get the fuck off me i don't know who you are the fuck are you yeah i i am um, so i was at the fight play. where joe lozon lost to anthony pettis it was in tokyo uh, and um his memory starts up again back in the locker room like seven minutes later fuck. Uh, and it was I, I talked to um one of his cornermen and his he basically explained that it was emotionally difficult on him to carry Joe back to the locker room. 
he's like i got to do you know and it was like it was hard on him emotionally yeah it's like shit that, that that's the stuff you only get when you're there because that's not on film yeah it's real sad and and you know i don't think you get that in many other sports uh, it, it, it sucks to lose a game of anything mm -hmm. but man when it's all on your shoulders when there's no one else to look to when when it was all it's just you and then not only that not only did you lose but you were physically beaten you were yeah. assaulted you're bleeding and broken and your brain doesn't quite work well so processing all <laughs> of what i just said is is difficult in a way that it's never been before <laughs> I, like listener i don't know if if you've lost a fight before but it's embarrassing like everyone knows you lost like you just got beaten by another man 1v1 in a very pure mm -hmm. form of combat sport and there's no excuses there's no team to hide behind there's nothing it's just <laughs> you were defeated by that guy yeah and i, I don't know why that's funny but uh it is. It's, uh, no, it's, it is. I think it is. It funny. surprises me that professional athletes like Chael Sonnen, for example, has talked about it where he, like he's embarrassed that he lost in front of he's like, I was there with no shirt on. Mm. Everyone saw me and, and I lost like straight up to this guy is like everyone knows about it. It's embarrassing. And I'm just like, really? Because I I don't think of it as something that should be embarrassing to you. One, mm. you're a pro who's been here before. And two, that guy you were fighting was an outrageous. Yeah. Right? He's, he's also he a professional like yeah yeah dude there's no if i rolled with anyone who's ever been in the ufc i would lose and i would be like yeah well obviously i think <laughs> you could know? BJ, i think you could take bj penn after he's had a night of drinking and you've got your Ooh. foot healed up like look, look, i'll say this i'll, I'll I, I'm, I know it's time to do ads but like you sick you make bj penn do seven shots of tequila mm -hmm. and you wait for it to kick in give him a good 20 minutes and mm -hmm. then Woody taps him on the shoulder and, and says, let's fucking go. And then Woody grabs him. Woody wins that fight. <sighs> this is this is me fully this is, healed. Th this is like a little right bit of training. Yeah, you freshen up. Joe's going to give you like a, a two week refresher course. Should we do a little, little mini fight camp. <laughs> yeah, a mini fight camp. And, and you're going you're, you're gonna, to like, like you're going to be, you know, you're going to be all over is that. BJ Penn in a coma. Like, uh, what, like he's a <laughs> Hall of Famer. He's a so he's a Hall of Famer in the UFC. And he's about the right size for, for Woody to fight. I would say they're probably roughly the same size these days. Wait, Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. He's he, but know. he's losing bar fights now. He's losing. bar. I heard he woke up after losing the bar fight and went round two and beat the guy up. What? That's the that's the way I read it online. Oh, if he wanted a round two with me, I would decline. The, yeah, he, he took yeah. the rubber bat. He took the rubber. Oh, all right, you should knock those ads out. I'm sorry. I'm His sorry. profile pic on Instagram is from like 15 years ago. That's <laughs> <the best. laughs> yeah, yeah, he's put on a little weight, but who hasn't? All right, this episode of PKA brought to you by some wonderful sponsors. One of which is Blue Chew. Spring has finally come, so let's help you do the same. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue <laughs> That's <a> Chew. Joke. <laughs> they're, I didn't. They're they're funny. They're riffing in these reads now. <laughs> Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. BlueChew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. We got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And thank you so much, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the show with your wonderful dick pills. Code PKA, just the five bucks in shipping. If it's like it was a couple years ago, you get three pills to try. Uh, go for the Tadalafil. We all prefer the Tadalafil to the Sildenafil. So check out Blue Chew, code PKA. This episode also brought to you by a couple of wonderful THC companies. Well, it's the same company. Death by Gummy Bears and Wonky Weeds. Are you of a loved one, are you or a loved one, sick of mm. mediocre or even bad THC alternatives? I know I am. Well, we've got great news for you. DeathbyGummyBears.com and WonkyWeeds.com have you covered. 
Death by Gummy Bears and Wonky Weeds were founded by a group of passionate professionals who were sick and tired of low-quality Delta 8 products that are spray-coated and very often incorrectly dosed. That's why Death by Gummy Bears and Wonky Weeds had the boys in the lab cook up high-quality, powerful THC products that are accurately dosed and actually taste great. Looking for a super strong 100 milligram Delta 8 gummy that will put you on your ass? Then Death by Gummy Bears is for you. Looking for more of a mellow, relaxed high? Then the cartridges, disposables, pre-rolls, and distillates you'll find at wonkyweeds.com are more your speed. So whether you're trying to get absolutely shithoused or just a nice, relaxing night at home, we've got the Delta 8 product for you. With so many satisfied customers all over the USA, American-based wonkyweeds.com and deathbygummybears.com serves all states where hemp-derived THC is legal. So whether you're a current THC enjoyer or just interested in trying something new, go to wonkyweeds.com or deathbygummybears.com and use promo code PKA20 for 20% off your entire order. 20% off PKA20. Once again, that is wonkyweeds.com or deathbygummybears.com. Code PKA20 for 20% off your order. If you want to order something from both sites, do that too. Have fun, guys. Uh, If you are someone who has a high tolerance to this kind of thing, you're going to want to go death by gummy bears. This is all gone. I've eaten all these. So they need to send, they're still sending me some more. So check these out. Very, very potent. If you're new to Delta eight or THC alternative, start slow. But if you want something a little less intimidating, these carts are definitely your speed. You got the Delta eight one, which is weaker. Uh, not, you know, it's still, you know, it's going to get you fucking high. So don't misconstrue this. The THCO and the Delta 10 are stronger. So if you want to start a little slower, go with the Delta 8. I personally like the THCO the most. The Skittles flavor and the gelato are very good. I'm and on the other also, end of the spectrum. Yes. Their, their starter program is where I belong. <laughs> <laughs> I now have uh, the Wacky Weeds one. I think it might be lime flavored. They're green. And mm-hmm. it's just even half of one of those is fine (laughs) half of their starter is plenty of gummy i swear like Mm -hmm. i don't know if you're a lightweight they make a thing for you too and and lightweight's not bad like you don't No, it's a it's a if anything like you're getting more bang for your buck with with lightweight because you take less of it obviously it's it's the same thing as if someone's a lightweight you know drinking a a couple beers for some 600 pound guy i don't know maybe i'm just like just know your role and play your game is what I'm trying to say. Like, don't be a fucking hero. And be like, you know what? So what if I do this every two months? <laughs> I still want to roll with the big boys. That's not where the fun is. No, just do it. Do it to the point of comfortability. So if you're new yeah. to it, I recommend the carts. Um, the gummies, you can get the 100 milligram gummies over at deathbygummybears.com. They have 30 milligram gummies over at wonkyweeds.com. So a little weaker there. Still, I would not recommend starting with fucking 30. That's... That's a good bit. Start with like the equivalent of what you think is about 10 if you haven't taken it before. That's usually like the the amount people recommend or even less than that. So have fun, guys. Code PKA20 for all of your THC, your legal THC needs if you are in a state where hemp derived THC is legal. So PKA20, check it out. Very high quality stuff. You will enjoy it. And of course, lock and load. Talking of high quality, high quality stuff, look no further than the highest quality load enhancing, orgasm increasing, fantabulous, wondiferous formula that you've ever seen. Lock and load, code JIZ or code PKA on Derek's site, GorillaMind.com. You can use those codes for anything else off the site as well. So check these out. You really, if you're still not on the lock and load (laughs) wagon, give it a fucking go. You're going to be blown away. It's the reason we harp on it is because it actually fucking works. You will be surprised. We're not making you take nine pills a day for fucking fun. If we could do it with one, we would have done one, but we can't. We want. We were, we're perfectionists, and so Our we are uh, not as effective because they're a joke. Yes. Every time, every time I'm in an adult store, mm-hmm. buy my lubricants and Pitch oils. Mm-hmm. I uh, I see their 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 fake cum supplements that they've got back there, Disgrace. and I scoff. I always oh. scoff, and I say, I see you've got. You got that shit, and and I tell them about about lock and load. And spit they, on the cashier because it might have been his call. I'm not hey, allowed bitch. to go back. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Kyle does at sex shops. Like, what I actually asked about last time I was there was I was like, "Is that an entire sex doll in a cage?" And she was like, <laughs> "Yeah, yeah, that's a sex doll in a cage. Some people freaky." I, <laughs> I was like, "How much?" You, Kyle. I was like, "How much is that sex doll?" Mm-hmm. And she was like. Thirty eight hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm like without the cage. Yeah, those are so expensive. Kyle, all right, here you are. Here it is. Hypothetically, you're a girl in this scenario. You're no virgin. I bet. Better yet, you're a 
<laughs> semi pro. Bit of a slap. okay. But all of your toys were stolen. You get one back. What do you choose? Oh, the wand. The wand is your one. Yeah, the wand comes with attachments too. And now uh, maybe that's cheating, but I'll just take the naked wand if it is. Yeah, the wand is the most versatile. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the wand's well, you know, the wand. Well, if you're going to choose something, yeah, it's all, it's all, that's all faithful right there. You know, you you break came out, you know, you're getting a, you're getting a hit. You know, <laughs> you know, you're getting a if, you, if you're re, if a, you're yeah. If you're reaching for it, you know, over there, you got all your bats lined up. You're about to step up to the plate, and you need the you need to get a hit for the home team. You're grabbing the wand. Oh yeah, the the wand first ballot Hall of Famer. Yeah, like, <laughs> just you satchel know, page. Of it doesn't sex miss. Toys. I think you guys are stuck in the wooden bat era of sex toys, and you need to step up step up to the clit sucking toys. Ping! That would be your selective one. Your one. We're going aluminum. Pick. Yeah, I'm. I'm telling you, there's a new generation of toys out there, and your wand is not it. I got a shop back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <these things. laughs> there's no muffler. <laughs> hang on, hang on. I'm sorry, baby. I need more quarters. Do you have? There's more hardly <laughs> any need for me to last more than. <laughs> <laughs> and, and with, with, with a clit sucking toy in your arsenal, you don't have to last more than thirty seconds. This is where you want to be. All right, I, I'll get a clit sucker. Do you have any clit suckers that you recommend, Woody? I could give you a link. I, yeah. like, I, mean, I, I mean, why stop at me? Why doesn't the world get to know about <laughs> the finest clit sucker money can buy? Yeah, you, I'm, I'm you can't keep this this data to yourself. We have to share it. It's called the Womanizer? <laughs> what? <laughs> the Womanizer 2? I want to see this one. Is that it, really? It, it's made by DeWalt. <laughs> 24 volts of sucking power mm. premium too what a terrible name i hate it well the womanizer bucks. part is funny <laughs> the luxurious. all right i mean i guess uh i i want the blueberry one though it's only got 19 reviews woody i guarantee we look up the wand a shit ton of reviews well sure sure it, it, i mean it's like if I if if I ask you guys for lube advice, you come back with Vaseline. Yeah. All right. What is this? Nineteen sixty two. We've moved on since then. Let's I mean, see. Let's see the, some of the reviews of this. Who who hates okay. it? Oh, AVL hates it. A year ago, one star. This was agonizing. It was torture. <laughs> like someone was giving my clit electric shocks. No instructions on how to use it, so I might be doing something wrong. But it's <laughs> really simple. Maybe not for me. Ouch. She's still splitting the battery side. <laughs> <laughs> she put a nine volt directly yeah. on the clip. Uh, this lady says, rubbish, complete waste of my money. Won't ever buy something from Ann Summers again. This wow. boy is pissed wow. and she's horny. Are you picking out the negatives? Yes. I am. I, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Less than yeah. a month later, it won't hold the charge. And this is your lifetime pick? Mm -hmm. oh, you don't get it. Touché. If you get one of those corded wands, that's going to, your your grandchildren can get girls off with that. Yeah. A <laughs> it's like buying a gun. You can hand it down. <laughs> uh, what are you going to break it? <laughs> Be respectful. This was my grandmother's. <laughs> Steam powered. <laughs> uh, give me, give me, give me a nugget of that coal. Yeah, give, give me the coal. I mean, trust me. <laughs> Get off or not? Uh, Takes a while was, to build. Uh, build no, a head I have... of steam. <laughs> <laughs> A steam powered. Vibrator. I was talking to someone today, and uh, they didn't know the saying "cutting the mustard." Really? I was like, "Yeah, I don't know about that one. That one doesn't exactly cut the mustard." And he had no idea what I was fucking talking about. You know, yeah, he very is common. kind of right. I, like, uh, it's a phrase I know what it means, but it's not intuitive. Is it okay? I, I guess not, but I feel like it's a common usage. Is that a, yes. it? it I feel like everyone should know. It what is common that usage. Means. I don't know what it means though. Like, are you cutting a sandwich with mustard on? Well, are you are you diluting the mustard when you cut the mustard? All I know is that when you cut uh -huh. that mustard, you've accomplished the the goal at hand, and you've lived up to expectations. You're up to par, et cetera, et cetera. Huh. Yes, yeah, so Zach explained what cut the mustard means. It means you're if someone can't cut the mustard, they're unable to succeed. I just don't know why it means that. I need the origin. Yeah. Because you only yeah. use it in the negative. You never say that really cut the mustard for me. Ah, you didn't quite cut the mustard, did you? Yeah, mm. it's a mean saying. Couldn't stand up to that mustard. It was too thick and viscous. You couldn't even cut it. 
Yeah, too spicy uh, for you, you bitch. Oh, you know I mean, okay. They had great. to actually cut the mustard crop down, like like the stalks of mustard thing. That makes so much more sense than the sandwich. Case. And you had to have a scythe sharp enough to quote unquote cut the mustard. So if you had a good scythe, it was. Okay. The crop could grow up to six feet high and was very arduous work requiring extremely sharp tools. When blunt, they would not cut the mustard. Okay. Hell yeah. All right. Man, that I learned one. something. Yeah, I hadn't even considered that mustard didn't come from bottles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to like be drunk in a year and incorrectly explain that to someone. <laughs> just, like, just like get it wrong at someone's barbecue. Uh, no, 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 that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought mustard was born in a bottle and started there. Well, I know you grind mustard seed and like add vinegar yeah. and salt and water or something. And then you make like mustard mustard. Are there yeah. things, Kyle, that you could buy? This is food that you could buy, but you consider just not to be made at home. Like there's lots of other products that you consider not for home construction. You know, you don't make cars at home. You don't make uh, many iron parts. You don't like there's a lot of things like, oh, this requires a big manufacturing facility to do right. Yeah. Are there cooking items that you think describe that too? Um, That are which side of it? The side of it where you should just go buy this? Or like, you know, this is too much to be manufactured at home. Um, Cooking this is too. Pasta is uh, is pretty difficult to make. Um, donuts would be are easy to make because you're literally oh. like pouring like you like mix up batter and you pour that into boiling oil and oh donut it's like done they're like the easiest thing to make but uh but what like, about a uh, more complicated donut that has like jelly in it uh, you know you bake them and you inject some I, I mean sure it's easier to buy donuts than make donuts but they'll taste better well. if you make them right I think okay, that there okay. are some things where there's like no advantage so like ketchup is one ketchup has been perfected. That in particular, there's I I watched maybe Adam Ragusa or maybe one of those YouTube chefs who he's like, all right, we're gonna take the Taco Bell whatever the fuck and we're gonna make a good one. Like he does that sort of shit, and he was like, well, I mean, we're gonna make ketchup, but just so we're clear, these guys mastered it like 180 <laughs> years ago, and there literally is no topping them. I was stuck on donut because I read an article that said donuts were really difficult to make well, and they don't get the credit like people who make steaks well. Hmm. And I'm only as good as my source. I don't know anything about cooking. The world knows this. <laughs> there's two but, kinds uh, of donuts. There's the donuts you bake, um, the and and there's the donuts that you fry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know much about baked donuts. Me Baking either. in general is 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 a different you, kind of cooking. Is there something an Indian food, a, a curry, a, like something you're just like no to buy ingredients and create that is not something you do at home. Yeah, I'm, I, I've tried to cook a lot of things that are really difficult. I found that hot and sour soup, which is like a Chinese food, uh, a Chinese food soup. Mm-hmm. I love that soup, but it's really difficult to find a restaurant that makes a good bowl of hot and sour soup. So I, I set out to make my own ones and the list of ingredients, odd ingredients that don't show up in shelves. Are you saying Livonia is not known for its Chinese cuisine? I'm saying that like <laughs> Atlanta isn't known for having a lot of black fungus on hand when you go to the grocery okay. store. And that's one of the dehydrated black fungus is like one of the ingredients. And, uh, you know, along with tofu and like bamboo sprouts and any number of weird sauces and liquids that have to be added to soup. And so I came to the idea that like, it's absurd to make your own hot and sour soup because of that list of ingredients. So it's like an $8 bowl of soup that I didn't really <laughs> even want that much because it's <laughs> summer. Uh, so now I just order that. But then there's some things that it's like, oh, you, you spent the time to do that. It's really going to show. With, and that comes with, um, I think, with like chicken stock and beef stock, fish, seafood stocks that mm-hmm. you make instead of just getting a bottle of something and pouring in there if you take the time to do that. And it does take time. Like you can definitely taste the difference. Taylor, can you think of anything? A, a food that you know you'd commonly get at a restaurant, but you just wouldn't attempt at home. I mean, any Asian shit other than stir fry, like because okay. you always try and like make it healthier, and so you don't put like MSG and all the butter and oil they do, and it never turns out the way you want it to. I'm not convinced MSG is so bad for you. It's not bad I'm for not you at either. all. I, I have bottles and bottles of it. I have a, a bottle. It's called Accent, and it's literally just MSG. I haven't used it. But I'm I, I have a bottle. It's called monosodium glutamate. <laughs> no, that this is not the back. It's just there. Monosodium glutamate. MSG. <laughs> Motherfucking. That's all that's in there. And it like says open, a, like it, it opens up the flavors. Yeah. It's, which uh, is probably the most impressive. Like that's more impressive than gunpowder. It does the same thing salt does, but better. It's uh, it, it's super salt. And, and there's nothing I, bad at all. Does it raise your blood pressure? 
No more than salt does. If it does, no, all. that's not okay. I'm not looking for a tie. I'm looking for it's a swish. Uh, we're not here to be a baby about blood pressure. We're making chili. So we're going to. I'm a bit of a baby. I gave you that huh? new drug. Take it. Oh, I haven't tried that yet. Yeah. 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 No, on that I wrote bandwagon. It, I wrote it uh, down, I'm about though. to start taking it. Uh, I, I just got it the other day. It's uh, prescription. Yeah. It's a prescription blood pressure know. medication. Yeah. 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 With a lot of supposed other uh, positive benefits, like like a laundry list of them, almost too. Dude, many. I love it when drugs do that. They're like, "Oh, do you have high blood pressure? This is the drug for you." By the note, by the way, symptoms include higher IQ and longer dick. Yeah. <laughs> now, careful, your dick's gonna get real hard. <laughs> it's like, oh, fine. Like, <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Well, uh, I, you I know what needs to exist, and it, it might be TRT. A male birth control, right? I want something that reduces your sperm count, increases your muscles and your energy and just like happiness and well-being. Well, TRT does that. all those things, but it doesn't lower your sperm count to the point of being um, birth control necessarily. It definitely makes things a lot less likely. But again, I, I had this exact conversation with Derek once. I was like, mm -hmm. how low will my sperm count go if I don't take? Because there's a drug you can take to protect your sperm count. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. a guy who's using Derek's clinic and he was, he sent me over the drugs that they sent him. He's like, yeah, they, I don't know what any of this is. And I'm reading through it and I'm like, Oh, Oh, this is, I don't know this one. I was like, what is this? And he's, I should know it. Why am I not on this? And he was, he was like, Oh, Derek's or not Derek, but his provider. So that they said, um, Oh, this is to protect my sperm count in case I want to have kids. I was like, Oh yeah. I specifically remember turning <laughs> this down. <laughs> I was like, don't you ever get that shit anywhere. <laughs> Can you don't even zero? <laughs> I don't want it to be, I don't want bottles of that to touch bottles of my shit. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, so if testosterone lowers your sperm count yeah. and does all these other great things for you, yeah, then it seems like we're close. I just need to lower it a little more. So every couple of years, there's you know how Reddit constantly has articles that seem like we're on the verge of curing cancer. It's like, oh, this new breakthrough, all the cancers are cured. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I, I hear that every year though. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's I hear that every year for male birth control. I'm quite sure that one exists already that's either a pill or something else that if someone wanted, they could take. But boys, go get a goddamn vasectomy and freeze some sperm. It's cheap. There's um there was a male birth control pill that worked. And um, it they like canceled it in FDA testing because it made males like emotional and sad, which, by the way, the female birth control does, too. And a lot of people are like, this is bullshit. Why do women have to endure this? And men don't. Why is it? Men even get the option to choose which partner is sad and unhappy and, and, and taking depression pills. But doesn't make sense. Be, like... Look, let's let's throw away all the like political correctness and just admit that girls are the ones who are getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. So maybe they consider and they bear the burden of the of that pregnancy as well. So they might consider mood springs a more tolerable side effect, whereas guys might consider it an intolerable side effect. Because uh, look, when it comes down to it, their problem is at least financial. I heard a really like disturbing medical. thing today that that there are places where if a woman wants to get her tubes tied at say twenty five, they will say no they won't allow that to happen and, and and i saw an anecdotal case where she she was like why and the doctor told her that someday her husband might want children she's, <laughs> she's like my uterus belongs to a man i haven't even met yet <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. i saw that she goes. now the thing is <laughs> <laughs> man, man, man 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 yes man. just yeah, w man. after w swish after swish <laughs> When we Caitlyn Jenner won woman of the year on her Woo! first try as a boy, as we a girl, he stopped. Thousands of years of touchdown swish. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a YouTube short today, and it was like okay. this big fat behemoth of a woman asking some other woman, you know, on a college campus somewhere. You know how these things are framed, and she's like, "Do you think that that?" women and men should even be separated in sports shouldn't they have the 
she's and she's like no i don't think they should be separated because it perpetuates this myth that women aren't as as physically strong as men and then that immediately cuts to an 11 v1 women versus men soccer match and they're playing that song can't be shook can't be stopped (laughs) (laughs) and he's just he's not just winning he's like tricking on all of, he's going and one skills just like <laughs> loop, like behind his back behind their backs he's just like they're falling over and he's running through the and when he scores he doesn't just he kicks like a behind the back goal or something like uses his right foot but the ball's behind him like over over this shoulder when he kicks it in see this. he shits on him it's great it's so funny and yeah I think this is it, buddy. I, Oh, oh, I, can't oh, I do want to see this. <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, viewers. I'm leaving for one minute. <laughs> I, this actually isn't it, but I will watch this. This has to be good too. I bet it's the same clip of a guy like dominating the women. <laughs> it's he is scoring at will here. <laughs> he is he so so like you can see where the advantage is. It's it, his acceleration and his limb length are both huge advantages. When when mm-hmm. they're in like a I don't know what you call it. I'm gonna call it a, a juggle. When they're in a juggle situation, <laughs> when it's a one, when it's, when it's a one v one juggle off, all you, all you football fans, you know, you know what I'm talking about here. Yeah. When, you, when you're juggling, this is where you come for your soccer yeah. analysis, right boys. here, right here. When you're in a juggle off against your your yeah. opponent, who may or may not be a left wing or 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 right wing, yeah. um, you're <laughs> he's able or to a like defense. accelerate. He's able to like beat them, and then he has this like extra gear to accelerate away from them once he does beat them. So it's not mm-hmm. like once he's beaten them, it's over. He's gone to the There's next another one. aspect mm-hmm. to it that I think is important. He is a brick wall dribbling this thing. If you guys didn't see the clip, but he is a strong man. If he shoulder bumps these women, not even a check on purpose, right? If they bump into them, him, it will be like bumping into a hippopotamus, <laughs> right? It's, it's going to be a very lopsided affair. He's so a they have to play in such a way that bodies don't hit, and he doesn't. He gets to do whatever he chooses to do. And mm-hmm. I think that holds him back. Yeah, he's a, a you know, it, 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 it's not we're not going to get into that whole thing. I think it's just funny to watch those women get trounced by, uh, by a better player. I'd feel the same way if, if he was like trouncing a bunch of little kids. I love oh, I yeah. love that shit. Yeah. I would lo- like like any times like a bunch of people are getting shown up by one guy who's really good at it. I-, I sent you guys that clip the other day of that midget pickpocketing that woman, and and and, and like this dude walks up, bitch slaps the midget, and then I guess the someone spoke up for the midget, maybe his partner in crime, a full sized fellow, and he headbutts that guy as his opening move, and that guy is like fucked and like crawling out of the place he gives an ass kick to the midget immediately the midget like skips and they both (laughs) run away and the lady has no idea why this man is assaulting midgets and headbutting people and he turns around and hands her her wallet and it was so slick it was great (laughs) he looked like boss is staged uh no no it was like security yeah, footage and he okay. slapped the shit out of a midget so that either that midget was really selling it or uh, you're judging my porn now speaking of people selling slaps again the youtube shorts my apologies mm. i saw seth rogan <laughs> talking about uh the making of um this is the end and oh and there's God. a scene where michael Sarah is is supposed to slap rihanna's ass and he asked her hey can i slap your ass for real and she's like you can slap my ass for real if i can smack you for real and he was like sure so they did yeah. three takes of this, and Seth Rogen's like, on the final take, he she smacked the shit out of him, and that is the take we used. And they play it, and she smacks the shit out of him, and he goes, oh! <laughs> like, <it's bad. laughs> but to be fair, he smaps the shit out of her ass, too, so I feel like he, I feel like he felt like it's mm-hmm. worth it. I, I would definitely trade, uh, I think. <laughs> I would like, yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, and I you know it's going to play in the film. It's going to be a big laugh moment. He slapped the shit out of him. I wonder if a butt is a Our bad place to get a him. tattoo. A, like like it, as far as pain? Yeah, pain, pain, not not. Aesthetic. I would think so, honestly. Seems kind of sensitive back there. That's why we like spank people, right? I'm on the other team with this. I could be wrong. I'm not I'm not, not, not sticking to it too hard. But okay. it's been my experience that, like, for example, let's say you go to smack a butt or something and you get it wrong and you hit a lower back. That changes the whole thing it's like hey why are you hitting me you are yeah. hitting me that is not a spank anymore because it hurts more it's not the same you're talking thing. about a bad miss of someone's uh, ass. if you're if you're into spanking huh. someone listeners you need to know this maybe you're young and you haven't you know explored this part yet you hit the part they sit on 
that's what your target is. You're aiming for the thing that they sit on. And my theory is that Kyle says no, but well, it depends what the point of the, the spanking is. <laughs> Are we trying but, to send uh, a message? <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, it, if this is a jovial spanking, then, then you're, you're aiming for the part that they sit on. It's a little less sensitive. And it, it, I, I think just the nature of sitting on it for the last, you know, in some cases up to 13 years, they're desensitized. <laughs> That's yeah. a joke. Um, but uh no i agree with you that's why i think, I think I, tattoos there might be okay i think the ass cheek because i know that like uh one thing in like bdsm when you're spanking someone if you actually try and deliver a painful blow where you hit them is like right below the buttocks it's called the sit spot or seat spot it's the top of the thigh like Ooh, right where the that, that is a very oh, well i don't area. like that no one likes that that's why you hit people there it's interesting well, i believe you, you know and I, 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 mean. I trust in your experience <laughs> but that's also a part you sit on, which invalidates my thing. Like I'm looking at what I'm sitting on right now, and I bet you could too, dude. It's all the way almost down to my knee. Oh, the sitting on the ass does not desensitize the ass. I, I, I yeah. don't do that. No, <laughs> but it, because the bottom of your feet are incredibly sensitive to to a oh, that'd it's be a one terrible of the ways, tattoo. It's one of the ways that the Vietnamese tortured our troops. Is they would they would hang them up and beat the soles of their feet with bamboo. It's a terrible torture. They're very sensitive, and we walk around on those bitches all day. Some the heels, the though, well, like, the I, I'm like with you. Like, if you were to hit the uh, the instep, that'd be very sensitive. Mm -hmm. But are the heels and like the um, where the callus grows on a big toe? Is that no. that, sensitive? Th that that would not be sensitive at all? You could tattoo my heel while I was asleep. Like it's like a <laughs> like, like have you ever like done something really physical and like some of that like back heel like that worn callus you carved like, that or, off like an it, old it has boat. yeah <laughs> it's got it's got rings that say how old you are under, <laughs> under the bottom of your foot but you could someone could tattoo that in my sleep I wouldn't wake up but the bottom Quarterly, of the foot I go to arch? a farrier who replaces horseshoes and they just carve that off yeah <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I go to a farrier <laughs> I never got my toenails ever. <laughs> just, when I can't put my shoes on anymore, I have my wife drive me to a farm and a truck. Have, have you ever had a uh, Have you ever had a pedicure? Either of you? No. Yeah. I'm gonna. I, I did the other day. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep doing it. It's real nice. I hated it. Really? Painful? I don't like my toenails. They're ugly. I would be embarrassed. Why didn't was, you like it? I was bored and I felt um, like. Like I was obligated to stay until the end of this thing, which I guess socially you are. And it was like, I can't, can I just not be in this chair anymore? This is Wait, cool. why did you sign up for it if you weren't into it? I thought it'd be cool. I don't know. Yeah, trying oh. something new. And yeah, like, trying mean, something new, and it wasn't for me. So what what made you get into it? The you thought the process would be cool, or the after effect? The, the process. I was expecting like a foot massage type experience. That's, and 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 all like the calluses. To your feet. Okay. What I what I was. I didn't, I'd never had one before. So I, I thought it would be like a foot massage parallel type thing. They'd like take all my calluses off. They, they do trim your toenails, but mine didn't need trimming. And, uh, um, I like my nails short. I don't bite them, but I keep, I keep a fingernail or toenail clamor, trimmer in my car. Um, there's one right fucking here uh, in my desk next to my bed. In, like in the, I have them everywhere. So anytime I want my oh and, and there's a file on my multi tool which is in my pocket all the time, I am probably four times a day just taking off the you know, half a millimeter for my. Th they're always I like them really trim and they're okay, always. Okay, I think I know why you didn't enjoy the pedicure now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but I, didn't, I didn't need my nails shortened. They're already at my favorite length. You got there and they short. were like. What are we gonna do with this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and and in my head, I'm like, I'm here for the sort of foot massage, callus maneuver like thing. Yeah. I thought they were gonna take like sand and, you know, like rub it or something. Like that wasn't really what I got. At no, all. it's a haircut <laughs> for your feet. That's the best way to put it. You know, they're there to yeah. to trim things up, to push cuticles back, and round the nails off in a very artistic kind of way. Like um. when I cut mine, I just try to get rid of all of that. Like white area <laughs> and like smooth things up but like they're like oh no we're gonna make this look like a thing they've got they've got plans oh yeah I no i gave them nothing to it. i was like a it's like i shaved my head and went for a haircut that's exactly like, what happened i thought i'd get a massage what <laughs> I bet you love a foot massage, though, and there are people who'll do that as well that's where i should have went yeah yeah are you self-conscious those... at all about it kyle like your I've got your nice feet, feet. No, nah, you I have nice feet. feet. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing like gross about my feet. I have anything. horrible feet. It looks like a 1930s Russian ballerina's feet, like oh, just like gnarled. And I've got an ingrown toes. toenail right now. 
Oh, they really? would love to. That's not going to be embarrassing. Big foot, big toe. <laughs> you take that to them, and they're like, ah, finally, we just dealt with this motherfucker. Came in. He must have filed him in the parking lot. <laughs> 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 At least this guy's got a problem. Yeah. I don't know what to do. So basically, I just pinched him for 30 minutes, charged him 80 bucks, and sent him on his way. But you, sir, have a problem. You know what? <laughs> I, I would not want them to mess with my ingrown toenail. I'll, I'll do that on my own. That's what they with do. A, with a what, knife in the bathroom what, and cutting it out. <laughs> you got, no, get your toe knife out of here and get a professional Asian farrier to work on your toe. <laughs> what if she was down there? What if like she's been doing it for like five minutes with her little? They have like intricate tools. I don't know if you've ever seen all the little cuticle no, shears and stuff. Um, there, she's down there with the tools, and you you know you're on your phone. You're gonna just ignore. Her. You look down, and she's gnawing on your big toenail. <laughs> <laughs> like, Don't flinch. <laughs> I would not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, would, I, would give that I would give them a bad review. <laughs> That's where I thought they were going to exfoliate the foot skin and stuff. Like it just wasn't what I thought it or was. Or the yeah. fish thing. Have you seen that? Oh, I've seen it on YouTube I, where they I've put seen your it on feet. the internet. Yeah. yeah. Have you done that, Kyle, where they put the fish in there and the fish eat your dead skin off your well, feet? That's absurd. <laughs> not, I don't have so Why much. Why is dead that absurd? Skin? Why is <laughs> I don't have so much dead skin on my feet that it could feed another animal. <laughs> it definitely could. Yeah, like your your foot yeah. is just covered in dead skin because it's always having to regrow. Probably I, again, I have nice feet. I use like a pumice stone and like like I have nice feet. Like like there there, there aren't dead. The fish would be like, oh, all done here. But so, so, yeah. someone got to him before we could. <laughs> my is your, is, I have a power tool to handle it. <laughs> like, I just yeah. <laughs> If I let it go too long, it smells like burnt flesh. <laughs> yeah, <I'd> like <laughs> yeah. Woody yeah. and I go in there; they're gonna have some overweight fish. After <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm saying my like I'm on top of my foot care. Like the the the, 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 the toenails are short, the calluses are trimmed. Like it's oh, oh I, 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 bet I'm a, I bet I'm a third I'm of an inch taller because of how much calluses <laughs> have on the bottom of my feet. I want to talk <laughs> about a little spoken of bit mm. of personal hygiene, boys. Something that we never really discuss. And I think that the average, not only man, but human being, just... The last a half an inch of your digestive tract? No, Woody, not assholes. <laughs> you always go to your clean asshole. We're impressed, okay? We know I have a not. high honeydew diet. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to slide out of there. <laughs> just like, he bragged about the cleanliness of his butthole more than any man I've ever met. Straight, great. gay, whatever. There are asshole models who are who don't talk about how clean their butthole are. It looks good. I'm I think Woody's out of a lineup. <laughs> Taylor talking. could, yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about the button, the belly button, the belly button. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, I might and be so guilty. I, I, I was in the fifty dollars Discord playing some Tarkov with the boys, and 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 I brought this up to them. I was like, nobody's got a clean belly button. I mean, I do, but y'all don't. And they were like, <laughs> they were like. I clean my belly button in the shower, Kyle. I get a washcloth, give it a little whatsy woos it, clean belly button. I'm like, Pfft. okay, yeah, that's how you clean your belly button. I, I was like, I you got, I was like, it's like a, almost a bottomless pit in there. He's like, no, you, I was like, I have, he's like, I have a shallow belly button, and I'm like. Dude, I've I've been so low fat that, there, that that you could just open the thing up and look, <laughs> turn it inside out, motherfucker. You do not have a shallow belly button. There's folds of skin in there that you have mm -hmm. to move aside. See, what I do is I get a mirror, a light, and some Q-tips, and after a warm bath, you can get down in there, and it is filthy if you don't do it regularly. And so the guy I was talking to was like, bullshit, I'm going to call you on this. And so he got a mirror and a light, and there's a Q-tip, and he starts like, and he goes, oh, Oh my God! No, <laughs> what is that? He had hard, like seeds of g stuff inside dirt. his belly button yeah. that was dirt, denim, and hair. That and it like mats together into these like rice-like kernels deep in the folds of your belly button. And every bath and shower you take, it gets a little moister, and more stuff sticks to it, and then it dries out. And that process is repeated daily. Until you get in there with a goddamn Q-tip, <laughs> you're making me worried. <laughs> I, oh, you guys, if you haven't, if you've never gone in there and gone fishing, it's filthy. There's I just used my there. my finger with soap on it. Oh I no, just no, no, went no. fishing and didn't find anything. But this is not the exploration that Kyle's talking about. He needs it post bath, all wet and loose. Oh, you up. Need, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to get with a Q-tip, by the way. He didn't say I finger. Q yeah, you're gonna need a mirror. You're either gonna need, gonna need to be like low fat content or a mirror if you need to. My, I, I can kind of or like, high fat yeah, content. Yeah. You can kind of aim it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going in. <laughs> 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 it's uh, 
But no, if you're gonna fuck a belly button, you should you should check your ladies out before you get in there and make sure. What are you making that face? Belly button fucking fuck is a, a be- real. Oh yeah, like like not. A, we've discussed this before. Larry, yeah, but that was a big woman. Yeah, it was a big fatty. Yeah, you, that's what I'm talking about. A big fat woman. Now, now if you if you think the average man has a filthy belly button, imagine a big fat woman. Imagine a fat person who has a canal of a belly button. The twists and turns that that cavernous yes. belly button. Right. Where Jeez, they get the like that level of orifices. fat. Where like where the they wear the pants reach over the fat for so long that like they get a second bottom torso. Yep. Second bottom torso. You like know they got a caboose. About. Like yeah. Like they got an extra like train on the car. Um, anyway, guys, I, I strongly recommend all of you out there listening who, who care, check out your belly buttons. They're filthy. <laughs> you're not, if you've never given her a deep clean, you just have no idea. And if you're like me, the idea of something really gross being in there is going to irk you out. You're going to want to look. And when you look, you're going to see it and you're going to be, you're going to say, thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Now I, I don't have a filthy belly button. I'll clean my belly button tomorrow after I shower and I'll send fit photos if it's gross. And I would like you guys to pick out the kernels of stuff you find in your belly button and put them on a white sheet of paper. And, and I'd, like a, <laughs> I'd like to see an image of that. Um, if I get it, anything, I'm going to be too embarrassed. Put a nickel <laughs> next to it. I'd like a, I'd like a, a reference for size. I have if a I news story. Something. What you got? Uh, I'll share it with you. So, of course, it happened in Florida. A woman with an open bottles of Jack Daniels whiskey in a bag was arrested for driving a golf cart on Florida's busiest interstate while drunk. The 58-year-old woman was arrested on Saturday night driving on I-95 for disorderly intoxication in a public place and resisting an officer without violence. And then apparently some truck driver on a semi was an absolute fucking snitch and made the golf cart pull over. And uh, um, now she's in trouble with the police. Nonviolent resisting arrest? What is that even? Are you guys pro yeah. or con on drunk golf cart riding? Depends. Well, well, it normally says I'm she pro. was in the middle, <laughs> the middle lane on the highway, so she was causing traffic problems, which is rude. Yeah, <laughs> they, well, well, and, behind her weren't, weren't laughing. They were late. The center lane of I ninety five. It does say that Brevard County, which you would assume. Um, I've been. I, I knew it was I-95 before you said it, and I was thinking, like, yeah, they should throw her under the jail for for slowing that traffic down. But there's a place right right down the road called Peachtree City in, in the suburbs of Atlanta where it's legal to drive your golf cart, like, everywhere. Like, it's mm. what people do instead of cars. The, the high school has golf cart parking. They're lined up out there, and I don't mean, like, six or seven, like, dozens of them, dozens oh, of right. students. Where my parents live, they have that. But imagine you know, how cool that would be. Like, yeah, every pile in the golf cart. You just, that would be sick. I all right, all right. So she's in the middle of I-95. Maybe that's too far. But I do like the idea of drunk people taking golf carts and lawnmowers and bicycles where they need to go to keep their really dangerous vehicles off the road. Oh, okay. Lawnmowers? Okay. Lawnmowers, yes. yeah. Yeah, riding lawnmowers? Absolutely. Yeah, that should I be a drunk they're... person's cart. Where do they go? Six miles an hour, five miles an hour. Right. Ah, yeah. Well, now now we're now we're causing traffic problems again. What what do they got a Dixie <laughs> chopper? Do? What do they got a Dixie chopper though? Yeah, now they're going like eleven. What's your problem? <laughs> <That's> a lot <laughs> of steel moving down the highway. We need a dedicated <laughs> alternative vehicle lane. <laughs> and, 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 and it can be like wacky racers. Anything goes in that lane. <laughs> <laughs> All the cyclists are there. pissed off with the Dixie yeah. Choppers. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm riding with Dick Dastardly in my <laughs> in the, like, fucking car. I just like the jet. Like, I know someone. <laughs> I was a teenager when it happened, but uh, they got a DUI for drinking and bicycling. And I was like, that's horseshit. Yeah, it is you, horseshit. You're on the bicycle so to avoid drinking and driving. And who are you really endangering other than yourself? No one. I, you should be allowed to endanger yourself. That's my right as a paramotorist. Yeah. If that guy wanted to get drunk and ride it down a dangerous trail, they'd let him do that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it, all, That's why I think you should be able to speed on a motorcycle. I'm risking my life and your property, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. the faster your vehicle goes, in the f- in the furtherance of avoiding traffic, you should be able to go faster. Bikes are <laughs> annoying for car drivers sometimes, so th- I I would prefer if they were just fucking flying, because it'd be mm. like, oh, another bike, and he's gone, like he's he's your problem for half a second, and then he's, <laughs> Is this he's motorcycles a motorcycles you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I that's why. I, so when I'm on the um the car side of that equation, 
if they have a really loud pipe, it scares me. And I'm motorcycle friendly, right? But it's like, oh, Jesus, like that. Mm -hmm. I found that to be an uncomfortable experience. Yeah. But if they have a quiet pipe, I don't really even notice until they're gone. It's like, oh, well, there they were. Mm -hmm. And it's fine. So it has been terrifying to me before. I, I'll never forget when I was like 19, driving back mm -hmm. out to Atlanta at two, three in the morning, middle of the night, and being so tired, just trying to get to my apartment to go to sleep for work in the morning. And a bike passed me, and it was like back to the future. <laughs> you know, when, when the car goes, pew, and it's just, it's just like, what just happened? It was it was like when the when in Star Trek when they go into warp, <laughs> and there's just that, that that like the light is stretched out behind where he used to be. So it was, was it so bad. the thing that startled you? I, I think I'm picking up noise. startling, uh, and that I ask. never knew he was coming until he was long gone. Like I was out of the equation. He had yeah. factored me out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the way noise works, like you don't get that much notice of it. That's why loud pipes don't save lives. Shut up, people with your loud pipes save lives things. No, they don't. Loud pipes annoy people. I think is that what they say? I, that's, they do say that's so bullshit. They do say that. Um, I think that in certain scenarios where we're like in town, like no, mm -hmm. if you got your music okay. on and we're like four lanes wide at a at, at like in like downtown Atlanta or whatever, where there's red lights and everywhere in traffic and there's assholes on their electric scooter sipping everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then it, it's just nice to be, hear him over there. Go, love, 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 love. Like, all right, you're there. All right. Okay, I, won't fucking, okay. I won't turn right from the middle lane and kill you. I know you're there. <laughs> I'm told that, um, the statistics say loud pipes don't save lives. Interesting. But, uh, you know, watching a motorcycle podcast, I don't know how good my source is. Yeah. And I don't know how they like are able to count how many times somebody was like, Oh, I hear a motorcycle. I'll be more careful. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's because they're making it up because they like motorcycles. Mm. Right. I, well, actually, this thing that up, we really enjoy is safe. I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. I, what they're saying is loud pipes don't save lives. This is what the podcast says. So you would think they'd be inclined to be like, Oh, this noisemaker we have is safe. But instead, they're like, dude, stop fucking up your bikes. You're just annoying people. They're almost taking the car side. I, I wonder if, like, in the biking community, that gets them a lot of hate from their listeners where they're like, fuck you, Kari. Like, <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at you, you four wheeled fuck. Like, they just, like, <laughs> they just hate Cager. Them. They call them cagers. A cager? Dude, yeah. that sounds like a way cooler team to be on. Right. Team cager all from. day. Head-to-head <laughs> -head matchup, Cager versus Bikes. Team Cager wins that 10 out of 10. That is As long as I'm talking about you true. have to stay in the vehicle. If you, you know, <laughs> there's some tough my guys that ride bikes. My bike's not loud, but there's been plenty of times where I'm in a, a scenario like I'm talking about where I'm just I'm like, does he know I'm fucking here? Do, mm. do you know I'm here? And I won't, I'm like, I don't think he knows I'm here. And I was like, rrr, rrr. I'm like, <laughs> Just so you know, I'm over here. <laughs> Everybody should know. <laughs> but I don't want to be like like the the faggot episode from South Park, where it's like rubber, rubber, yeah. rubber, 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 rubber. Like, mm -hmm. Everybody thinks I'm so cool. <laughs> That's the last thing on my mind. But but what I am thinking is like this thing weighs like 500 fucking pounds, and it would fit in a closet. Maybe that truck doesn't know I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a, that's a good way to look at it. That's the safe way. Yeah. Have you been so, riding much lately, Kyle? A oh, uh, little bit around here. There's there's a construction kind of near me, so that's been annoying. But on off days, I'm not judging. I haven't been writing at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course not. Fair um, enough. You have a good excuse. But 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 uh but no, I, I've um I've been riding a friend's bike some. I like it. Um, oh, and is uh, it Harley? Yeah. Um, Does it have the the new motor, the Revolution? Yeah, I think so. I think it's the one that we've like shared that link a few times. Um, uh, I like that that bike. That, Do you like I, it? I think I like mine more, but I just like okay. the style of mine more. But um, mm -hmm. it's got more bells and whistles for sure. It's like a fourteen or fifteen thousand dollar bike. Um, so yeah, just a little bit, but not a ton. Uh, I'm. We were talking about before the show that fucking air conditioner I bought has been delayed again. It's doing that thing that Amazon does. Like if it's delayed for ten more days, you could cancel. And I'm like, oh my god, is that is that what we're really talking about now? Because yeah. it's been like a month. And uh, mm. so I'm hoping it was supposed to show up today, maybe tomorrow. I've been trying to install the stupid mini that slit sucks. in my garage for a while. Uh, it's it's your garage gym to tell the rest. My, of the story. my yeah. garage gym, yes. Yeah. Which I'm looking forward to uh, continuing. I, I, also, another thing, I'm, I'm also on the hunt for. Uh, I got a couple of things that I'm considering getting. So I really want a new gaming PC because um, mm. GPU prices are, are are going down, which means now you can get a gaming PC for only 
four thousand dollars. I mean, whoa, geez, whoa, that's, that's four grand, like nothing, right? It's like Jesus. The, the turkey sandwich, Give and one. it'll be here in two weeks. So, <laughs> so you what, look if they were like four grand, it'll be there tomorrow. That's the kind of impulse purchase I can bite. All right, you <laughs> tell me two weeks from now, I get my four thousand dollar purchase. <laughs> I'd rather sit here for four weeks and think about it some more. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, it's not going to happen. Would it be for Tarkov? Yeah, I really want smooth frames. I want to know what that game looks like because I played offline um, mm-hmm. on one of the smaller maps, and I was like, "How many frames am I getting? Two hundred. I'm getting two hundred frames on like labs offline." And I'm like, "Oh my god, this is what it looks like to have maximum frames because everything is so smooth all of a mm. sudden." And and and, and like. I, I just started thinking, man, if if every map was like this, that would be so tremendous. It'd be a different game. It'd be a, it'd be a way more fun experience, and not just for Tarka, but for every game that my system can only hack out ninety frames or something. Because I uh, my monitor is fourteen forty p, so it's you know it's a little more taxing on on every game. Um, that and um, what was the other thing that I want? Oh, that fucking projector. Uh, mm. I so we really like ours. You might. I'm I'm at a stage now where I'm like you might just copy our buying decision. Cause... Yeah, um, because like what I looked at the other day um, was an eighty dollar 1080p projector that you mm. just like sit back on the top of the uh, the 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 bed, and I was mm-hmm. like, oh my god! Like first of all, this isn't passable. Like we're not. I'm not happy with this. But for eighty dollars, I'm so blown away at what eighty dollars can deliver that uh I, I i'm i'm like wow what is what is a three thousand dollar system like or four thousand or whatever what are we looking at here what's the damage on this bad boy two grand two grand okay and i yeah dude i i was like i think i paid 2500 i'm looking at it on camel 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 i did uh if yeah. i use my amazon card i save 167 dollars you familiar with camel, oh, no, no, camel? camel? Seven more. There you can, go. Can you open this link? This is for our viewers. This, I, this isn't paid or anything. But if you don't know Camel, 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 they show historical product pricing for stuff. Mm. And I was like, man, I could have sworn I paid twenty five hundred. Would you please scroll down and show the it chart, did. Zach? So I must have bought Zach. Can you hover around twenty five hundred? Like right there in that sort of flat, not long ago. I think. It, yeah, yeah, there. And it just dropped to two grand kind of recently. So. Oh well, but uh, perhaps I they use came this up with all a new the model. T- maybe, maybe it looks like it's been trending down for a little while now. Um, but I use this all the time. Every time I see something on Amazon that's like forty percent off, I'm like, "Yeah, was it ever that other price?" So mm-hmm. I come here and I look, and it tells me whether it's a genuine sale or not. This is a great site. I've never heard of this. Yes, oh. thank you for that because because this is what I'm. Uh, I usually end up on. Something like, like like Coop with Garage Gym reviews. He has his own site that might be the best on the internet at like scoping mm. out like, okay, you want a treadmill? Well, we bought the the six best in the world and we beat the shit out of them. Here's what we found out. It's like, oh my god, thank you so much. But this seems uh, this seems really good. Uh, I'll, I'm yeah. not going to save money with this. It's got a whole section of the best deals. I don't need any of these things, but the deals are so good. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't looked at it for. I only use it the way that I showed you guys, where it, basically I, I like distrust a sale. That's the principal time I mm-hmm. use it. So I'm like, ah, what is the actual historical price on this thing? Mm-hmm. Sometimes the sale's real, and oh, you can go. Not. Yeah, you can go to um, like, like recent drops, like top Amazon price drops. Oh yeah. Oh, thank you for this website. Oh, Top price drops, huh? Yeah, I'm gonna buy some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like making money. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'm, I, I might get that projector. So like, you, Dude, I think I'm you have so said it. Fucking gay. I'm like, this is a <laughs> back. What is it called? Gregory Mountain Products Women's. <laughs> Fuck. What Ooh, like- from the Ass Pirate Collection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I found a women's backpack that looks really cool. Anyway, I interrupted. Oh, it's the Femboy Fairy Satchel. <laughs> Brand new for 2022. It comes in amethyst and pink pussy boy. <laughs> Those are the colors. Uh, uh, dude, uh, that, is a, that is a real pretty backpack, Woody. You shouldn't be jealous. <laughs> You shouldn't be uh, embarrassed to, to to wear it. Let's see all the colors over there. It, it, it's not even that gay. I wouldn't it's know that it is at all. Look at that. Look, at I all. mean, look, look. It's, it's a woman. Yeah, yeah. I look when I look at that, I think that woman's not gay. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if anything, she probably likes to sleep with other women. 
Yeah, she's not gay. Nothing gay about this. Like, she's got her camel back somehow integrated. It's nice. It's a solid backpack. But yeah. why is it a woman's it's backpack? It's a good feature. I wonder, if it, I wonder if women have different backpacks. Oh, there's a needs. tampon holder. Look at that, Woody. <laughs> you could put perfect pin for flare. my chapstick. Oh. You put pin flares in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, you. I, yeah. I think it's I, – I wouldn't be worried about that at all. Like it, Like – I'm trying to think, like, if there's like a girl's holster that I ever would have been like, oh no, oh is that a girl's holster? I never would have given a shit. I don't think. I, I don't think I would have rocked a. No, I had pink holsters. What am I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm remembering now, like I had a whole getup with like matching pink holsters <laughs> that I wore. I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't give a shit. I, I, because with stuff like that, like, I don't know. It's not fucking high school anymore. I don't care what, what you think about my b- backpack. I guess. I can't um, tell if it's like a good idea to have a gendered backpack or if it's pointlessly gendered. Like I looked at sleeping bags and I wasn't drawn to them in this rare instance. I was just like, why are there women sleeping bags? Like, do they need a different like warmth tube than dudes do? And uh, the salesman kind of laid it out there. I can't re- remember it verbatim, but basically like, yeah, the women are a little wider here and they tend to get colder in their feet than guys do. So they stay warmer there. And uh, I would want one that had some sort mm-hmm. of, scent blocking thing so the so the cougars and 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 lions couldn't smell the period blood i was thinking good farts. point yeah <laughs> you're yeah. right a, a cougar protective bag you seal yeah. the women in you zip her right zip. up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you gotta lock that freshness in it, look, look, i want a, i want a sleeping bag made by saran wrap <laughs> but don't worry there's a window where you can see her face <laughs> like with the... yeah you lock that freshness <laughs> in yeah I mean, most of those like like gendered products that don't actually have a difference. It's just because of a a preference on some female consumers to have a pink item. Oh, I have a thing for you, Taylor, because you're you might be a subject matter expert. You've heard of the pink tax, I'm sure, right? Where women like mm-hmm. pointlessly pay more for certain products. Some of the examples they mention are total bullshit, though. Um, I, a really good one for me is haircuts. Right, mm-hmm. cutting my hair versus cutting. A, a typical woman, especially my age, where there's like dye and stuff involved, um, dude. Of course, your haircut costs six times as much. Mm-hmm. Like you, you've got a way more complicated hairstyle. You don't accept just whatever the fuck you get and walk out with a tip, you know, like <laughs> I do. Uh, and, and there's dye involved and all sorts of complications and layers and what have you. So that is not a suitable argument for the pink tax. You're getting a different product. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but sometimes maybe it's not the same. Pro- or it is the same product and I, I thought maybe you'd know something uh i mean like, there's so many products like some of them actually a lot of them are actually different like uh the the razor one i remember that was used as an example where the back in the day they were like well the men's razor is this and the women's razor is this and they both have three blades and that ended up being like a bullshit thing where it's like no the woman's razor because it's going over more contours and curves like it has extra of like the the pad of softness and it has more of a movement angle than the men's because the men's just is it's for your fucking face generally it's much more straightforward so there's examples like that and but there's also like examples where it's like yeah this is more because this company realized that they that there was a market for a pink version of this that yeah. there was an exact copy of the male sleeping bag but the female sleeping bag and it's pink because we discerned from market testing that women like pink now it's more, more expensive because our line was running all these and now the only additional thing is we have to take extra time off the line to run these specific female ones and because that's taken away from our core business we're going to charge a surplus there whatever it is and they know people will pay it so that's how a lot of it is is just well why why is this pink tissue box more expensive than the regular puffs it's like well you don't have to buy it it's the same shit like it's an aesthetic choice you're making for a lot of those like uh, user apparent uh, Good yeah, why house. wasn't that obvious to me? There's a really clear answer. Just buy the boy one. Yeah, yeah. And like that's the example you would say. You'd go, Oh, well, if it's the same thing, buy the boy one. Well, I can't buy the men's razors because yes, because they're not the same. Because it is like the women's razors are a little better. And and uh, maybe that's changed. I just remember remembering this example from a while ago. Hmm. But yeah, just, if it bothers you, just I would say the vast majority of the pink tax stuff is just an over is a difference in quantity, like total numbers of items as far as uh, uh, any kind of toiletries goes. Like for a man, most guys are deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, maybe some cologne, you know, shampoo, like whereas women have entire regiments, like th- multiple face creams. Each one's two ounces and each one's thirty dollars, like you stuff have, like uh, that. You guys wear cologne? Yeah. What kind of cologne? 
Dolce and Gabbana light blue. How much is a bottle of it? No idea. I had a, I had my grandma bought me a bottle in 2010, and that lasted until Zach, last love, year. And I'd then my the yeah, my wife got me some more. Can you say it's lower? Dolce and Gabbana light blue. Hmm. It smells really good. You, it, it's a very very. Do you good use color. it every day or when you want to no. smell good? If I'm like going out to dinner with my wife somewhere, like I'll put that on. But no, not every day, not by a long shot. Hmm. I've got um. <laughs> so I've got yeah, this. that's what I have. I've got this transgender oh, wow. uh, cologne I wear. Really? What does that mean? Yeah, yeah it means it's for men and women. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's just a general smell good liquid for for all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's called. Uh, I had to look it up. I think it's called uh, Killian Angels Share. I think <laughs> something like that. Killian or at Angel's least that's Share. what the bottle looks like. Or maybe it might be. Let's see. What's this one? Did you guys get a shipment of cologne to your house? recently yes intelligent or something maybe does yeah. that sound right i have no idea why that showed up not only did i not get that probably based on the fact that i've moved yeah mm. well i'll leave it at that that's how i didn't get that, <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> not only you know what hold <laughs> i uh i had something i wanted so I don't know if you that. guys saw in our our group chat um i sent that meme about dph diphenhydramine the the yes. people who get fucked up on yeah, Benadryl. Yeah. <clears throat> robo and tripping. Ro no, no, robo tripping is different. So I learned that from the Benadryl one. So the DPH Educate. is the Benadryl one. DXM is robo trip. And oh, I, I don't know the relationship between those two societies of, of upstanding individuals, but I was on the DPH one, which is people, diphenhydrine, people who abuse Benadryl. And we've said before that. If you go on YouTube and you look up DPH trip story, it is nothing but people like telling you don't do this. It is a nightmare. It's a waking nightmare. Uh, I, I it is horrible. I do not recommend this drug to people. And somehow they get like addicted to it and they do it all the time. It destroys mm. your brain. It like what it does to your liver and your kidneys makes alcohol look like a health potion. Apparently, like it's that fucking devastating to your body and your brain. You become demented. You get. Uh, you be, you get demented. psychotic. You, you get demented. You you adapt dementia over time, and you get fucking brain worms, and you you fall Don't apart. Don't you so see I spiders found, and stuff? You see spiders. So I found a story on there, and so what they say is that 700 milligrams of Benadryl is like a threshold of like you might you know you're almost in Hat Man territory where you oh. might see a shadowy man who wears a hat. They all consistently say the same fantasy or the same visions about this hat man and this guy this is a story this guy took four thousand milligrams four grams of benadryl and he's telling this story and so i'm going to read this he says thank you stats age 20 this is from a couple of years ago stats age 28 name steven occupation terra steel factory and recycle 145 pounds 510 education high school diploma favorite movie cars 2 uh <laughs> I'm 28, I work at a steel mill, and I have no college degree. You'll have to take my word for this because I don't post any personal information of myself. You just did. Uh, anyway, <laughs> here's what you came for, how the trip went. 11 a.m.-ish. Took 80 pink caps. Throat got tired of swallowing so many, so I almost puked. 11.30 a.m. Extreme fatigue set in. Believe me when I say it was physically difficult to move. Not the, oh, ha, ha, I'm high, so couch locked, hee hee, but literal near paralysis. I mm. could not walk. I put paste all over my mouth and throat, so dry mouth was intense, but no excruciating. That doesn't make sense. Okay, Noon. so he, what he, did, he yes. prepared for the dry mouth that was to come with some sort of paste. Yeah, some, some kind of paste. Thank you. At noon, at this point, everything went to shit. I was completely paralyzed, so I just gave up on trying to move. Everything was dreamlike, jumpy and flickery. On LSD, everything is relaxed and flowing. On DPH, everything is skittery like a low FPS video game. Oh, My bedroom shit. door swung open and suddenly a black figure dashes in. It teleports in front of me and stares at me. Even though it's a silhouette with no eyes or face, I can feel a stare. There's no spiders, but thousands of black beads begin spinning around my wall. I can see a man in the hat. Fully shadowed about 12 feet away. Six minutes in, I'm not sure if this is reality or if I'm dreaming. I can't even check to see if my eyes are open or if they're closed. Can't move. Just silently scream in horror as the entire room begins spinning 900 miles an hour with shadow people dancing about me. 
1225 question mark the spinning of the room keeps getting faster and faster until i can feel myself vomiting but the pain and sensation feels oddly distant i can't describe it it feels like someone else is vomiting through my body it is horrific nonetheless a shadow person then begins to choke me and i feel like i'm being strangled for a good hour before everything goes black everything begins to fade to white i realize i can move and walk around and that i'm not high anymore looking back this was obviously a lucid dream while i was comatose I can't really compare it to anything. Look up the SpongeBob episode SB29 when he's in a big white room and there's nothing that exists uh, for the quickest uh, comparison. I was in a completely white space and the whole time it was just ambient random noises like whizzes, buzzes, growls, screams, voices whispering, lion roars, jet engines, streaking lights. The sensations felt like sandpaper was being rubbed on me and I felt freezing. I can't put into words, but I felt like this was the longest part of the trip. My sense of time was so distorted, I believe I was in the white space longer than I've been alive. What was less than one day, legitimately, wholly, completely fucking felt like six years minimum. I have six to ten years worth of auditory and visual memories from that day. Six oh to ten God. years of my life were forgotten and replaced with those random auditory noises, streaks, and sounds. Between 12.40 and 5 p.m., <laughs> I don't know when the white space ended, but now I'm in the middle of the road. In it's reality, not some surreal dream. I see a shadow man about 300 feet away, so I start running. I chase and chase, but he never gets closer. Eventually, I stop out of tiredness, and suddenly the sky opens up, and a gigantic black mouth swallows me whole. What happened next is I'm on Reddit, looking at Reddit, no joke. I, can, I can't see, I can see my own body. Or no, I can't see my own body. I just see a giant page that displays Reddit. I scroll through all the pages and all the titles and comments make no sense. Like Trump reveals the reveals the reveals the truth about reveals the reveal. Like <laughs> eventually mm. the screen fades and I can vomit again. I can feel it, but don't see it. Between five and eight, maybe pure blackness and pain. All I can say, every part of my body hurts more than it ever has. The phrase splitting ed headache can't describe it. It feels like there's a hot coal in my ears. I still can't move. I'm knocked out. The hallucinations are just streaks and flickers now. 8 to 12 p.m. the next day. Lots of buzzing noises. Felt like I was covered by a swarm of bees that were constantly vibrating. Some point during this stage, I woke up in a puddle of sweat and pink vomit. I tried to get up, but everything exploded into beads and swirls, and I felt a stabbing pain in my back. Oh. After about one hour of chilling, I managed to find my phone and call 911 saying I OD'd. 2, 2 a.m. At the hospital, they pumped my stomach and narcan me, even though I don't do heroin. Woke up later... Not too big an ordeal, but I managed to spin it off as an accident and avoided the mental hospital. I mm. go for dialysis weekly now. Aftermath, I quit my job for this trip and I'm still unemployed. No, one, no insurance, but I got Obamacare, which covered part of it. I am on dialysis and have permanent liver damage, permanent brain damage, and cognitive reduction, reduced brain size, irregular heartbeat. Oh for the rest gosh. of his life, because he took 4,000 milligrams of Benadryl. For not even a good high. I can't. <laughs> that, I can't that, 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 all right. No, not just for not even a good high. For the most <laughs> terrifying experience that, that, that I can imagine. That, like, like that sounded That sounded so horrific. And the fact that he has to deal with, I thought it was going to have a happy ending. Like, no, I thought he was going to be like, I thought it was going to be like, and never again. And that's <laughs> why, kids, now, I'll never do that again. But it's like, now he's retarded. Now, yeah. He, now, that now. Sucks. I mean, he probably should do it again. Maybe it'll like send him back the other way. He's it's more likely to do it now. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> It's like eating your way to the other side, like uh, John Maybe Bennett used to say. He, he should have done five thousand milligrams. That's the correct. Dose. Four thousand. The problem like, is he didn't it. commit. If you're gonna yeah. do Benadryl, do it. Yeah, do it. Do a solid but ten grams. I've like every so often now, I just get a thought and I go to the DPH subreddit and I try and figure out what's driving these people, and you can't get an answer. They'll be so like, what sad. made you like people will ask, like, what made you do this in the first place? And they'll be like, don't don't even consider <laughs> it. And it's like, but and apparently, like from, from realistic, from what I can tell, it's mostly like super young kids, like teenagers who want to get fucked up on something and don't realize how much damage they're doing with these. So the, the problem things. is pot's illegal. They just the legalize weed, problem. guys. Jesus. And a big and a bigger problem is we make every drug out to be the, the equally awful for us. Mm -hmm. No one stops and says, look, marijuana will make you lazy and you might eat too many Doritos and miss class. It could ruin years of your life even. <laughs> <laughs> but but it, 
that instead of saying that, they're like, it's the devil. So is robo tripping and heroin and prostitution. Don't sell yourself to old men. It's mm. all the same. It's like, <laughs> dude, like do all the drugs you want, but please never robo trip. You'll see the hat man. Yeah. It'll ruin your well, body. Ro- you know what dialysis yeah. is? <laughs> you won't like So do it. not, don't accidentally take a hundred Benadryl. No one accidentally take. Like Don't accidentally days. buy five bottles of Benadryl and eat all of them. Did you say Dude, it was eighty caps. Eighty caps. That's eighty. So, so four thousand milligrams. His throat was tired of swallowing. Now, I, I mean, it sounds like he would be a great tester for lock and load. Hmm. He's able he to take any a, amount of pills. As a swallow yeah. master, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, this was two years ago. This guy could be could be dead if he if he tangoed with the Benadryl devil again. I just the memes in this subreddit, like usually memes about things you don't understand at all aren't that funny because you don't understand the reference point. But yeah. like the way they do like the virgin and the chad, where it'll be like the virgin LSD user, like soy facing, like seeing pleasant things, and then the chad delirium user seeing horrifying static hat men and images and spy like it seems like the like and something I, I started like re- it's called the delirium. Like the, that's the class of drug it's in, a deliriant hallucinogen. And so apparently, uh, I've never done LSD, but the the way it was explained online is they're like, so LSD, it works you into it. You kind of see, you feel a gradualness of the increase on the up, and there's an ability for you to ascertain, like, I know that's not real. Like I know I'm seeing this, but I know this isn't fully real, at least most of the time, apparently. Whereas with uh, delirients like diphenhydramine, they say that the hallucinations are unbelievably fast, sudden, and concrete. So you won't be able to tell if that thing that just appeared is real or not. Because in addition to you hallucinating, you're delirious. You're not registering things. Like you're not you're not understanding. These people, they'll say they will smoke phantom cigarettes. They'll be smoking a cigarette. They'll be like, Yeah, I was smoking a cigarette for like 20 minutes, looked down, nothing was in my hand. I had a, I was, one guy said I played Clash of Clans on my phone for an hour. And then I looked up, looked back down. My phone was not there. It was upstairs. Like, and so they're just totally whole Dude, cloth inventing reality. They'll, they're like, like and, oh. and you'll, you'll hear voices of your loved ones, but they're not being encouraging. They're being horrible to you, like <laughs> ripping on you, insulting you. And after that, you can look oh, forward to seeing that. Better. It's, it's, no, at no part are they like, and then just like the end of a warhead, the payoff. Like, no. <laughs> and then the payoff is you can't remember how little fun you had because you have dementia. Like, apparently. It sound, uh, that, that sounds dreadful. The worst right. drug. Just you take it for allergies. You sent those memes of, like, I don't know, spiders crawling on people and really <laughs> un, un, like uncomfortable to look at things. And I was just like, what the fuck is he sending me? It's like two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> All these spiders crawling on people's hands and shit. And it was like a starter pack for like robo tripping or, or, or whatever yeah, this is called. DPH. Again, like yeah. DPHing. What, what, what are they? <laughs> Remember in South Park when they were cheesing, they were, they were, they were spraying oh, yeah. the, the cat piss and going, going to that other realm. Dude, that drug sounds so gross. Would you rather, would you oh. rather do this or crocodile? Uh, you can do crocodile once and be okay, probably, right? Mm, can you do know. this once and be okay? Uh, I mean, it seems like if you do it big, you're fucked the first time. I'm gonna I'm, no, yeah. don't do it big. Do like 700 and let you know. Leave with that. <laughs> it's still don't so much. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's probably guy, too much. Well, that guy did 4,000. Yeah, yeah. And he's 145 pounds. That that to me stuck right out at the beginning. I was like, oh, oh you're probably right. A 145 pound man took four grams. Okay, bro. Like like. That made no sense to me to like do the super Taylor. Super are you reading that? <laughs> I, that I wanted your reading. initial reaction. Oh, let me dig a look. Oh, wait, where? Uh, I oh, the, I the, the, link. the Japanese city. Yes, yes, yes. Can you tell the audience Japanese about this city story? Alarmed by biting, clawing, attacking monkeys. And the photo is a monkey sinisterly sitting outside of a window <laughs> waiting for the, <laughs> for the poor Japanese people to go. Read their attack style so, and the defense strategy. When, when uh, you get I guess read it all. I thought it was people in a southwestern Japanese city have come under attack from monkeys that are trying to snatch babies, 
biting and clawing at flesh and sneaking into nursery schools. The attacks on 58 people since July 8th are getting so bad, Yamaguchi City Hall hired a special unit to hunt the animals with tranquilizer guns. The monkeys Pause are not in... Yeah. They're, they're stealing babies and sneaking into nurseries. The <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I mean, at some point, Japan's got to get their fucking shit together. They are monkeys. Like, put, put a guard up. Of the apes. All right. Anyway. <laughs> the, uh, the monkeys aren't interested in food, so traps haven't worked. They have targeted mostly children and the elderly. They are so smart, they tend to sneak up behind and attack you, often grabbing at your legs, city official Masato Saito said Wednesday. When confronted by a monkey, the instructions are, do not look them in the eye. Make yourself look as big as possible, such by spreading open your coat. Then back away as quietly as possible without making sudden moves. A woman was assaulted by a monkey while hanging laundry on her veranda. The victim showed bandaged toes. They were taken aback and frightened by how big and fat the monkeys were. The monkeys terrorizing the community are Japanese macaque. They kind of, the kind often pictured peacefully bathing in hot springs. Oh, no. One one male monkey measuring 1.6 feet in height and weighing 15 pounds was caught Tuesday by the team with a tranquilizer gun. It was judged by various evidence to be one of the attacking monkeys and put to death. But- <laughs> <laughs> God, I hope they used like a they, they walked him up like a tiny gallows and hung him. No, they they no, gave no, no, the no. monkey. Katana. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I was gonna say they gave the monkey a little knife and they're like, you can end this on your own. And then the monkey. <laughs> uh, although Japan is in, or I'm sorry. But more attacks were reported after the capture. No one has been seriously injured so far, but all have been advised to get hospital treatment. Ambulances were called in some cases. Although Japan is industrialized and urban, a fair portion of land in the archipelago is mountains and forests. Rare attacks on people by a bear, boars, or other wildlife have, have occurred, but generally not by monkeys. I would like to, No one seems to know why these attacks have occurred. I would like to offer my services to the people of Japan, mm. if you'll have me. Yeah, I'd like to help too. Uh, uh, free I, Japan I, trip. Uh, not even free I, Japan I, trip. I, I will pay my own hey. way. Um, I, 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 if you've ever seen Tremors 2, I'm looking for a scenario <laughs> like that. Okay. <laughs> Remember how the Mexican government hooked Bert up with all that cool shit? Yeah. Let him go out there to fight the graboids. I want a similar scenario, but for monkeys. Now, this is going to be easy to fight these monkeys. We're going to 12 gate shotgun and we're just going to blast monkeys all day. Like, mm. like, I would love to spend the rest of the year in Japan shooting monkeys with a shotgun. Like, like, like I'll, I'll mm. pay my own way. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I mean in Japan, just let you me in and give me a gun. Maybe one of those things that it's similar to that Shinzo Abo, like 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 electric can. Oh. I could use one of those. Yeah, like a pulse rifle. Ooh, I mean, that, well, didn't he? Didn't he kill him with a pulse rifle or something? Well, first of all, there's no fucking such thing as a gun. A pul- what are you ma- a pulse rifle? What it looks like thirty two from uh, the. Fucking color saturated in modern warfare. Well, I, 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 now I want to talk Black about your, your seeming one. belief in pulse rifles. Well, Black what's wrong one, what is the gun with the three shot burst? G11. Yeah. that That's a gun. I don't know. Uh, some people rifle. call it a pulse rifle. That's no what one is. calls it that. <laughs> no, no, Taylor and I do. They said First that. of all, the, G, the, the G11 is. Yeah, it's not even a real term. So when they say that we need to have a pulse rifle ban, that doesn't even mean anything. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, I'd like to fight those monkeys, and uh, if you if you'd allow me to come fight them, and I'm talking to you know the people of Japan in general, I'm sure that they could get together and, and get me over there to fight their monkeys. Doesn't it they, shoot special bullets, the G11, where they like electrify the ones at the tip? Yeah. It's so almost- the way a G11 works is you have these rods of uh, ammunition that go in the end, and uh, you basically have like projectile fuel, projectile fuel stacked in a long cylinder. And using electrical impulses, you ignite the fuel in the correct order that you have this incredible rate of fire because of bullets. Nothing is cycling. There's no moving parts. Mm-hmm. It's You're just basically lighting off these things and sending them. Like a bunch of firecrackers in a tube, and they can quickly light the front one, the second one, the third, the fourth. That's my understanding uh, of how it worked. Um, but I also heard that the ammunition, cil- these cylinders of ammunition, if you will, were very fragile. So like it break apart because you know you got a bullet and then powder a bullet and then powder and after it fires there doesn't need to be anything left in the barrel of this gun so it all has to go away but it has to be made out of something sturdy enough to so presumably so shove your... down the gun that I in may a have battle my term like... wrong. a squib load is when it doesn't go off and just sort of stays in the barrel maybe 
that's not a term I grew up knowing, but my understanding okay. of it or like what I think of is like a bullet is stuck in the in the barrel or, or something like that, an under uh, charged round, but it's not a term yeah. that I grew up knowing. Have you, you've heard that term before? I've heard it before. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So it sounds like what you're describing with the G11 is it's prone to what I think a squib load is, where it just doesn't get all the way out. I don't know if it's a real gun that like went into long term production and was tested or anything. It seems like more of a prototype uh, type thing. But that wouldn't count as a pulse rifle. No, it wouldn't count as a fucking pulse rifle. Pulse rifle is an energy weapon. Oh, I did from look it up to see fiction. if it was. I did look it up to see if it was real, and I got excited to click a link, but it was from the Alien vs Predator wiki. Of course, so it was not it real. Of course not. No, of course not. Uh, look up the smart gun from Alien. They made that out of like. A, they should convince thing. the Democrats to ban pulse rifles and focus all their energy on imaginary guns. Are you no. aware of the M11 <laughs> Cyberdyne <laughs> systems? Cyberdyne <laughs> systems. <laughs> T800. Now, what this is, folks, is an autonomous human killing machine. Okay, <laughs> this is a, it's made to look like a man, but it's clearly a robot. Yet now, we have we've applied the texture of an Arnold Schwarzenegger to it just for aesthetic. Purposes purposes <laughs> they're making the like like ban arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> style terminators instead of assault weapons so you get them to follow that solid one. idea we, we I don't, don't want to suggest that though because then as soon as paul Fri pulse rifles are real we're not going to get to enjoy them we'll just name them something well else. you know yeah light light beam well we'll, we'll workshop it yeah, that's <laughs> did you use that term at work <laughs> workshop it workshop yeah it. uh no it's one of those business terms that like you know, like business bingo and meetings and stuff. Someone's sure, like, sure. we're going to circle back to this. Let's table that. Let's workshop that. Like things like that. I'm always like, oh, business bingo. Like you said, a business. You said I business. say circle back in my regular life because it will have it will be on topic A and we'll get like halfway through it and then they'll come up with topic B and it's like, oh, I like where your head is. We'll circle back to that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing I, uh, wrong. But, but anyway, I like fuck <laughs> those goddamn monkeys. I don't. Whenever I see like <laughs> rude, like 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 an animal inconveniencing human beings Talking in their territory, where AIDS came from. Kyle, don't do that. Not well, shoot, ones. shoot the monkeys then. I also, <laughs> I, I I hate whenever I see those uppity swans and geese in our parks, like 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 industrial parks and stuff, honking at people, That's, biting them. Yes, I would kill the, if that ever happens to me. I swear to God, I've already mentally prepared for the fight. All right, I've played it out a hundred times in my mind. I would be love no to kill a swan. I wish a motherfucker would come at yes. me, swan. Like, come at. I walk around lakes like fucking, I, like like a like a like I own the place. Trip. Right, like I don't, I I'm, I'll at, stomp your nest out. This is my territory. Bucks the water is two. Woody's land. All waterfowl. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no. You know what? I, ducks are polite. I don't see a reason to lump them in. When you're right. walking down a path, ducks move. Ducks are a polite bird. I have no qualm with ducks, and they're no, tasty. Swans, swans them. less so. But geese are the it's principal bad fact. ones. I, yeah. I hear you. I, I'm calling all of these things innocent until proven guilty. Come at me. You come at me and, and fuck around and find out, geese. Yeah. I mean, not, geese not now, though. are never he's little, polite. He's oh, get, he's got the gippy leg. He's going to. I hear you. you. I still think I'm I'm, I'm pro geese. I, I, I've been so hungry for this. Here's the problem, though, Woody. If they mm. ever get you down. <laughs> <laughs> what, they, they're gonna they're gonna dumb at me with their like, like it'll be they're just on woody doing this oh grab him they're all over his face just pinching him <laughs> and he, and he, it's like that scene in they don't even have teeth they just remember how like my grandmother yeah, just, did just, just me little remember in hellraiser when they pull somebody apart what he's like ah! mm. <laughs> dude i feel like if you just got one's neck in your hand you wouldn't have to swing you could just crush it you could just crush oh, it if you wanted just and, grip and strength it yeah, yeah just yeah. grip strength it to death i, I would love i would absolutely love if a, swan, if a swan stepped to me i love my chances you love bite my off. chances you i would bite the head off and you're making a statement any I number of swans come at me it's my cardio that's going to be the limiting factor 100 <laughs> because if if i never got tired i i would never stop they would never get a good hit on me that was enough to slow me down Ever. Yeah, I have seen a swan scare an elephant on, on YouTube. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? You're an elephant. The swan, 
Your skin is so thick. I can't hurt you, let alone the swans. You ever see the elephant grab the, uh, I don't know if it's an emu or ostrich. I think it was an ostrich, though. Grab its fucking head and be like, motherfucker, you really fucking with me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. He like, he like, I think it was an ostrich. It was something. He grabs it by the neck and is like, are you really trying to fuck with me right now? I, I think it was an ostrich. I, li- I love the idea of an elephant not hurting him, just holding him still and eyeballing him. Zach what might actually have post it. Here. Oh, Taylor might have it. See I did. Oh my god! Yeah, you have to go to ten seconds. The whole beginning is just some guy's watermark. <laughs> but yeah, it just that that little yeah. Ost- the fucking well, ostrich is pick is like biting. Bullying him. Yeah, yeah, and he's just like motherfucker. Do you know what you're doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like what the fuck? Where do you get off? Do you notice any other animals bigger than me in the pen? No, you didn't. And if we weren't in this pen, you wouldn't notice any either because I'm an elephant. <laughs> I no, love. I- in my head, he held the ostrich up and eyeballed him. But even better, he just holds his head down. Yeah. Like, what are you he, doing he down there? Oh, what are you doing down there? Him. Yeah. And that was that was like a total move of self control by the elephant to just not kill it. Like it it could have just squeezed harder, could've lifted it up anything. easy. It, it could have done anything it wanted with that. And it just the video went, did end kind of early. I, there was probably <laughs> this is the fourteenth ostrich that Nemo has <laughs> killed today. <laughs> we, we watched the we watched the full clip and he's just the meanest spirited elephant no, <laughs> emu has been spilling bird seed all over his enclosure to lure them in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't even eat them he it's just, just loves sport. killing them <laughs> what is I it like, like I, I forget i gotta mess up the details on this but like uh someone keeps getting puppies from the pound and bring him home, but the oh, wolves oh, yeah. keep eating. Go ahead, the cat, you take yeah, it over. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. it right. He, he asked the guy like what to do because he, fucking coyotes keep eating his cats. And the guy's like, "How many cats have they eaten?" He's like, "Well, I don't know. It's hard to say. I, every time one of my cats gets eaten by the coyotes, I just go and buy another cat." And and he says, "Well, it sounds to me like you're just feeding cats to coyotes." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, and then my daughter started crying because <laughs> <laughs> he totally was. He was by. He's like, like if you go to the pet store, there's feeder fish that you can feed to yeah. your like, you know, Oscars or your bigger fish. That's what he's doing. He's playing feeder kid <laughs> yeah. for the coyote. So I've the coyotes were the real pets. <laughs> I've been looking at dogs to adopt a lot late, lately, and mm. uh, and I'm kind of going back and forth between breeds. I saw, I started, I literally cried last night looking at this fucking dog. Mm. Um, I was on the uh, like the Cobb County fucking animal adoption thing. I'm looking all over Atlanta. I just Google Atlanta dog rescue and any anything they've got, I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. And so this fucking dog is like ten pounds or something, and Aww. they write this little blurb about him. It's this cute little fucking thing, and they're like. I don't remember his, his real name, but let's call him Eli. It's like, Eli needs somewhere to go. He is very scared where he is right now because it's very loud and he hates it. And I, oh. and they were like, but where he was before, he was found abused with three other dogs, matted and covered with fleas. And mm. I started crying. Poor I went, Eli. <laughs> you got to get Eli, man. Well, then there's like three more dogs that are all have like sad stories and it, and Every time I find one that I'm like, oh shit, Nala is a cool ass dog. She's like half Bichon Frise or whatever Bichon. they are, and like and like half poodle. It's like a three thousand dollar dog that somebody bought and never trained. And I start reading, and I'm I'm like, this is the dog. You can train those bargain? dogs easy. I start reading. This dog has like eight mental disorders, and it has, <laughs> and it's no. like it's like she decides it, that you're her person and everyone else is an enemy. She is a rattlesnake. She will bite. <laughs> Kyle, hold, on, hold on. This is exactly the kind of bitch you like, right? She should already <laughs> know she has BPD. You are her focus person, Kyle. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mean, it um, sounds like Eli doesn't have eight mental disorders and he's a sweet little pup. What was he? What kind of dog was he? A little poodle? Uh, little he was, I don't know. He's 10 pounds. It was like this tiny little toy. I love dog little like dogs. Get a little dog. I, I'm looking at little dogs, but I'm also looking at like 30 to 45 pound like dogs like that that mm-hmm. are like small German shepherds. And like I, I, I like dogs that look cool. So some of these huskies have like cool like Zorro like markings mm-hmm. that are that are neat. And they they, they have those blue eyes uh, that are that are pretty yeah. cool. I love um, huskies. I like the dogs that have the heterochrome, whatever. What's chromia? yeah, two different the color eyes. Chromia. Heterochromia, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two different know, color eyes. I think that's neat. Um, but again, I'll like favorite these dogs as I scroll through about a thousand pups. They will not let you 
this is all right. So on dating sites, they disallow the ability to like exclude black people, for example. Like, hey, I'm not into black people. I don't want to see them on my page. You can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. They did the same thing to this fucking dog website. I'm like, I don't want to see a bulldog. I don't want to yeah. see one. I have no interest in one. And you can't do that. And then they mislabel them. Every, half the labs on there are fucking pit bulls. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I should I, I should start sending you guys screenshots because it'll say if it says terrier or lab and then not much else, when you open it, it's a fucking pit bull with I a got head this bigger cute than lab. Mine. Got a bloodstained muzzle. Oh, <laughs> it's like this is Domino. He ate a baby. Do you, you know, I was I was seeing stuff about pit bulls, and who knows how how reliable this yeah, is. I don't know. But I saw like you know Michael Vick, two thousand seven, that went down. So before that, the number of like pit bull attacks was much lower. But after that happened, a bunch of animal groups foolishly were like, "We're going to redeem the image of the pit bull." And like started a bunch of campaigns and stuff to be like, it's a friendly dog. Like, and like you can see on the chart, like the number of maimings and attacks like has gone up significantly since 2007, since those campaigns. So very interesting there. You should I'll not own these dogs. I'll say this. There are so, so many of them um, that don't have a place to go. And I bet like they're all good dogs. And if I, if I, if I wanted one dog, I kind of want multiple, I want multiple dogs. Yeah. But so, so like I was going to have one dog. And I was never going to have another person around. I am a grown and ass man. I could control this thing the same, but the same way I, I, I'm capable of controlling a gun. Yeah. But you got to treat it like a fucking gun because they're terrifying. Oh, look at that. And I'm kind of with you on the um the gun thing in that like you, you got to treat it like a gun. gun. You can't leave it unattended around babies. No, to rape them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I saw that the, the dog rape of the little boy. It Wait, is that a real thing? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I told you about literally. That. Yeah. 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 Nodded him. Nodded him. Mm. Drug him around the house by his butthole. Almost killed him. You think that kid's ever gonna be the same? I don't think no, so. No, I think that kid's yeah. developed a kink and that, that, kid's in high, that kid's in high school by now and he is fucking weird. Through <laughs> 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 um, so no fault of his own, through a he's horrible a, just he, distant mother. He's in the 50 Discord, actually. <laughs> 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 he, he fit right into our fan base. Yeah. <laughs> He would. Yeah, I was traumatized too. Uh, I, I don't know, man. There's there's a ton of them on there for adoption. I get real sad when I go in there and look, but I, I'm going to get a dog fairly soon. Nice. Uh, I keep looking. Really? I've sent inquiries for a couple of them. I saw this one um, husky that was brown. I'd never seen a brown husky before, but that looked cool. Uh, and it's got like sad eyes that look like a cartoon character. It, it looks like you drew sad eyes. Oh. You know what I like a lot? <laughs> I like a dog that's post puppy. Right? Or yeah, like, yeah. I want to an adult dog. There is no such thing as a housebroken puppy, right? If that thing's six weeks old, it, it just poops when it has to. Like yeah. it, that that's just what your deal is. But if it's like 18 months or two years old, it's either housebroken or right there. Yeah, I'm and, not even opposed to a, a senior dog, mm -hmm. a dog that's mm -hmm. like eight or oh, twelve years old. Nah, nah. I mean, look, look, Woody's dogs, the breed he has chosen, live for like seven years. I was looking at I'm gonna get the name wrong. Borzois the other day. Those things live seven to ten years too. And that was those are the long boys. I was I've all never about even heard the long of a boys. Borzoi. Oh, I uh, well, fuck googling Borzoi and just go, just uh, go to the long boys subreddit um, and look at the, some of those fellows. They're super cute. Yeah, oh. they're they're kind of cute. I still I like the little dogs' faces more than the super long face. But these yeah, guys they got long. a good coat. They're cute. I like them. Yeah, there's short haired ones and long. Uh, haired ones, but I think they look cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. This I is B O Y E S Long Boys. I think, I think so. <laughs> the top post of all time is hilarious. Uh, I'm giving it to Zach. Long Boys. Uh, Kyle's won me over with one picture. <laughs> one <laughs> that's one you're picture. Gonna... And I'm oh, like, hey. that's not even a traditional Long Boy. That's like a. Uh... <laughs> that's a great dog. I don't know what kind of dog this is. Uh, this is like a one of those wire terriers or something, maybe. Maybe it's a whippet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that, that's what I was thinking of. I don't know. That looks like an Italian greyhound. I don't Go, know. Scroll down a little bit, Zach. There's a black one in a yellow sweater. Yeah, that looks just like an Italian greyhound. It's all G-rated. You can scroll down. My dad has one. Um. Yeah the 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 true long boys are these fellows that are like. There he is. Uh, yeah, the Borzoi is the one at the window. Um, that that's a Borzoi. That uh, is a fashionable dog. 
<laughs> yeah, he looks. Oh, if you go all the way down to where it says it's not wrong to be long, that's, <laughs> that's my oh, motto. Oh, all right, all right. Now, it's if you want the cutest shit ever, be right below that, look at the rubber nose dog, and it, it it literally like it. Yeah, thank you. So good. Okay, look well that's it. that's adorable. It sniffs mm-hmm. you around the corner. So, Man, so I don't now know. I want another dog. Yeah, mm-hmm. I kind of what I I'll, I'll be honest. But I love the I really puppy want. phase. I want a dog that, like, when people see it, they're like, oh, that's a cool dog. Mm. I don't want, like, an average dog. I want, I want one that's got an interesting feature of some kind. Okay. I see. I, I, I like where your head is. I you want, want a dog looking... that can have its own Instagram. Yes. That's the thug pug. To, no, so, he doesn't want so, a pug or a so bulldog. My, our, yeah, my friend Dirty wants to get a, a pug and call it Tony, and he wants to call it Tony the thug pug. And he wants to like put like a gold chain on it, like a rapper, and have it dressed like hip hop style, I guess, and be Tony the Thug Pug, and like essentially have a themed pet for some reason. He's just got that Instagram pet. famous. He's pretty convinced it'll be a big thing. I, I I feel like it's one of those like get Instagram famous question mark profit plans. That man can't yes. keep a fish alive. <laughs> he can't keep a fucking goldfish alive, and he's talking about like, a dog with breathing <laughs> problems. Get out of here. He's wiped. He's genocided his entire fish tank. No less than four times. <laughs> the poor guy. On accident. I, I think what it's his girlfriend. His girlfriend. Yeah, it. his girlfriend keeps killing all his fish. And isn't and she a marine biologist? There's no that way. Be, I know where funny. they live. She's more likely a. I'm not going to be mean to the man's girlfriend. I think she, not, I, <laughs> I think I'm right though. I think that she studies marine biology in school. You know where they live. Did you want to keep studying. <laughs> I do know where they live. Like, what um, the fuck are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're going to move. I don't know. <laughs> what are you going to school for? Marine biology. You're in Akron, Ohio, huh? Right? <laughs> yeah, the Akron yeah. crab. <laughs> the, the unknown, you know, middle of the country crustacean. Yeah, that I never even considered some a career path like that. Did, when you were actually like, I don't know, of the age to like start heading in a direction or, or pick a thing to do. Did any did anything like marine biology ever even occur to you? No, no but I'm really stuck on that. So this is this is a little bit of uh, real life doxing here. There's a person in my universe who um, he's athletic, he's young, and uh, he wants to be a stuntman, but he doesn't live in Hollywood, and that's his aspiration. And I'm kind of like, no, you can't be. In the same way that you can't be a rock star, you can't be a pro athlete, you can't be a stuntman. This is Atlanta not a job would do. that you're going to get. Uh, he come, he actually has had jobs in Atlanta, a very small one. And um, so that like there's a the ver- I was raised by Stanley P. Stanley P. Said like even business is an unacceptable major. You get one that really prepares you for a job like accounting or engineering mm-hmm. or medical school or something, you know, something generic like business. Like that's not even a, that's not a job preparation major. And advice. the idea, maybe, I don't yeah, know. Well, we're sitting here making a living on YouTube yeah. <laughs> telling people that they can't chase their dreams. And that puts me like that. That's a really weird situation for me. Like, I don't know what the right advice is. Go be there are people out there who are stunt man. Stunt man. Why not you? Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, yeah. I, I, I see. I think stunt man is one in particular that like, if you want to do that, you can do that because you need to look a certain way. I bet like there's not one guy who could be the stunt man for everyone. You no. know, there, there, there's not. A, I'm sure there's one guy out there who's just the fucking best, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I wish we could get Brad to do this," but obviously Brad doesn't look like a small girl or mm-hmm. an old man. He looks like Thor, God of Thunder. So right. he will be that guy's. You know, he's, he'll do Marvel stuff. Mm-hmm. But there's there's a room for everybody. If you're a 130 pound like guy, if you're an overweight woman, like I'm sure there's stunt work for you. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's a? Yeah. You think that's like a long term career? Like, yeah, they, I think it's a way to get in the door to like more middling type roles and like, like, look, if you're on set and you're already like there to be on screen to do one thing and they're like, ah, we need somebody. Can, could you want to read a line with you could easily get like a, a small role somewhere and get the ball rolling with an acting career. That yeah, seems maybe like you're such right. a great way to start. I, I was imagining like those guys getting treated like shit. Like being treated disposable almost. Like, yeah, you only, get up there and do the fucking dangerous thing. The only but time I've heard of that is like from specifically Steven Seagal being the biggest piece of shit mm-hmm. to stuck in ever. Cause he'd hit him for real. Cause he thinks it looks better. So he just fucking womp you. <laughs> His movies look terrible. 
No, they look pretty legit. His, the the martial arts stuff. I mean, it is that bendy stuff. But when he's hitting people in the face, you're like, shit! That <laughs> did you just hit him? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Well, and he like you um, said before, he owns his own company. So like, what? Someone gonna fire him? Like, seems like a scumbag piece. Open of shit. mouth. He's we were talking about something guy. before the career thing about the, oh yeah the, marine oh, biology marine biology yes. yeah that marine to me is a little in the middle right like if you <laughs> want to be a marine biologist like is there jobs for that I don't even know it's like like is it like being history teacher where there's some but a lot of people don't end up getting the job that they thought they would I, I'll yeah. tell you what I think I think that if you have the whatever degree there is in marine biology um, mm-hmm. I, I think you got to go out there and start looking you would hope that you're at a big enough school that mm-hmm. there's like connections to be made. That your professors are like, you know, you'd be perfect over at SeaWorld. They need someone to lie for them and get paid to do it. <laughs> I love lying and getting paid to do it. Sure, I have no moms. I never did this. I'm not in this for the fish. I'm in it for the dollars. Maybe a lot of people <laughs> for all that like, money. <laughs> would want to work at SeaWorld and, and like a lot of highly desirable jobs, people do it for low prices. Yeah. I, know, and, and that sucks. I don't know. I'm thinking mm-hmm. of the kind of marine biologist who's like, somehow getting paid by a university to go do field testing like i'm out here getting paid a good salary to be on a boat taking measurements of tuna and fucking off off of the mm-hmm. waters of alaska but next year i'll be south of uh at, off the tip of africa looking right. at you're the guy who's coming up for with a plan to bring back the great barrier reef in australia right i'll that- tell sure we'll <laughs> bring it back for money <laughs> I heard oh, it's coming yeah. back. Yeah, if my is, if my yeah, job is to like make a plan like that, it's like free free money. It's like come up with a plan to save the Great Barrier Reef. It's like or what? Like like what? <laughs> I'm gonna you come up with a plan that takes goal. thirty years to come to fruition. In twenty, I'm retired, idiot, and you're gonna pay me the <laughs> whole time. Oh, it didn't work. Well, I'm eighty one, moron. So so who cares now? My first product would be Little Lisa's slurry. It does everything. <laughs> Little Lisa Slurry. Well, it was an explosive, uh, a lubricant, uh, yeah. a low-grade fuel, <laughs> and a baby food. <laughs> the baby, you're like, that's everything. A, I, I forgot about that episode. Oh, that's a wonderful that episode. Yeah. Lisa learns her lesson. Yeah. Have you I, watched any of the rehearsal yet? The uh, Nathan Fielder show? Yes. The new Nathan I, Fielder one? All right. So I'm glad you brought that up. Tell me this. Is Nathan Fielder a comedian or is Nathan Fielder a man who is suffering with extreme autism and is powering through it as best he can? <laughs> he's, he's a comedian. Are his, you sure his, that he yes. has an off button? I mean, I've never seen it, but he is probably the best in the business at deadpan uh, at this moment in time. Well, let me just throw this out there because this is what makes me lean the other way. And I did no research, but. There's a point in the rehearsal. I watched some of the first episode as much as I could stomach. And he says something like, the way I am or my personality or my syndrome, he says something like that. I don't remember the, the phraseology, but it's off-putting for people when they uh, mm-hmm. and, and they, ha- they struggle with me. So I found that humor is a good way to, to like break through that. And it's like, <laughs> Are you serious right now, or is this a fucking bit? <laughs> because he does start the conversation with humor, and it's and this the scary thing is because he has rehearsed his first meeting with this man yeah. <laughs> dozens of times with an actor in a replica of the man's apartment that he took a scan of by sending fake repairman in. And but 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 I can't laugh at him because he's so deadpan that I worry that he's <laughs> he's good at it. He's, that he's, he's mentally tremendous. ill or something. There's something wrong with him. No, I, he, I did see one where. <laughs> It was the poo flavored ice cream bit. And this is a, yeah. from his old show. But he, he's failing yogurt shop. I've got an idea for you. Poo flavored ice cream. And the guy's like, we sell food here. I don't think it's a great idea to have, you know, poo and food yeah. and even the same, like, you know, yeah. idea. And he goes, no, 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 trust me. This is going to bring a lot of people in, lots of foot traffic. So they go through this extensive process making poo flavored ice cream they hire a company that does this somehow yeah and they make a terrible tasting ice cream that they like shop you know they have people eat it oh it tastes like shit yeah. you know that's what they, people hate it they they run the product out there and of course people come in and they fucking hate it because it actually <laughs> tastes like shit it's not like blueberry and we get we go haha it looks like poo it's shit flavor yeah and so he goes nathan goes you know and to the owner of the show i'm starting to think this is after this is the end of the episode. I'm starting to think maybe it's not such a great idea to have poop and food sort of in the <laughs> same type thing. And the guy goes, Well, yeah, I told you that at the very <laughs> beginning. And, and he goes, Well, 
I guess we learned something then. <laughs> and that's the end. And that's I was like, <laughs> like, kid me, bro. Like, like I, it, he reminds me of Carl, so Pil- Carl Pilkington. I love him. Yeah. Because with Carl Pilkington, he never gives up the goose either. Like, like mm-hmm. he's stick into that bit of being retarded. And it's only if you pay attention, he's clearly like great at, at, at telling jokes. And, and, and like, like, he's just like, yeah, you wouldn't believe it. You know, I, I went there. Yeah. Oh, I was thought I was at a proctologist, but it turned out, you know, he's was, was a repairman. <laughs> I mean, he did a decent job and all, but yeah. <laughs> the the oil. <laughs> you can you, you can tell like he's making jokes. And, like when he gets his, you know, the, the finger in his ass, like afterward, he's like, "And you're a doctor, aren't you?" Like just like joking, like like you know, yeah, clearly, yeah. he's he's almost harder to read for me. Nathan Fielder's deadpanness. I'm like, he's clearly he's he's a deadpan guy. I you would tell. you'd be able to tell more if you watch more, more Nathan watch for you it. of the previous show. Nathan for you. Oh, yeah. like, there's I a thought- lot of of clear bits in there where he's he's constructing it. Like, but in the rehearsal, it's, he's a little more. When I'm yeah. not at least when I'm not in on the joke. When I'm not sure if this per like bubbles, for example, in Trailer Park Boys. When yeah. I introduce people to that, they're like, "Is that guy retarded? Like, can I laugh at that guy?" Is yeah. what they're asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay to mock this fucking googly eyed fuck or is he like <laughs> actually a retarded actor and should i be impressed by his performance yeah <laughs> you know? like, no you can and laugh like, at him no, he's normal. No, this, first of all this dude is super cool he plays guitar he rocks out and he's doing a silly voice so yeah. laugh it up you know <laughs> but with this nathan filler guy i'm like is it okay to laugh at this guy because he's weirding me out you you need to watch some more nathan for you it is of any show like i think i laugh out loud more at it than than any show I've watched in the last couple of years. It's so fucking funny. The guy is the best deadpan guy in the business. Like the way he sets things up, he strings people along. It's you know, I don't it, think it's Woody would like it. I mean, I was I gonna don't, say Taylor's like interest it. in comedy is interesting to me. Uh he likes I can't think of his name. Big strong guy taught Harley how to box. He was on this show. Sam Hyde. Oh, yeah. Sam Hyde. Yeah. You like mm-hmm. Sam Hyde a lot. You like Nathan a lot. You like all gas, no breaks. I probably have that right. Um mm-hmm. I think and it, like, I, I don't hear you saying you like comedy specials very much anymore yeah, or TV anymore. shows that are supposed to be funny. Like you rarely talk about how funny like the office is or something like that. Yeah, You have a, a different kind of more raw taste now. Maybe. I, I mean, I like see, like Nathan for you. I like, first of all, like the creativity of his silly it, ideas. It hooks wild, me so much thought. because like. It's just organically super creative and it's novel and it's unique and it's really good. And his delivery on all the jokes, like the absolute refusal of him to give in no matter how uncomfortable a situation is. He's always he's always triple, quadruple, you know, septuple dipping back in to make it uncomfortable. It's I just, I think that guy is a genius. He's so fucking funny. You, you, you got to watch some Nathan for you. And well, now you, that I'm sure yeah. he's not. I don't he's he's not autistic. He's but, just like, a like, like goofball. comes off like he he can like he should barely be able to function he's he, he seems so it's like you, do you understand emotions at all like like are, <laughs> like are you a com- he, it's like a computer or something the way he acts like like he doesn't act like a human being yeah and, and, and it's, it's weird to see him interact with people because i'm not sure <laughs> i'm not sure if they're in on the joke and, and so like i don't know again i don't know if like me and nathan <laughs> are supposed to be laughing at them or if or if they are laughing at me, I don't know who the joke's on. <laughs> and I don't. I don't care who the joke's on. It's funny. Ah, like funny. the jokes is, is often on, on the people who are you know the the business owner. But yeah. even them, like you know, I feel like bad for these them. these like, bus- Well, but like that's another thing. These business owners, they're not retarded. There's cameras all over the place. Like it's a sh- it's a comedy show. They thought Gordon so- Ramsay was coming to rejuvenate their business, and instead they <laughs> came and made they- shit flavored ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I, they have to agree to it and everything and they know at the crux of it it's a publicity thing and that's why it's so silly and those come like they really have you seen like watch the episode where he <laughs> he makes a winter coat brand whose mission statement is about teaching people about the holocaust holy shit because he was talking about the north face i don't remember the setup but he's like and shockingly the north face was founded by someone who wasn't sure if the holocaust happened after hearing this, I knew it had to change. And then, like he mm-hmm. he created a 
a company called Summit Ice. If you go to summitice.com, you can't still buy it, but their tagline is never forget. Oh. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a bunch of, and it's like people in uh, in Summit Ice coats with like Holocaust factoids under it. He like goes to a Holocaust museum and gives the proceeds from Summit Ice to him. It's and like makes a joke with them as well. Obviously, you know it's very very funny. You you need clever funny. stuff. So check that. Anybody out there who hasn't watched Nathan for you, very funny. Show? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, goodbyes. Okay. Uh, PKA 607.